So Midnight in Salem is the most recent Nancy Drew game. I think it came out about two years ago. And there was like a four and a half year gap in between it and game number 32. So this is like the only Nancy Drew game which has come out in the past six or so years. Yeah. Alrighty. I forgot it had a terrible loading screen at the start. Oh man, crazy loading screen. Alright, here we go. So, we are going to get started. Ooh, Amateur Sleuth and Master Sleuth. Fancy. Dear Ned, Austria has been wonderful so far. Dad called. He wants me to get an old relic while I'm here. The Book of Apologies, which dates back to the 17th century witch trials in Salem. I'll be going to Mosam Castle to retrieve it before I head back to the States. It's said to be haunted, so I'm expecting some good scares and mysteries. Ever yours, Nancy. Oh yeah, a uh, big change in this game. New voice for Nancy Drew. So we had the same voice actress, uh, Lonnie Manella. She played Nancy Drew in games 1 through 32, in this game, we've got a new voice actress, Brittany Cox. Feels like ages since I was on my last adventure. So, are you coming in? Uh-huh. Uh, that's all right, Miss Drew. I'd prefer to stay out here. Why? It's so... Warm and inviting in here. <laughs> um, yes, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. All of Judge Sewell's effects are there, just as your father requested. Although, I will tell you, as I told him, the desk is locked, and I don't have the key. But I will gladly stay and answer any questions you have from the other side of this door. I recommend opening the window for some light. There's no electricity here. Well, in that room at least. All right, so Nancy, Nancy's here in this room. She's trying to find the Book of Apologies. Let's open the window. Oh, much better. What a wonderful view. Oh, great. You know, that room used to be a prison cell. Mosam Castle was the site of the most famous and violent witch trials in Austrian history. <clears throat> the Salzburg witch trials predate the Salem witch trials by 17 years, actually. After the incidents in Salem, Judge Sewell willed his personal effects to be preserved by whichever museum would have them. And since we are the premier historical reference on witch trials, it ended up here. So, you've seen his book of apologies. The book written by Judge Sewell? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I've never actually been in that room. You mind if I ask why? Is there something scarier in here than creaky floors? Well, let's just say that ghosts exist in this castle. And if they do exist, they definitely haunt that room. Ghosts? Hmm. Can't say I've ever seen one. But they are non-corporeal by definition. Yeah, Dr. Hurst is basically a big scaredy pants who refuses to go inside this room. She's like, ew, no, it's too scary. There might be a ghost, so I'm just gonna hide on the other side of this door. Yeah, you can only kind of see her, just this black outline of a character. Ah, oh, silhouette. Ah, uh, uh, I can Dr. Hurst? see her. Yes, yes, I'm here. Austria is wonderful. I do enjoy it here myself. I, I'm not from Austria. I was brought here by my work. The food is quite an experience. The pancake soup was great. Yes, the Frittatensuppe. The locals consider it traditional. How long have you known my dad? Oh, Carson and I are not that close. He reached out to me because I'm the historian keeping track of all the relics here. And as he guessed, we should have the Book of Apologies. Somewhere. Lucky I was already here on vacation. 
I was quite surprised when he called and asked me to come. Though I have to admit, visiting a castle is something I've never been able to turn down. Do you do these kinds of things a lot? From time to time. Why was Nancy here on vacation? It seems like an odd choice for a vacation for her. What else can you tell me about the Book of Apologies? As I mentioned, it's the book written by Judge Samuel Sewell himself, detailing the names of people accused of witchcraft. Sewell was one of the very few judges who regretted his actions. The book became his way of finding redemption. Sewell himself was originally from England, but acted as a judge in the Salem Witch Trials. Do you perhaps know why Carson would need such a book? Just out of curiosity, of course, it's, it's just such a very unusual request. He's looking into it as a favor for the current judge in Salem. Oh. I'll get back to it. Take all the time you need. It's kind of an interesting start to the game. We're just here in Austria looking for a book before we actually start the Salem mystery. Alrighty, so I believe we open up this. Is this Judge this. Sewell's desk? Ah, yes, yes, yes. That desk is where he spent most of his time working when he wasn't in court. Custom made. If the Book of Apologies does exist, he would have written it at that desk. And what's inside this alleged book? Your father didn't tell you? <clears throat> it was a ledger containing all the names of the accused witches from the Salem Witch Trials. Judge Sewell had doubts about his convictions, and he wrote the book as a means to... make amends. Allegedly. Yes. Alright, so m multiple people are saying it's kind of strange how the Dr. Hearst is just swaying back and forth. Um, she, she cannot stand perfectly still. She's swaying back and forth like she has to go to the bathroom. Get used to that. Every character in this game is going to sway left and right, back and forth. That's just how this game works. I found a letter. It's addressed to Abigail Hathorne Woodley. What does it say? I do regret to write to you in this state. I have been racked with guilt as my fervency of spirit was too great to determine a conviction just. He asks for her forgiveness and for God's. Dear Abigail Hathorne Woodley, la 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 You can turn pieces of evidence like this, get a 360 degree view of them. Woo! Fancy. I like how you could just click on it and get the actual words, because that's a lot easier. <laughs> it's easier to see the clue. So the clue says his light. Light, light. I think, I think we have a light. What does this mean? It's a light puzzle, so click on the light. Locked. That's locked. Okay, we need to find a key. I believe the key is over here. We can rotate the key around as well. Spinny, spinny, spinny the key. We unfold the wings. And then we're gonna put it here. What a clever desk. It even comes with a labyrinth. So here is a maze. You wanna move this lock through the maze. <laughs> Easy. Aha! Easy. And here's the book. It's locked, though. I found it. It's here. What? Really? Amazing! It's locked behind some sort of cage, though. The lock says... A-W. Any ideas? A-W? No. But I have some tools in the shop that might be able to cut it free. In my shop. I I'll go. I have some tools in my shop in my shop. And Nancy, you just read a letter from Abigail Woodley, that's obviously the A.W. that they're talking about. Meet me there! Hey! Wait for me! Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that puzzle, because it's gonna be a while before we get to the next puzzle of the game. So, Nancy goes outside. Nancy! Nancy. This, this way! way. 
Where is that? Dr. Hurst? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, got a phone call from Deirdre. Nancy Drew. It's Deirdre Shannon. Deirdre? Can I call you back? I'm in the middle of... Listen, I know we haven't exactly been besties in the past, but I'm in the middle of something big, and I... Deirdre, I have to call you back. Wait! Wait! Don't hang up on me! Elizabeth? Elizabeth! Whoa! <gasps> hey! What are you doing? What? The book! They took the book! Somehow, somebody managed to sneak behind Nancy when she was on the phone call. I don't know how. Nancy was standing in the doorway. Uh, but they managed to sneak behind Nancy and steal the book, and they've escaped. This is the only way out besides the door. The thief must still be close. <laughs> yeah, somebody's saying, come on, we, we need to use the buddy system. Dr. Hurst and Nancy should have left the room together. That would have been the smart way to go around, uh, to go about it. But no. No. Culprit somehow managed to have a flash bomb. Where am I, by the way? Okay, so it looks like I'm connected to that courtyard. Would have been kind of cool if we got to explore the courtyard and see these various rooms and towers and such. But no. Stop! Stop running! Stop! I said stop! <laughs> Just stop already, okay? Alrighty. So I think this is the, this has to be it. Like that has to be the room that Nancy was just in. How did the culprit escape? That looks like a 20 foot drop. I'm, I'm kind of amazed. Actually, I'm a little amazed Nancy managed to survive such a drop. Yeah, Nancy just jumped down from there. Gosh, everybody can jump super far. They've, they've, got, they've got great legs. Uh, that's all I can say. All right, so. We get to go forward into the woods until we find the culprit. Culprit, walk down this pathway. And the culprit's just standing around doing nothing. Hey, culprit, how's it going? Nice to see you. Easy. Gotta move slowly. Uh... <laughs> Come on. No, no, no! Culprit just happened to have a backup flash bomb in his pocket, I suppose. Gotta figure out which way they went. Must be a clue here. Oh, it's the AW key that Nancy needed to open the book. Oh, well, that's cool. That's good. A. W. Same as the desk. Here's a can. This canister looks to have been used as a homemade smoke bomb. Yeah, I guess, did, did the culprit have more than one smoke bomb? I don't know. And what's this? Okay, so the culprit is flying to Massachusetts. And you know where, you know what city is in Massachusetts? Salem. I think Nancy's gonna go there now. A ticket to Boston. Uh, uh. Yes, Deirdre, what is it? You know where I am right now? Salem. Salem? As in, which trial Salem? Salem, Oregon, obviously. Come on. No, 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 it's witch trial Salem. Obvi. Come on, Drew. My cousin has... Well, she's gotten into some trouble here. And I thought I could help her out. But it turns out this situation is much more complicated than I anticipated. So now, I'm calling you to ask for some... Guidance. You want my help? Oh, yes. Don't make this more painful. I could use your professional opinion, okay? Well, it so happens that the case I'm on is connected to Boston, which is just nearby Salem. And I was never a big believer in coincidences. Oh, are you sure? I'd love to. Seriously? I thought I had reached a dead end but it looks like I have to go to Massachusetts anyway. In any case, a fresh perspective would do me good. Ugh, you're already annoying me, and you're not even here yet. <laughs> you're welcome. I think it might even be fun. Oh, this is so the worst idea I've ever had. I'll pick you up from the airport. Yeah, 
so Deirdre, uh, Deirdre's appeared in other Nancy Drew games. Uh, she was in Alibi and Ashes and The Deadly Device. She lives in Nancy's hometown, and they're not exactly friends. They kind of dislike each other. The dislike is mostly one-sided on Deirdre's side, so it's kind of amusing that Deirdre is forced to come to her hated rival, Nancy Drew, for mystery help. And here we are in Massachusetts. I appreciate you coming here, Drew. I'm just glad you didn't change your mind and leave me at the airport. Might have crossed my mind. Keep the excessive cheeriness under control, and we'll be fine. Hmm. No promises. Where were you, by the way? Austria. Did I interrupt a vacation with Ned? Didn't you bring me here to help with a case? Yes, I did. And that's it. A fire? Was anyone hurt? Happened in the middle of the night. No one was there, thankfully. The house wasn't completely destroyed, but the person who lived there had to move out. Just so we're clear, this is my case. I know you're a detective and everything, but this is personal. It's family. Well, extended. And from my father's side. But whatever, that's not the point. It's personal. You take my lead, okay? Of course. But? Well, I have done this a couple of times, Deirdre. And in my experience, we can cover twice as much ground if we work side by side. I, you know, respect your experience and whatever. But family trumps experience. It's sensitive, and I don't want you messing it up by being too... To what? To you. You're a question machine. This requires gentle handling. Delicate. <laughs> and that's been your approach. Well, like I say, I need help. So, can I ask some questions? Like anyone could stop you. Deirdre makes a good point. Um, at the same time, she makes a terrible point. <laughs> It's like, Nancy, I want you here to solve the mystery. But at the same time, she's all, I don't want you to solve the mystery. This is my case. I'm the criminology expert. So like, I need you to question everyone, but don't ask too many questions. I don't want you to actually figure out what's going on. You, you need to be delicate. Why don't we start with your extended family? They're cousins, the Perrys, P-A-R-R-Y. Oh. Like in fencing? Yes. Tegan is the older one, May is younger. They've... They had a difficult childhood, okay? And now May is suspected of committing arson on the most important historic mansion in Salem. And I know it's not true. I know it. Yeah, dear Drew, uh, I, I'm just thinking of like some of the big plot twists that are coming up in the game, and a lot of it feels like information that Deirdre should just say right up front. Like this big secret with May. What can you tell me about May? She has a reputation as a troublemaker. It seems like a loner to me. Maybe a bit odd at times. Sometimes she can even sense things before they happen. Odd how? Wait, what? I don't know. Troubled teen stuff, difficult time as a kid. The oddest thing is, she won't give an alibi. That would be seen as suspicious. That's the problem. Everyone is so suspicious of her. Prejudice, I guess. Because of... Well, you'll see. Sounds like we should talk to her soon. Where do you think we're going? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so what does Tegan think about this? What does Tegan think about this? She's worried about May, obviously. Tegan isn't like May. She's... upstanding. She works at the Salem Museum and doesn't know a thing about criminal cases. Which is why she contacted me. Yeah, multiple people in the chat are mentioning, Hey, what about Alibi in Ashes? You know, that... an alibi for ar arson, that seems familiar. We, they should reference that game at some point, especially considering that Deirdre was in that video game. But no, that's that's not what happens. One more question. 
what can you tell me about this historic mansion? It's called the Hathorn House, and it's old. Like, really old. And now it's been set on fire. Nothing else significant about it? Well, yeah. A lot of things. But one that's... Ugh, that's kinda why you're here. Which is why? The Hathorn House is haunted. Wait, really? Really? What do you mean, haunted? Exactly that. There's ghosts. Deirdre. I don't believe it either, Drew. But I can't explain it. Everyone seems to think they exist. With so many sightings, even if it isn't real ghosts, something is definitely going on. I thought that maybe you can disprove them. So would you please get out of my car and come inside? If we're going to work side by side, you'd better learn to keep up with me. You must be Nancy. Thank you so much for coming. You know, you live in the same neighborhood for 20 years and you'd expect your neighbors to be a little more understanding when your family is falsely accused of a horrific crime. Oh, I'm sorry. How are you, Deirdre? I'm good, thanks. Tegan Perry, welcome to my home. Well, our home, although right now my parents are literally on safari in Namibia, so... While their daughter is being convicted of a crime she didn't commit, I'm taking care of things around here. They'll be home soon. Hopefully. A very expensive courier is tracking them down in the bush. Top notch, I found him on the internet. Deirdre tells me you'll be assisting her in clearing my sister's name. Assisting? Yeah. She's innocent. I don't know why she won't help herself. She's got... a difficult reputation. Well, you know, Deirdre, what people here can be like. She doesn't trust easily, not since... I'm sorry, are you hungry? There's clam chowder, homemade! Yeah, not since the incident of which we do not speak. Is it okay if I spoil it? I'm just gonna spoil it. Okay, so the reason everybody really suspects May of being the culprit is because she's been arrested before, specifically for arson. And that feels like very important information, which should have been stated here, like, at the start of the game. Instead, Tegan and Deirdre and the other characters sort of keep it a secret from Nancy. It's like they're sabotaging the investigation. And Deirdre's angry face. Like, oh my gosh, Deirdre's angry face. Deirdre, sorry, you're bunking with me. Make yourselves at home. Oh, I almost forgot. After you girls get comfortable, you two should swing by the museum. Might as well take in some history while you're here, right? <laughs> Just don't get suckered into that witch's walking tour. Olivia Ravencroft is not a witch. She would have you believing all kinds of nonsense about the town being full of ghosts. I thought you two used to be friends. That was a long time ago. Look, I I'm sorry, I gotta get going. Running late to an appointment. Okay, did you see Deirdre's hands there? Why were they... What was going on with their hands? They were just sort of shaking and jumping around randomly. It was, it was weird. Nancy, we just got here. Sorry, I know you're in a rush. It would really help. Uh, uh, of course, her hands are shaking I have time for again. one question. If it'll help. Of course, Tegan's hands are shaking as well. So, anyway, uh, can you tell us about uh, the fire? What can you tell me about where the fire happened? What have you heard about it? Look, I appreciate you want help, but I don't want you dragging all that up and upsetting May. You told me she would be able to reach her. That's not the... That's not what Nancy is asking about. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I just thought, since the Hathorn House is important to the town, you must know about it. Through the museum. Oh, I'm so sorry. The Hathorn House fire. Yes, John Hathorn was one of Salem's founders. His large house estate was the oldest surviving structure from 17th century Salem. Oh, is that all? 
Uh-uh-uh, that was two questions. I said one. <laughs> but yes, he was also the big time judge that presided over the Salem witch trials. Is there some other fire I need to know about? Yes, yes, and they won't tell you about it. No, May's accident was in a fire. I just don't want her getting upset with unnecessary questions about things long over. I understand. You can read all about Judge Hathorne when you come to the museum later. Gotta run. You jerk. Tegan said you've been in town for days, but you haven't come by. I know, I know, I know. I had to check in with your case at the, uh... Look, I didn't want to bother you. How are you holding up? Uh, I've been accused of worse. No, you haven't. Hey, at least I got you to get off your butt and finally visit me. Um... Oh, this is the girl I was telling you about. Wait, wait, wait. So when was she talking to May about Nancy Drew if May, who just said you haven't been here to visit me, you know, in days... I, I, I'm confused, because May's like, we haven't talked, we haven't seen each other, and at the same time, it's like, oh, hey, we actually did talk and see each other. I'm sorry to nitpick. I'm sorry, I should just be quiet. Nancy Drew. Nice to meet you. What? Oh. May? She really doesn't want to talk. This could be difficult. Any advice? Hmm. Do better? I'll be in the kitchen. Somebody's asking. Everybody's acting like um, May's about to explode, like she's going to have a violent outburst if they ask too many questions. Yeah, that is sort of how they're treating this situation. Hmm. Like, maybe Deirdre and May talked over the phone. Maybe, but, uh, I don't know. Are you ready to leave yet? We don't have all day. What were you actually doing before you picked me up from the airport? What do you mean? You gave May a non-answer when she asked why it took you so long to stop by here. A non-answer? Yeah, because I went to the police station. And? And they're still going through the evidence. And when they found out I was May's cousin, they started... laughing. So they think she did it. Everyone does. So? I went to check out the Hathorn house myself, but I never went inside. The ghost? What? No. There was some weirdo there who told me the ghost was going to steal my soul. It was totally creepy. And then I found out that everyone in this town believes in ghosts, so I didn't enter. Well, whatever or whoever it is, there's an explanation behind it. Did the police give you anything, anything at all? They told me there's a Judge Danforth in town, and he's going over the particulars of the Hathorn House estate. I found his office, but he kinda never let me enter his office. Believe me, I tried. I know him. Not well, but enough to get through his door and have a conversation. Alright, are we going into town or what? Sure. Who could gain something by burning down a house? Insurance claim, maybe? Possibly. Means, motive, and opportunity. We need to start interviewing. See if anyone checks off those three boxes. And in your experience? It's usually something much more personal. This tour sounds interesting. Don't tell Tegan that's your plan. It'll give us a good overview of the town. You mean I want to meet the real witch of Salem? Yeah, I do. She might know something. I wonder why Tegan doesn't like her. You don't have to investigate everything, Drew. Olivia steals Tegan's visitors, sounds like. You really want to do the dumb tour? You don't have to come with me. Side by side. Gotta be honest, it does sound more fun than the museum. All right, so we are, um, I think those are our two task lists. We need to talk to Tegan at the museum and talk to Judge Danforth. And Nancy said she wants to do the witch tour as well. And that's pretty much going to be it for day number one of the game. Here's May. Um, nice to meet you. Yeah. 
It's kind of mean of you to totally walk out on me without saying anything. So can I look around the house? Do you mind if I look around the house? Ugh, you're so weird. I'm done talking, okay? Isn't that a weird conversation? It's like, hey, can we look around the house? Ugh, you're so weird. Okay? End conversation. Yeah, I wish we could talk to May about the case. Talk to her about the mystery. Seriously, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, we should be able to talk to her about so many things. Rust be gone. Now that's handy. Never know when a bit of stubborn iron oxide will get in the way of investigating. Alright, so we found some rust be gone. We'll, we'll need that for a puzzle later on. And I think this is an Easter egg. Hidden Easter egg here in the plants. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Found it. Yeah. Seriously, we should ask May about her alibi. Like, Nancy was specifically brought in to figure out what May's alibi is. She was specifically brought in to reach May. And instead, Nancy just asks, Hey, can I look around your house for a bit? And that's it. That is all the investigation Nancy does into May at this point in time. Oh, man. And speaking of weird things... Here's a weird conversation with Nancy's boyfriend, Ned. Ned! Thanks for finally picking Hi. up. Hi! Uh, sorry. I've been on a flight. Busy on another case, huh? You know, you should really enjoy yourself more, Nance. Life's too short to be working all the time. This isn't work for me. It's fun. Besides, crime doesn't take a vacation. Speaking of which, how's yours? <laughs> Ned, come on! Yeah, one second. Sounds like you're having fun. Uh, you know, standard fare. Nothing too crazy. I miss you, Nance. I miss you. Hey, give it back. Two. Nancy, I'll call you later. Call you later, Nancy. Well, that was... Yeah. Yeah, there's some flirty girl who steals Nancy's... I mean, she steals Ned's phone. That's just a weird conversation, I would say. Flirty girl steals Ned's phone... <laughs> And we can't call him Hello. back. Hello, you've reached the voicemail inbox of Ned Nickerson. I apologize that I did not come to the phone in a timely fashion. Please feel free to leave a message after the beep. I don't know what the point of that scene was. Were they trying to make it seem like Ned's cheating on Nancy? Why? And there's no follow-up to it. We never... Oh my gosh, Deirdre's giant. Um... <clears throat> We never find out who that girl is. She never gets named. And like I said, whenever we try to call Ned, he doesn't answer the phone. So I don't even know what the point of that scene was. It feels like there was supposed to be a, a follow-up or, or something else with that storyline, but they just forgot to include it in the game. I, I don't know. It's just a dropped subplot. A leopard print lighter. Why here? Better hang on to this. Crazy. Alrighty, let's go into town. That's right, Deirdre follows us everywhere. Just no matter where you go, Deirdre's watching you. It's creepy. Oh, did I get a text message? Visitors, by now you know the story of the witches of Salem. Those poor souls were caught in a time of fear and greed, and they paid the price. They may have died, but witchcraft lives on in Salem. Oh, this should be interesting. The world would have you believe witches were not real. I'm not talking about old, ugly women who curse their neighbors and fly on broomsticks. The truth is, is magician? witches are real. They have always been real. They are alive and well. They are powerful, carrying the secrets of the world beyond the one we see. Ritual, mystery, magic. 
Most exist now only in secret, and they may be standing among you even now. It is said that in Salem, a coven of witches settled in recent years, set on revenge for the deaths of the Salem witches. Their ritual, one midnight on Halloween, unleashed the angry spirits of the past. That's so cool. <gasps> How did you do that? Thank you. Now, if any of you are interested in the real history of the Witches of Salem, I provide self-guided tours through some of my favorite locations in town. And perhaps you too will see one of the restless dead. Thief and Austria use the same kind of stage magic she's using. Thief? There was a thief? What were you doing there? Visiting a spooky old castle. You'd have liked it. Do you regularly fly to Europe for investigations? Sometimes. And if you want to learn about being a witch, come forward. All right, so we have the suspicious blue smoke. We also have Sweater Guy, who's just hanging around here. Sweater Guy! Yeah, everybody's just standing around, just watching her stand on stage. Okay, whoa, whoa! Sweater Guy just shaking his head and waving his arm. Alright, why are they all standing around being still? That is kind of weird, definitely. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Me? Never. Well, nothing too bad, I hope. Did you know that in the Malleus Maleficarum, ginger hair was the sign of a witch? You're my kind of people. I'm not nearly as talented as you are. Aw, shucks. You're making me blush. Oh, there it is. Now I'm turning red. You truly are a witch. So to become a witch, do I need to take a test or get a diploma? <laughs> a true witch is not made with pieces of paper. She is born to it and will feel the call. Bureaucracy is for persecutors. We don't need permission. We don't live by the rules. <laughs> anyway, what can I help you with? I, I just love watching it at this angle because it seems like Sweater Guy is involved in this conversation with Olivia. It, it, it's funny. Alrighty, so how did you do that trick? How did you perform that trick? A witch never reveals her secrets. It's against the witch code. A code? I thought bureaucracy and rules were for persecutors. Although, if you take my self-guided tour, I promise you will learn at least one secret about being a witch. That's a lie. I don't think we learned anything in that tour. Have you lived in Salem for long? Born and raised. So you know the Perrys? Of course. Not well. If you are looking for them, Tegan is at the museum. She works there. Not well. We're staying with Tegan. I figured there was some history between you two. That was a long time back. We don't talk much now. And May? Yes, I know her too. Not spoken to her for a long time either. But you've heard the rumors about her. May is a troubled girl. And sometimes such girls get blamed for things that were not there. I don't think she burned down the Hathorn house if that's what you're trying to get at. People with mundane minds look for mundane explanations. So someone just pointed out, there is a random blur in the middle of the screen. You see this pumpkin, it's kind of blurry and unfocused. But, I mean, sweater guy's clearly in focus. Um, Lydia's in focus. Those hay bales are kind of in focus, but why do we have a blur here in the middle and in the background? Even this tree, you'll see like part of it's in focus and part of it's blur. Does it change if I switch the angle or Yeah, I don't know. Just kind of weird that it's blurry there. I, I agree, that is is a little strange. How often do you do this show? Most nights. It gets busier around it's Halloween, not nighttime. and I'm sure you can figure out why. How about the night that the Hathorn house was burned? <clears throat> you look a little young to be working for the police, dear. Oh no, it's nothing like that. We're just curious tourists. Good, because I've already spoken with them. 
And so, you were here. I was out of town. Did you girls know that Salem is haunted? There's a ghost here. If you go on my tour, you'll learn where you can find it. I get it, I get it. You want me to go on your tour? Fine, jeez. <laughs> oh man, this Twitter guy is just, just amazing. It does seem strange that Olivia's just gonna stand here the whole time and have a conversation. She's not even looking at Nancy. What is she looking at? I'm not looking at Sweater Guy or Nancy. Huh. Do you really believe some modern witch coven unleashed ghosts on Salem? About eight years back, there were rumors of a coven. That they performed a ritual to return the dead witches to Salem to seek out their revenge before the witches moved on. Is there any evidence of such a coven? Ever since then, ghost sightings have gone through the roof. Salem is now considered the most haunted place in the country. Interesting. You think it's a coincidence that the former home of the Hathorns was set on fire? Sweater guy is definitely like practicing for a rap battle right now. I, I would agree with that. How else could the fire have started? I heard there was not a single living soul in the house when it started burning. Keyword, living. The world is composed of two equal parts dark and light. The light we see every day. It's the trees, the people, the birds. It's our world. You can even see it at night. The dark is the unknown. A plane of existence that vibrates just underneath the light. But if you were in a place like Salem, a place where a painful history permeates every surface, every crack, every brick, and every tomb, the dark will appear, usually when you least expect it. That's why they say, don't be out past midnight in Salem, because the dark may reach out and take you. Also, did you know that Salem has more ghost sightings than any other city in North America? If you want to learn why, you should go on my tour. Midnight in Salem. Yep, that's the name of this game. Talk to you later. Yeah, it would be cool to, like, what is Sweater Guy saying in that scene? I don't know. There's Deirdre. Deirdre. Wasn't there, like, one weird angle where we could go through Deirdre's head or something? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh, man. You just go straight through Deirdre's head. So don't watch that on slow-mo, you'll have nightmares. You will have nightmares. Alrighty, so let's go visit the museum and get that ghost tour thing. Ghost tours, ah! Yeah, no, no matter where you go, uh, Deirdre Shannon is there. Deirdre Shannon is always there. Ah, quit, quit, ah! You need to give Nancy some space, Deirdre. way to get Deirdre to appear somewhere. Let's see. If I show up here and then spin. Here we go. I've got Deirdre and Tegan on screen at the same time now. Hey, sorry about the mess. We're in the middle of installing a big showcase. So what have you seen in town so far? We decided to do the real witches tour. Oh, you talked to Olivia. What's with her getup? Witch? Street magician, maybe? Everyone has to make a living. Is she telling the story about a coven living here in the recent past? Yeah. Why? Just bad taste. What are you Olivia doing is with quite the local hands, character. Deirdre? What is I hope you don't mind if we do the tour. I want to see more of the town. And finding out a place's old superstitions is kind of a habit I've gotten into. I'm excited to look around the museum. Of course. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, so we got the ticket for the tour, um, for that, that, that tour, the witch's tour, so now I think we can do it. Hooray! How's the investigating going? 
Any progress with May? I've got some leads. I haven't had much progress with May though. I was wondering. You said one thing to May, and then you immediately gave up, Nancy. This is all your fault that you haven't made any progress with May. Like you asked her, "Hey, could I look around the house?" Ah, that—that that is not like becoming best friends with May or finding out about her alibi. Sure thing. How can I help? Yeah. So Deirdre is just gonna be standing with her back to, uh, back to Tegan. Not sure why. That's just how it works. What's this new showcase about? Yes, this new showcase is going to be really cool. Just in time for Halloween, you know? But what is it about? If you come back on Halloween, I'll show you. So what's the deal with these pumpkins? Oh, yeah. I've prepared some pumpkins that visitors can carve and bring with them to place around Salem. Feel free to give it a try if you want. It's really fun and completely free. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Uh. Talk to you later. Whatever, nobody looks at me when I talk to them anymore. It's just very sad. All right, I think that's it. There's nothing to look at here in this museum. Not yet, anyway. I think we have a puzzle Let's here see. later on. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah, but we can't, like, look at that. Yeah. Let the game won't let us look at those magazines. We'll, we'll, we'll have a puzzle with those magazines later on. So this is that museum. It's mostly just, like, the same row of books 20 times. Yeah. Closed off. Looks like they're preparing a new installation. Apparently there's something back here which is worth seeing, but we won't see it. That part of the museum is closed off. Oh, oh yeah, and I need to show this off too. Um, hi Nancy, Deirdre. Tegan's texting me now? How? She's standing right there. She's clearly not texting me. I just... Uh... I guess we were supposed to do this as soon as we came into town. Like, when we first came into town, did my phone ring? I think that was the case. Yeah. I'm gonna call Deirdre here. Hi! You've reached the phone of Private Investigator Deirdre Shannon. I'm working on an important case and can't come to the phone right now. But if you have any information you'd like to share, please leave a message after the beep. Professional. Deirdre is taking this very seriously. That was amazing. I won't do that again. Hi. You've reached the phone of Private Investigator Deirdre Shannon. I'm working on an important case and can't come to the phone right now. But if you have any information you'd like to share, please leave a message after the beep. Professional. Yeah. So, same thing if we call Tegan. She's gonna do the same thing, move her arms around. Hi, Nancy. Hope everything's okay. I'm a little busy right now, but I can take a question or two. What can I help you with? Hey, Tegan. Of course, everything's fine. Just checking in with you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm sorry for being snappy earlier. I've just been so... I've got everything under control. It's me that worries me. She acts tough, but she's still just a kid. And it makes me so angry that people will jump to conclusions when they don't even know her. I understand that. I promise I won't judge her unfairly. But also, don't forget to take care of yourself. Thank you. I'll try not to let the town get to me. I'm good for now. I'll let you get back to work. All right, see you tonight. I hope you make good progress today. May doesn't show it, but she's really counting on you. Really? Thanks. I'll do my best to get really? to the bottom of this. May's see you soon. counting on me? Does she know who I am? Because that conversation with May was, can I look around your house, end conversation. <laughs> you know, this game does have an awful lot of conversations, but that conversation with May was definitely not like an actual conversation. It's so weird that the voice, like the voicemail phone system is actually connected to these characters. That's how it works for every single character. So, 
If you call them in from inside the room, you get to see their mouths move. That just makes me think that, like, they've got all the other characters just, like, floating off screen somewhere. It's like when we call May, there's, like, a May, an invisible May in the ceiling whose mouth is moving. I, I don't know. That's just my idea. Let's talk to Olivia. Now this accused witches group shows Whoa. up from out of nowhere and thinks they're entitled to the Hathorn property. Didn't they find proof for their claim? It's only fair. How far back do these reparations have to go? It's been hundreds of years. Nobody owes these loudmouths squat. It's a bid for attention and money. Must every response be outrage? I miss the peace and quiet. Everybody's angry. Okay. Angry drama with the residents of the town. Apparently that guy just doesn't, doesn't like stuff. Hi, Deirdre. Hi. Here we go. Uh-oh. Here comes trouble. Talk to you later. Let me see. Do I give her the ticket? This tour sounds yes. interesting. Welcome on my tour. Thank you. It is a question, like... Talking, I, I guess it must have been like that man and that woman. But they're not even looking at each other. Fire at Hathorn House. We all know certain renegades in this town know something or two about fire. May Perry, you don't think she'd do it again, do you? She was so young. Wouldn't surprise me. Creeping around back alleys with her hood head down. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Hmm. Well, with her history, she's bound to already be in the sights of the neighborhood watch. So we'll find out soon enough. My thoughts exactly. Yeah, they have conversations without moving their lips. All right, let's check our tablet. Here it is. What we need to do is find a raven in every single one of these spots. And it's not this raven, not not that raven, uh, not that raven over there. Totally different. Darn, raven. missed the opening hours. Better luck tomorrow. Yeah, it must have been Hoodie Guy who was complaining, because he could not have been my good friend Sweater Guy. Sweater Guy is amazing. So, like, here's the hmm. Raven. The Salem Museum, known formerly as the Town Hall. Not only a great resource for the Salem Witch Trials, it also holds records of other interesting facets of our local history. Anyone visiting Salem does well to seek out the forbidden knowledge hidden in these halls. All right. And I think we have another raven over here in the museum. The carefully researched genealogy of several acute It was a time of horror, when the witches who walked the earth were wrongfully prosecuted and thus stripped of everything. These are the ghosts you'll find here in Salem. Their homes taken, their knowledge destroyed, their lives erased. I guess that's what Olivia was talking about when she says, Hey, you know there's a ghost here? You'll find out about it if you take my tour. This is kind of a... I don't know. It's a strange tour to be sure, because she just gives you uh, a tablet and says, here, you, you can listen to these little audio clips at these spots. And that's the tour. That's that's the tour. The road has completely collapsed into the sinkhole. No wonder they closed it off. The ground is still crumbling. There, watch your step. In recent years, these maws into the deep unknown have opened. There was once a vast network of tunnels beneath Salem, used by smugglers during the Prohibition era. Most would have you believe that these tunnels are now collapsing. But you have to wonder if there could be something more sinister behind these sudden maws into the underworld. 
again, blurriness. Like, now these trees are fine, but blurry, blurry left, blurry right. No time to explore outside Salem's old town center until this case is closed. All right. Hi, Deirdre. Is that sweater guy? I think that's sweater guy. Wait a minute. Yeah, no. Yeah, sweater guy is having an intense conversation with that woman. But wasn't sweater guy... Well, there's the woman. And... There's sweater guy. Ah. Yeah, no, that's the woman and sweater guy. Okay. Okay, just, just, just making sure. Fire at Hathorne House. We all know certain renegades in this town know something or two about fire. May Perry. You don't think she'd do it again, do you? She was so young. Wouldn't surprise me. Creeping around back alleys with her hood head down? Where there's smoke, there's fire. Hmm. Well, with her history, she's bound to already be in the sights of the neighborhood watch. So we'll find out soon enough. My thoughts, exactly. Soon, we'll figure out what's going on. All right. Find the ravens in the graveyard. Let's see, I think one's here. I mentioned the. Hi, Deirdre. Hi, Deirdre. Ugh. Bring light into the darkness. It's just Deirdre's butt is in the way now. Here. Before you stands Abigail Hathorne, helping the accused witches escape the grasp of her own brother, Judge Hathorne himself. Abigail freed many from their holding cells until the judge caught her in the act and locked her up in a cell deep within the Hathorne house. The statue was given the name Little Liberty in honor of her valiant efforts to free the innocent. I mean, the statue was well done. I do like that statue. And towards the end of the game, this is going to open up. It's a hidden passageway here. That, yep, we've got a hidden staircase right there. Do you see that hidden staircase from a different angle, or is that... That's... I, I guess that was about it then. All right. Here's another tour thing. Through these woods lies the infamous Hathorne Estate. It was common during the Salem Witch Trials that the lands of the accused were taken and resold for cheap. The judge himself bought many such lands, and on them built his grand estate. The Hathorne House has since come to represent all the wrongs that were inflicted during the trials. Not yet. There are some more things I'd like to look into before I'm done. Come on, Drew. Nancy refuses to actually check out the Hathorne house, the scene of the fire. Not yet. There are some more things I'd like to look into before I'm done. Come on, Drew. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> Deirdre. What? Are you okay, Deirdre? Everything fine with you? You good? She's good. I, I don't think she's good. I think she's got some problems. All right. And here's another site. <laughs> These headstones bear names lost to history, but some believe they belong to those sentenced for witchcraft. A condemned witch was forbidden from being buried on consecrated ground, but many victims were buried by loved ones in secrecy, and some may have found their eternal rest beneath these unmarked graves. Deirdre's just a little frazzled. She's doing fine. Have we finished our tour yet? Um, Judge Hathorne's grave. That's the last grave we need to find. Hi, Deirdre. Well, here's Judge uh, Sewell. We need to know that grave. Hi, Deirdre. Is this 
it? This is it. This is it. The spot give. You stand before the remains of Salem's most zealous and conniving judge. So lacking in morals was Judge Hathorne that he sentenced innocents to death while claiming the estates of the dead as his own. Unlike the more remorseful Judge Sewell, Hathorne never felt any guilt for his part in the Salem Witch Trial. Fantastic. So now that we've done that ghost tour, the tablet just disappears from our inventory and we never see it again. I have to say, it feels like these images of the inventory are just sort of placeholder images. I, I mean, I guess they're okay, but I, in all the other games we had a lot more detail the inventory. Definitely, we could, we could see the items, they looked cooler, and this just looks like a little black and white picture. Scenery is good, I like the scenery. Okay, so the only other thing we have to do now that we've met Tegan and Olivia, the only other thing we have to do is meet the Judge Dan for. Whoa, jumped ahead, what was that? I guess he just ran, just sprinting through the town. Wow, just runs through like five people. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. There's this statue in the cemetery. Little Liberty, a highlight of my tour. Many people come here just to get a picture of it. It is said to portray Abigail Hathorne helping the accused witches escape the trials. Some even believe that Abigail's ghost still walks the forest surrounding the Hathorne house, her twisted soul now dragging the living into the afterlife. That was a, a major highlight of her tour, that seeing that statue and hearing her say three sentences about it. Sweater Guy, she is still staring at her. I think Sweater Guy has a crush on her, honestly. Talk to you later. Sweater Guy is kind of obsessed. Kind of obsessed. Why are there protesters in a small town like this? Why are there protesting? When do we want it? That group is really chanting up a storm. What has them so angry? That group is really chanting up a storm. What has them so angry? It might be that we have to like stand up. Okay, here we go. This is the one guy we can talk to. Can these guys get any louder? They're going to wake the dead next door. Maybe that's a good thing. I could ask them a few questions. What do we want? The shouting that killed us. They know the state loves us. What do we want? Hello, protester. What are you protesting? Excuse me. What exactly are you guys protesting? Only the greatest injustice that happened in Salem since 1692. They're going to give the house to the state. When do they're we protesting it? because they want the Hathorn house for themselves. They don't want it to be given to the state. AW? What does it stand for? Accused witches. The Hathorn house is a symbol it? of the state's oppression. Judge Hathorn bought a cheap after he murdered our ancestors so he could build his mansion. And now we can legally take it back. What do we want? Well, if you're doing it legally, then why the protest march? Rumor has all our evidence for a claim to the estate has gone missing. Stolen right from the courthouse. And the judge himself refuses to speak to us. He hasn't even made an official statement regarding the burglary. I could barely hear this guy. I'm sorry, there's too much shouting. He's saying that, hey, you know, they, they, their group has a claim to the Hathorne house. All the evidence in the case has disappeared. It's just gone. It's no longer in the courthouse. This is why you need to make backups of all your important legal documents, sir. Seriously, this guy just looks so good. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? That group is really chanting up a storm. Justice! What has them so angry? Fight the power. Yeah. What do we want? Justice! 
and that is that that group is just gonna be shouting the entire time what do they want justice and when do they want it now yes can I help you hi sorry to bother you but we were looking for judge Danforth's office just across the hall why what did you two girls do we didn't do I'm kidding Alicia Cole Esquire nice to meet you I'm Nancy Drew and this is Deirdre Shannon you're a lawyer Salem's best the only practicing lawyer in the historic town limits if you could believe it and if you girls were in any trouble I'd have no problem representing you you both have that innocent look juries love it so you're saying we could get away with a crime we no partners in crime sorry to bother you miss Cole we'll check in with the judge have a good evening yeah, it is interesting, multiple people pointed out. Nancy will still ask what those protesters are protesting about, already knowing that information. What do we want? Justice! That group is really chanting up a storm. What has them so angry? What has them so angry, yeah. Like, Nancy, just talk to that guy about what makes them so angry, and still wondering. What do we want? Justice! What, what is that protest you're doing? Wrong, wrong way. Wrong way, I can't read your sign. When do we want it? What do we want? Yeah. Oh man, it's like a weird group of cheerleaders. Okay. Let's see. I think this is a bathroom. And we've got security cameras, which were no help when uh, the courthouse was robbed. Actually, courthouse robbery is second day of the game, right? So the courthouse robbery is going to be this. Yeah, yep, it's the second day of the game. Nancy can't do anything about it here. We're still on the first day of the game. Nancy's just learning what things are and how they're going. That group is really chanting up a storm. What has them so angry? Justice. Oh, I guess they were standing so they would be in perfect view of the windows. Ah, obviously that makes sense. You'd really become my enemy if I committed a crime? Sorry. You shouldn't joke about that. Why? You gonna arrest me? No, but I'd call the police to report you. I'd also recommend you a decent lawyer. Because I'm an excellent witness for the prosecution. Wow. I'm a lawyer's daughter, Deirdre. Don't mess with me. Nancy, Deirdre made a harmless partners in crime joke, and you are just jumping down her throat. It's like, Deirdre, I will have you arrested if you even think about breaking the law. It's like, calm down. Deirdre is a professional criminal investigator. I, I think she knows about laws. Yeah, hello. Ted, is that you? Ted? Ted? Um, no, Your Honor. My name is Nancy Drew. I think you've spoken with my father. Nancy Drew? Carson's daughter? Yes, and I'm with my friend Deirdre Shannon. We're investigating the arson of the Hathorn house. Ah, yes, yes. Can we come in? Well, you see, no, I mean, I'd let you in, but I seem to have been locked in my office and I, uh, I need some help getting out. So who's Ted? That never gets explained. Other people are pointing out. Nancy breaks laws all the time. Breaking and entering laws all the time. She just steals whatever items she finds on the ground. Nancy does tend to break laws, yeah. Okay, so let's talk to this guy. It's weird. Judge Danforth is... I don't want to say he's stupid, but he locked himself inside his own office. The office that he's been working in for decades doesn't know how the door works i was hoping we could talk about the hathorn house case yes it's a terrible tragedy for our town but let's table that discussion for later okay i'd like to get out of my office first i wanted to talk to you about the book of apologies you know the book in austria at the Mosam Castle? Yes, Nancy, I would love to talk about it, but I would really love if we could do it in person, face to face, as opposed to through this door. No, but seriously, we, we should talk through the door, sir. Do you know where I could find a key to your office? 
Yes, I believe I gave a copy of the key to Alicia Cole as backup. She's just down the hall. I hope she's still here. All right, let's hope. <laughs> the Deirdre's eyes there. She's like, what? Anyway, the key should be here. Wait, how did Deirdre get... Deirdre was behind me, and then some... Okay, Deirdre's right behind me. And now she's there. Deirdre, you've got major ninja skills there sneaking past me. Yes, can I help you? He said you might have a key. <laughs> Sorry, I gave him my spare. Unbelievable. Does this ever end? Oh, well then, do you have a paper clip? Yeah, and if you don't mind me asking, what business do you two have with the judge? We're helping the judge with a case. Anything I can assist you with? Thanks, but I think we got it. No need for a lawyer. At least, not yet. Yes, can I help you? I'll come back later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. So here we go. Hello? Judge Danforth. I'll come back later. We are going to use this paper clip and break into the door. Judge Danforth? I couldn't find your key. What? Uh, Alicia said she'd keep a copy for me. Well, I did find a paper clip. I think I can pick your luck, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure, fine. Okay, so this is the second This shouldn't be too much of, of a game. challenge. Remember our first puzzle, the, 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 the maze puzzle, getting into that, that desk in Austria? So it's been about an hour since the first puzzle. That, that's what people are talking about when they complain this game doesn't have enough puzzles. You have like an hour long break in between puzzles. Oh boy. Okay, so this puzzle is you need to guess the correct solution. So what's the correct order? Is it gonna be one, two, three, four, five? It, the, basically that's how the puzzle works. You just keep trying. Oh, did that wrong. Basically, guess the correct order for the tumblers. It's the puzzle. It's an okay puzzle. The puzzle is 43512. That's the solution to this puzzle. Yeah, Nancy just lectured Deirdre about breaking the law, and then she immediately picks the lock to the judge's office. Ha! Still got it. Efficient. How'd you learn to do that, actually? Online video tutorial. Someday you have to tell me about your secret life of breaking and entering, Drew. Because you're in danger of being cool. Which, honestly, I just don't like. Someday. Okay, so we open the door. Hooray, and now we can meet Judge Danforth. Ah, those protesters are out there again. Stirring the pot. You know, this town used to be a quiet place, but it seems lately there's been an element that has infiltrated our community. I have no doubt one of those troublemakers locked my door and threw away the key. Now, Nancy, your father and I have discussed. Oh, sorry, I'm not Nancy. Of course you're not. You look nothing like Carson. Did your father ever tell you about the time we won fourth place at the Lake Winnipesaukee Regatta? <laughs> you see, at the time I had 2010 vision, so I was the navigator and... Judge, this is Deirdre Shannon. She's working with me on the case. Deirdre, you're the one who tried to break down my door. Break down? Your Honor, that's an exaggeration. I was knocking. Heavily. Look, I'm really busy. Dealing with this Hathorne House business. Uh, being a judge is not as simple as, uh, you know, investigating during your free time. Well, we just used our free time to unlock your door. So I'm sure you'll be willing to repay us with some answers to our questions. Right? <clears throat> yes, of course. What can I help you girls with? So, wh wh how are you involved with this whole mess? 
Can you explain to us how you're involved with the Hathorne House? Well, yes. The house was built by Judge John Hathorne during the 1600s, and it represented the oldest surviving structure from that era. Judge Hathorne, of course, was one of the three judges that presided over the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, and I'm sure we can read all about the home's history in Salem's museum. More recently, Francis Tuttle, Judge Hathorne's last direct descendant, lived in a small section of the house while the rest was left to fall into considerable disrepair. She was alone, except for a part-time caregiver, Lauren Holt, who had a bedroom in the carriage house. <clears throat> a few months ago, Francis Tuttle passed away, which left Hathorne House without a legal heir. According to the historical statutes of Salem, after 90 days, the house reverts to public property, the deadline of which is two days from now, at midnight. Midnight in Salem. Dun, 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 dun. So, the house that was burned is going to become public property in two days. So, I think the judge needs to decide, well, am I going to give it as public property to the state, or am I going to give it to this angry protester group? So, how did Francis Tuttle pass away exactly? The woman was 88 years old. The coroner confirmed her death was of natural causes. So they never investigated Lauren Holt. You need the suspicion of foul play to investigate someone, young lady. We'd like to speak with her all the same. Yeah. She still lives on the estate, although for how much longer we do not know. You can also find her in her shop, Luminous Infusions. She might be willing to talk to you. Oh yeah, and there's somebody living on the property too. That. That's... that complicates matters. So the Book of Apologies. Why did you really need it? <clears throat> yes, and first of all, I'm so glad you're all right. Nasty business. Had I known you were going to be put in harm's way, I would have never called Carson and asked for his help. I've done plenty of work for my father. He trusts me. I can handle myself. Yes, I'm sure you can. So, I've already heard some stories, but would you mind giving me your version of why the book is important? Yes. So, Judge Sewell was rumored to keep a ledger of all the accused, intending to publish it to reconcile with their families and clear their names. But he passed away before he could do so. Going to Austria for a rumored book seems like a heck of a long shot. <laughs> well... I have been under some pressure from the A.W. group. A.W. as in accused witches. How valid is the claim the accused witches have against the Hathorne House? I have been working with Tegan Perry, the organizer of that group. The Book of Apologies would have presented evidence Miss Perry could use for her claim. And without it... Their case is incomplete. According to the Statutes of Salem established in 1629, property ownership was placed under the Vacuum Domicilium Doctrine, meaning that any unused land would be made available to any member of the public who was willing to settle on it. This comes into effect 90 days after the land is abandoned at midnight, meaning it will happen with the Hathorne Estate in two days. You already said that was told that the burning of Hathorne House is suspected to be a case of arson. How did the police come to that conclusion? The investigation found paint solvent residue on burnt embers, suggesting someone deliberately used an accelerant. Thankfully, Mrs. Tuttle never had to see what became of her home. And what evidence do you have that May Perry is the one responsible for this? Evidence? Have you ever heard of recidivism? Three out of four criminals in the United States are repeat offenders. And there's only one person in all of Salem who has a history of fire-related crime. So, there is no evidence? Not yet, but there will be. You don't need evidence. She's already been convicted in the court of public opinion. Is that what she said? No, I'm saying it. She has a history with this sort of thing. What's May's motive? What does she gain by burning down the Hathorne house? You'd have to ask her. And while you're at it, you can ask about her alibi. 
which she refused to give to the police. So, any other questions? Yeah. So, that, that, I, I, I mentioned that earlier. May has a history of fire-related crime. She's been arrested before for arson. So, like, why didn't this get mentioned earlier? And May's lack of alibi, this seems like something we should have been investigating earlier instead of going on a little ghost tour for a half hour and, and talking about the Judge Sewell and the, the stuff. And I'm just, I don't know. So, somebody's saying Salem has a population of about 44,000 people. Don't you think it's dangerous throwing around May's name as a suspect before any evidence links her to the crime? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? What are you saying? From what you've described, there is no evidence against May. Yet you were saying that she did it. I just... As a judge, I think you would be the first to admit that sounds prejudicial. It is not just me, Miss Drew. There are plenty of people who believe that May is responsible for this crime. It is not prejudice when she is the only likely suspect. Actually, that is the definition of prejudice. I'm not going to have this debate with you. Is there anything else? Uh, I guess that's it. Talk to you later. Miss Drew, before you go, there is something else I need your help with. You're not locked out of your car, are you? Oh, no. <clears throat> there was a... There was an incident here recently. Someone broke into the evidence room. Oh. Have you called the police? Well, no. Not yet. I don't think anything was taken. Never mind. I'll, I'll call the police. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry, okay. I'm officially here. exhausted. Let's head back to the Perry house, okay? The judge is like, what do you mean? There needs to be evidence to prove someone's guilty? A and he's the only judge in town? I just... Uh, the judge just gives up in the middle of his thing. So, as we heard from the protesters outside, somebody broke into the courthouse and stole all the evidence related to the claim. And yet, Judge Danforth here, he's like, somebody might have stolen something? I'm not sure. You know what? I'll... I'll I'll talk to you about it tomorrow, not now. What can I help you girls with? I, I mean, later. Talk to you later. And that's actually the, the truth. We aren't going to follow up on that until the second day of the game. What is this thing? What is that? Weird. It's what it is. Just weird. Yeah, this judge is just terrible at his job. The judge is an idiot. What do we want? It's also weird how the game makes it seem like the judge is the one who decides whether or not May gets arrested. Should that be for the police to decide, not the judge? Darn, missed the opening hours. Better luck tomorrow. Yeah, and this is this is that store that they were talking about. Now this accused witches group shows up from out of nowhere and thinks they're entitled to the Hathorn property. Didn't they find proof for their claim? It's only fair. How far back do these reparations have to go? It's been hundreds of years. Nobody owes these loudmouth squat. It's a bid for attention and money. Must every response be outrage? I miss the peace and quiet. All right, more people talking without moving their mouths. Any thoughts? First album was better. Yeah, totally. It's good. Really? You like this? Why wouldn't I? Yeah, well, they were much better before they changed their bassist. I meant the case. What do you think about it? I don't like the judge. Yeah, I kind of got that. I think the feeling's mutual. Well, he's a jerk. Maybe he burned down the Hathorn house. What? You don't think so? Yeah this song. Oh man, Deirdre and Nancy just have a casual conversation about this song. 
All right, so what do I think about the judge? I don't think the judge is the culprit. I mean, the judge literally locked himself inside his office. I don't think he's smart enough to be able to use a, a pack of matches. I don't think the judge burned down the house. But losing the accused witch's evidence seems a little too convenient. Exactly! It's the absence of a case, which is why May should be considered innocent. If May were willing to give an alibi, we could clear this up tonight. But she's not talking to anyone, it seems. We are all allowed to enjoy some amount of privacy, but her refusal to be interviewed leads me to believe she is hiding something. I can't believe you, Drew. I thought you were here to help. You know, not everyone can be as brilliant and cold as you are. I'm not cold. And I never said I was brilliant either. You need to get May to trust you. If she trusts you, she'll open up and tell you the truth. And then you'll see. You're kind of my last hope to reach her. You're good at finding ways to get people to open up. Usually. So find a way. I'll try. Yeah, gosh. I mean... So the judge shouldn't be allowed to hear May's case because, as we'll find out later, the judge sort of has a history uh, with May. Specifically, the judge's son has a history with May. I, I think the two of them are dating. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just reading into uh, things where I, I shouldn't be. But yeah, I, the, the judge should not be allowed to hear the case because he's too personally involved. Huh, is that Multnomah Falls? Yeah, that's Multnomah Falls. Okay, cool. Cool, I guess. So let's actually talk to May. Now Nancy realizes she's going to talk to May and get May's alibi. May just happens to be listening to the exact same music that Deirdre was listening to in the car. Hi. Tegan at the museum. Looks like she's working on an interesting installation. Why don't you ask her? Well, I thought you might have an opinion, or... I don't. Can you just leave her out of this? I don't want her being involved with my problems. Have you ever seen this lighter before? Wow. I lost this days ago. Where'd you find it? Outside the front door. Are you always snooping around? I have a knack for finding things that other people miss. Thanks. This means a lot to me. Look, I spoke with the judge. They don't have anything on you. All we need is an alibi, and then they can't charge you with anything. Yeah. And they're not going to have anything on me, because he can't prove I did it. Then why not just give the police an alibi? That's all they need. I just can't. I don't know who they are. Just, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I can't. I do like May. I think she's a good character, but, oh man. So May's alibi is that she was with the judge's son. So once that alibi gets revealed, the judge has to be taken off the case, right? Right? Because he's too personally involved. Somebody did complain uh, about this. Like this sentence, May, I know you don't know me that well, but I'm here to dot, 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 dot. We don't know what Nancy's going to say. It's a little annoying that we don't get to hear that. We don't get to see what the second half of the statement is. Because what if it's something really weird? Like, they, I know you don't know me that well, but I'm here to party. Yeah, let's go out. Woo! I, I mean, that's not what Nancy's going to say, but it's like, I, I feel a little hesitant picking that conversation option, but I don't know what it actually is. <laughs> yeah, you don't know me that well, but I'm here to kill you. Yeah, it could be that. What if it's that? That that would be so strange. Do I do like the music. The music is cool. So your sister likes you, I think. Your sister really cares about you. She has a strange way of showing it sometimes. Well, she cared enough to get Deirdre and I involved. I worry about her. How come? She takes her work really seriously. 
Like, she cares. A lot. Like, way more than most normal people do for their passion projects. It's not a hobby, it's more like... something she has to do. Kinda sounds like me. I hope not. It's like a personal crusade, like only she can make it better or something. You can't live your life like that. You need to enjoy it. Enjoy it with the people you love. Yeah, believe me, I know. Honestly, I wish. I wish we could have had these conversations with me earlier on in the game instead of just that one conversation. And I look around, and that's that. I'm sorry to keep complaining about it. Um, my last time complaining about it, but he is an interesting character, and he's basically the victim in the case. Nancy should have been able to deal with May more directly at the very start of the game, instead of just ignoring her until we reach a point where it's convenient to the plot to actually care about her again. Do you and the judge know each other? You have a history? The man thinks I'm a bad influence. Why? Because I used to be friends with his son. His son has had an interesting life, and he thinks it's my fault. He holds a grudge against me. in a small town long enough, people make up their minds about who you are. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It just is. Can you tell me anything about Olivia Ravencroft? Anything at all? I can tell you she doesn't get along with my sister. Really? Why? I don't know. They had some falling out a while ago. You should ask her. Do you think Olivia would have any reason to light the Hathorn house on fire? Yeah, it is almost impossible to hear what the characters are saying, isn't it? My gosh. And it's not like I can control the audio settings and change them in the middle of a conversation. Let me put it this way. Olivia is what we call in this town part of the witch business. Anything dramatic, spectacular, or with fire, she's usually involved. So you think she did it? I didn't say that. I just think it's possible that she could have. Okay, thanks. Second background song playing the do 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 do. Did you hear that? So we actually have two songs playing at the same time. I feel like maybe that's the reason why it's hard to hear the conversation. It's because we've got two songs at once. Hey, I know you don't know me that well, but I'm here to help you. I didn't burn down the half horn house. Okay. Why does everyone think you did? It's called prejudice. Seem like a good reason to burn down a building. What can I say? We're stupid. It's gone. Did you ever visit the estate? All the time. I appreciated it. Oh? Why? Because it's historically significant? It was built by a cold, brutal man who sent a bunch of people to their death because he didn't understand them. I appreciate being reminded of what happens when greedy people stay in charge. So. It is kind of a weird line of dialogue with me. It's like, hey, I look different, so everybody's prejudiced against me. Is she talking about her leggings? Do people hate your leggings, May? Is that why people are prejudiced against you? Did you know Frances Tuttle very well? No, but I know her daughter Lauren has that shop in Miss Infusions. You ever been inside? No, why would I go there? I was just wondering if you knew her. I don't. I mean, I know she used to hang with my sister back in the day, but I guess they fell out or something. That's all I know. Someone says May honestly looks like one of the more normal characters in the game. Yeah, I think her graphics are better than graphics for, say, Deirdre or Tegan. Um, May definitely is one of the better uh, designed characters. Hey, what are you listening to? you like this? Yeah, we were listening on the way over. The first album was much better. Yeah, too bad they changed bases. Yeah, I know, right? It's just, you don't look like you listen to this music. Why does no one believe me? Now you know how I feel. I'm done talking, okay? Oh, is that it? Is that it? We just needed to have that conversation. 
I'm not like other girls. I wear red leggings. Yeah. Hi. I'm done talking, okay? Yeah. Okay, well, that's it for me. Yeah, everybody's saying May has a scar, but it's like Hi. not visible. I'm done talking, okay? Like maybe she does have a scar on that side of her face, which is pointed away from us and covered with hair. But yeah, hmm. I don't know. The game seems they they seem to think that her scar is easily visible, but it's it's not. If that makes sense. And now we're here where we have the other music. This is the other song that was playing. Well, she's protecting something. Or someone. Okay, yeah, Obvi. But what? I don't know yet. I'm getting through to her, though. We have to go to the Hathorn house. Tonight. Tonight? Why? Like, in the dark. Why tonight? Yeah. Do you have flashlights? You do remember what I told you about that place, right? You know what? Better idea. I'll go. You stay here and see if maybe May feels like talking to you. Be careful out there, Drew. There's no such thing as ghosts, Deirdre. I'll be fine. No, not ghosts. People swear there's something in that house. Too many people believe it to not be true. Could be a wild animal or a toxic waste dump. I don't know. Just keep your guard up, okay? Oh, wow, that was really sweet. Yeah, all right, let's not hug or anything. You should check in with Lauren Holt. She still lives up there. Take the keys for my car. It's way too far of a walk all the way there. And remember, things happen after midnight in Salem. <sighs> Be careful. Is it midnight right now? How late is it? Yeah. Where's Tegan? I wanna know that. Is Tegan somewhere? Yeah, I don't know where Tegan is. Maybe she's inside this room. I probably shouldn't be in May's room without an invitation. This feels like something they were gonna have in the game but never got around to doing, exploring May's room. It feels like we're gonna explore her room, find a clue there or something like that, but no. So, Nancy has decided now she needs to explore the scene of the arson in the middle of the night. She could have done that earlier during the daytime, but no, middle of the night, that's when we're going to be exploring. Good plan, Nancy. I wish we got to explore Maze Room. That's sad. So we have this minor area in between the house and the graveyard. We'll explore this on the second day of the game. about the Hathorn House in the Globe. Suspected arson. Your name was mentioned. Not as a suspect, obviously. <laughs> Tegan Perry mentioned she had hired you to investigate. She's giving interviews to newspapers? Seriously? Tegan, why? Deirdre Shannon? Wow, that's surprising. Yeah, it's a strange case all around. Are you guys in Boston? How'd you know? You said Globe. There's only one paper I know that uses that name. Whoa, nothing gets past you. You must keep Ned on his toes. Well, to be honest, 
I haven't really talked to him lately. Oh, really? Yeah, us neither. Salem's pretty close to Boston. If you guys have the time, you should come up here and check it out while I'm in town. Really? Yeah, it would be good to catch up. Eh, I don't know, Nancy. With our special detective powers, we might be mistaken for witches. Heard they don't fare well up there. Are you kidding me? They love you guys. Did you know that Salem is the only police force that has a witch as an official emblem? Hmm, I don't think that's true. I'll bet you on it. Okay, you're on. I'll take payment when we arrive in Salem. Maybe in a week or so. A week? Hopefully I won't be here then. But if you can make it up earlier, great. Good talking to you, Nance. Yeah, same to you two. Bye. So why did they call us again? No, seriously, what what were you guys calling us about? Oh, it looks like I can't call them back either. Well darn! I guess they just said, hey, hey, you know what? We saw you're nearby, thought we'd call. Okay, so our goal for this night is to explore the Hathorn house. Ooh, what's this? Text message? Don't look behind you. Question mark. The ghost will steal your soul! Oh. May isn't talking. Did you say something to her? Nothing in particular. We talked about the band and stuff. If you see a ghost... Don't let it take your soul. Okay, Deirdre. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks for that phone call. Text message conversation. Very weird. Definitely. Alright. So, as I was saying, our, our goal for this night is to search the Hathorn house for clues. And by search the Hathorn house, I mean we're going to walk close to the Hathorn house and then immediately forget about exploring it. Okay? Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. That's what we're doing right now. We get close to the house. What are you doing here? Are you Lauren Holt? You're trespassing. This is private property. I'm giving you one chance to explain yourself. Hi, Lauren. So, um... Let's see... I saw a light in the window. I saw a light in the window. Wanted to see if anyone was home. Yeah, well there isn't, so you can leave. This place isn't meant for your enjoyment. Enjoyment? Yeah, I know your type. Destruction enthusiasts. You take photos of destroyed buildings and accidents and such. Post them online, trying to get likes off of other people's misery. Um, no, no, I, I, I actually am not a social media person. Not much of a social media person, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. <sighs> you can come in. Oh, okay, cool. I don't like social media. Great, now you can come into my house. Cool! Thanks, Lauren! Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Lauren Holt. But you knew that. T? Please, you've lived here a while? Since I was 11. Ever since Francis... Sorry. Still hurts. She was very special to me. So... You're here because why again? I'm investigating the fire. For whom, exactly? A cousin of the Perrys. It seems like everyone thinks she did it, but there's no evidence. The Perrys are complicated. Do you think May did it? Maybe. I don't know. Used to feel sorry for her, but I don't know what she's capable of now. Or Tegan. Or both of them. The Perrys look out for themselves, and no one else. Always have. 
Sorry, I've just been under a lot of stress lately. I don't mean to sound like that. Anyway, what do you want to know? Let's see, let's get some alibis. So what were you doing on the night of, I think two days ago, was that the night of the fire? Or was that the robbery in Austria? What were you doing two nights ago? Two nights ago? Why? The house was burned a week ago. Different case. Might be related. Okay. I was in my shop, two days ago like was I was every night. Anyone see you? Tourists. No one who is still in town, but I have sales receipts to prove it. You come by Luminous Infusions, and I'll show you. We stop by her store on the next day of the game. She doesn't show us that. And she says, I was working there every night, but she's not there tonight, and she wasn't there at all today. So that's clearly a bold-faced lie. This is kind of an interesting house. We don't get to explore it. This is the only time we get to look around. So, coffee, tea, yummy. Ooh, is that a ceiling even? Nice. What can you tell me about the history of the Hathorne House? Built by Judge John Hathorne in 1695. The man flat out stole the land from the people he sentenced to death. Property has changed hands many times over the years, with Francis Tuttle being the most recent owner. So, I saw the ghost out in the cemetery. The scarecrow? Yeah, I've heard there were ghosts out here, but all I saw was that. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> I've seen a lot of weird things. So far, I've yet to find one without a rational explanation. Then there's nothing to talk about. But why does everyone think there are ghosts out here? A town this old is bound to have some unbelievable stories. So you've seen one? You don't live here. You wouldn't understand. So you have. So have you seen the ghost or not? Yes or no? Have you looked for the will? Of course, but I can't find it. Believe me, I've tried to find it. And now the judge has given me days to deliver or the town will take control. I don't have a copy, but I know one exists. Francis told me all the time that the Hathorne house and its grounds would be mine if something ever happened to her. She knew that I would take care of this place better than anyone else. What happens to you? I won't be here anymore. But I have representation, a professional lawyer. Her name's Alicia Cole. She's helping me out. Is Luminous Infusions your shop? Yes. What do you do there? Just curious. It's a tea room and modern apothecary. You know, before there was a pharmacist, the town relied on an herbalist to provide medicines for headaches and sickness and energy and stuff like that. Interesting. Did Francis Tuttle teach you this? No, I taught myself. Oh, cool. I- It's hard. I, I want- Look, I don't really know who set fire to the house, but I know that I want to stay here. It means something to me. It's the only home I've ever had. I'm getting a little tired. I think we've talked enough, don't you? Of course. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Whoever is doing this, you're not frightening me away. Not possible. That's not possible. It's a ghost. Curse not the darkness. scary as soon Drew. as you can see whoa what's going on you weren't answering your phone what's wrong God. her i guess it could have been him too it was too confusing to really make out what are you talking about the ghost deirdre the ghost at hathorne house the one you were talking about i saw it wow never thought you'd try to pull a joke like this i underestimated you this is a really good performance. Very un-Nancy Drew-like. It's not a joke. 
Deirdre, I saw her. Didn't you want me to see it? Didn't you want me to look into it? Well, yeah, but I didn't think for a second that you would. I guess I thought you'd go up there and find smoke and mirrors or whatever it is you do. You're saying it's real? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not used to being so freaked out. Wait, you didn't leave my car out there, did you? What? No, no. I've calmed down enough to drive back. It's outside. Good. I could get you more chowder. Don't think it'll help. I need answers. Okay, so let's go through it. I do find working a mystery strangely calming. Okay. So, that was just kind of crazy. As soon as Nancy finishes talking to Lauren, she sees a ghost, a very, very scary ghost, and now Nancy is legitimately afraid, like she's never seen ghosts before. It's scary. I found out something interesting from Lauren Holt. Did you know that Francis Tuttle had a will? Judge Danforth never mentioned that. Yeah. Because they can't find it, they assume it doesn't exist. So, if it does exist, Lauren would get the estate. Yeah. Oh, and that lawyer, Alicia Cole, represents her. How's that working out for her? There doesn't seem to be much progress made. Yeah, well, without a will, what can she really do? So, that's gonna be our mystery. We need to find the will, which is hidden somewhere inside the Hathor. That doesn't seem like it has anything to do with proving May's innocence, but that's going to be uh, one of the major goals of the mystery. I don't know how to explain it, but I saw something. I don't know what to tell you, Drew. It's as weird as Moonchunk cheese ice cream and sandals with socks. But my instinct is that the two are related. The fire and the ghosts. Right. You're not buying Olivia's story that some coven of witches came here to unleash ghosts to take revenge by burning it down, though. Right? Right, I think. It's unlikely anyway. You really think what you saw was real? It's worse than that. I think in order to know, I need to see it again. And you need to come with me. Tomorrow. Okay. And then we can plan road trips to find Bigfoot and aliens and the Loch Ness Monster. Hey, sounds fun to me. It's been a long day. I think I'm just gonna call it a night. You do look kinda... Well, maybe don't video chat with the boyfriend. At least not until you get the twigs out of your hair. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. Hey. What? You want that chowder now? The offer expired. I was going to say... We make a pretty good team. See? That's proof right there. You are definitely hallucinating. <sighs> There's always an explanation. Gotta remember. Nancy, when you're answering the phone, don't start by talking to yourself. Answer the phone by saying hello, not just, okay, I'm going to continue my previous conversation. That's so weird. This is a weird way to answer the phone. Fortunately, the Hardy Boys don't mention it or pick up on it, but I still think it's weird. And this is Joe Hardy. Hey, hey, Joe called. Sorry? They have a witch on their emblem. We won! Really? Sending you a pic. When can we expect payment? <laughs> That's a fire department logo. I said police. Public safety. It's all the same. A technicality. <sighs> There's something I have to get off my chest. I saw a ghost. <laughs> Sorry, what? This case. I've never seen anything like it. It felt real. I can't explain it. What is it? What's wrong? Uh, hold on. Say no more. It just so happens that ghost hunting is our specialty. Wait, what? We're not passing on a chance like this. Be there before you know it. <laughs> Only if you really want to. Talk to you later. Ghost hunting in Salem? Come on, that's, that's a ghost hunter's dream come true. Oh, this is super creepy. Ugh. Ah. Yeah? Good morning, sunshine. What time is it? It's early. Hurry up, get dressed, and meet me downstairs. I have something to cheer you up.
Alrighty, so that is uh, the first day of the game. Now we're on the second day of the game. So it took us about like two hours to get through the first day of the game. I'll be honest, like 80 to 90% of this was just talking to people. But yeah, so that's one thing we can say about Midnight in Salem. It's definitely longer than other games in the Nancy Drew series. Let's see what Deirdre's cool surprise is. It's fancy. It's amazing. It's also incredibly handsome. It's the Hardy Boys. Oh my, oh my, oh my, not good, not good, not good. <coughs> oh, what are you guys doing in here? They're trying their best to unimpress me. Mission accomplished. Nancy, hi. Joe was just, uh, making an effort. Oh, that's what that smell is. I tried showing him the ropes, but he wants to prove he can do it without my help. Tegan set out the ingredients for Johnny Cakes before she had to run, but I gotta admit, it's been a while since I last whipped something up. Successfully. Oh, I love Johnny Cakes. I can help. Of course you can. All right, Hardy, step down before we have another fire on our hands. Yeah, Joe kind of made a huge disaster, and so we get a puzzle creating Johnny Cakes. All right, let's see. Step one, one cup of sugar. One cup of sugar, two tablespoons of sugar. This can't be right. I told you I couldn't keep up with her, so I improvised. I'm 100% certain about the amounts, though. Let's approach this sensibly. What do we need? Can't we just call Tegan and ask her to repeat the ingredients more slowly? Can't we look up the ingredients online? I don't know. It, it, it's it's weird trying to figure out the ingredients here. Because we just have to guess until we get it right. One cup of... Flour. Flour. Looks right to me. One cup of... Cornmeal. Looks right to me. One spoon of... Sugar. One spoon of sugar. I think you've got it. One oh, yeah, spoon two spoons of, of sugar. Sugar. Looks right to me. One spoon of salt. No, no, no. Baking powder. Baking powder. More baking powder than salt. I think you've got it. One teaspoon of salt. We're getting there. That looks great. Let's tackle the next step. All right, second step. We have to fill the bowl until the weight is just right. Quick heads up, this is about where things started to go south last time. Hey, let's just trust that Nancy knows what she's doing. All righty. I am glad the Hardy Boys brought a puzzle with them. It's been a while since we've had a puzzle, huh? So we need eight ounces of milk and five ounces, no, eight ounces of milk. That's great. And then uh, that much melted butter. Some amount of egg. Don't know how much egg. We need vanilla. Uh, two ounces, 0.2 of vanilla. So that means two things of vanilla. We need some nutmeg. Now we just need to figure out how much egg. Is it one egg or two egg? Do we just guess? I, I think maybe we have to reach this 11.7 ounces at the bottom of the screen, so... Two eggs? And that brings us exactly to that amount, uh, the weight at the bottom of the screen. So good, good. Finally, my favorite part. I thought your favorite part was eating. My next favorite part. Dear goodness. Joe. Could you help me pour while I flip? Sure thing. This is a simple enough puzzle. Just wait for one of the pancakes to start smoking, and then you click it. Yep, yeah, that's it. I, I mean, you can see I'm doing the puzzle right now. 
like making pancakes is this easy in real life. My pancakes always end up terrible. I always end up burnt somehow. Here comes some more. All done. They look super tasty. Let's eat. We did it. Hooray, we're fantastic. We made some pancakes. That's a pretty large stack of pancakes. Sheesh. Oh, hey, and uh, now everybody's here. Let's have some breakfast. Or let's just stare awkwardly at the food and not eat anything. Ooh, these smell delicious. Great job, Nancy. These look amazing. This camera angle, it, it feels kind of awkward because Deirdre's going to talk for most of this conversation, but she's like half off screen. It's kind of a weird angle. Couldn't they have had like Deirdre sit closer to the Hardy Boys or May sit in a little closer so we could get all the characters on screen at the same time? May, these are the Hardy Brothers. Frank and Joe. Oh, and this is We're where very I can make interested in your case. Frank disappear if uh -huh. I look at the ground. They're good friends of mine. They're going to help us with the there investigation. Frank's the watch still stays in this, place and his head still stays in place. The better chance we have But if uh, I look at the ground, Frank's body completely disappears. Hey. Well, Joe, you need to learn how to cook. Maybe let Frank teach you. Otherwise, how are you going to impress anyone solving crimes impresses people so does committing them what it's true not saying i'm impressed by that just stating a fact i prefer someone who possesses a deep intellectual appreciation and table manners you want to be impressed we should finally show her our business plan for our new business what it's very businessy what? What is it? Well, Joe and I have been talking recently about making things a bit more official. Since we're always called to solve crimes, we thought that maybe we should start getting paid for it. We're starting our very own detective agency. License, insurance, the whole thing. And... And we want to know if you'd be interested in being a partner. A partner? Hey, table that. All right, Drew. Why not update everyone on where we're at? I really wish they didn't table that discussion. It'd be cool if Nancy could answer the question, say, if she wants to join their detective agency or not. Unfortunately, we won't. We don't get an answer. It's just, um, yeah, it's just one of those things we're not actually going to uh, learn about. Oh, well... So let's see. Nancy wants to check the town archives here. Some people are asking, okay, did, did the Hardy Boys look better in this game or in Creature of Kapu Cave? I think they look fine. I mean, Frank, Frank looks fine. Joe also looks okay. Joe looks a little weirder later on when he's dancing around, but he looks, he looks fine here. One thing I'd like to do today is check the town archives. If it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to handle this. You were going to look into the history of ownership of the Hathorn House, right? Yeah, sure. We can go together. Eh, uh, no. It's better if I handle this solo. I'm a whiz with microfish. Don't ask me why. Okay, fine. Sounds like a story. And I'm not going to tell it to you, okay? So, Nancy... What do you think we should focus on for the investigation? Yeah, it, it's weird, okay? Apparently Deirdre's really good at microfish, so she's just gonna be in the library all day long and we won't get to see her. Fine, fine. So hey, guys, what about that ghost from yesterday? So I guess you're wondering about the thing I mentioned. Yes, sounds super exciting. I already told them about the whole sighting. Yeah, I can't explain it. Yet. Even with the most modern scientific techniques available, there are many phenomena that we still cannot explain. I believe what you saw was real. What? What? Sure, some sort of combination of gaseous blow-off and light refraction. No, supernatural. A ghost, a real ghost, with thoughts and memory and agency. I'm not so sure. I just built some new equipment that I'd love to try out. I'm sure it's nothing, but we'll go to the cemetery today and investigate anyway. 
Maybe we can add ghost hunting to our detective services. <laughs> Kidding. It would be cool if they, they... So the Hardys are going to be checking out ghosts today. Good to know. And what about Judge Danforth? This is what Nancy's going to do. She's going to hang out with Judge Danforth. Solve his puzzle. Judge Danforth mentioned that he was the victim of a burglary. What was stolen? We don't know. The judge was working with Tegan on developing a case for the Accused Witches Organization. The what? The descendants of the Accused Witches of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. They're staking a claim to the Hathorne Estate due to unjust dispossession and execution of their ancestors. It's one of the reasons I search for the Book of Apologies in Austria, as it contains a record of wronged families. But someone swiped it from right under my nose. And around the time of the arson, there was a burglary at the judge's office. Too coincidental not to be connected. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'd like to review the crime scene at the courthouse for any clues. The judge might not let you do that. He didn't sound very forthcoming. True. But maybe my father can convince him. They're old friends. I can give him a call. All right. What else? Yeah, Dutch Danforth is not very Danforth coming, and May's just sitting here the whole time, not really paying attention. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, uh, hey, there was an arson last week. Yeah, that that's a thing. The arson that happened last week. And we haven't had the chance to collect any alibis yet. We need to ask everyone we've met where they were on the night of the arson. Corroborating their answers with whomever they were with will help bring into focus who is and isn't a suspect. Hey, May, why don't you give us your alibi? Oh, also, we need an alibi for two, three days ago with the, the theft at Austria. We need to figure out how the theft from Mosam Castle is connected to this case. Theft of what? The Book of Apologies. My dad asked me to retrieve it from Mosam Castle in Austria as a favor for Judge Danforth, who works here in Salem. It we details were, are, all the uh, victims of... Like, we just had a conversation about Judge Danforth, and now she's explaining who Judge Danforth is. I'm like, come on, Nancy, come on! They know who the judge is! I'm sorry, that's a minor thing to get annoyed about. Sorry. However, this book was stolen as well. Three days ago, when Nancy was there. Why was this book all the way in Austria? Great question! The resident historian told me the judge who wrote the book willed all his belongings to be preserved by whichever museum would have them at the time. That must be how it ended up in an Austrian castle, for safekeeping. Well, that certainly didn't stop the thief, whoever it is. I can ask around about alibis during this time period as well. See if anyone in town can't be accounted for. Might point us in the right direction. I have something to add. Whoever is responsible for this crime is going to great lengths to cover it up. We don't know if these people are dangerous. Remember that. And be careful. I mean, that scene was fine. It was just, I didn't need a 10 minute recap of the case so far and uh, what we're doing. I feel like that conversation could have been shortened to like two minutes. Or it would have been cool if the Hardy Boys were around so we could talk to them all day long. That I think that would be cool. I don't know. I think we can make more pancakes. I feel like this was going to be a puzzle. But they didn't have time to actually finish the puzzle. Because you'll notice each one has the same amount of milk, same amount of melted butter. And then you have to guess what the other ingredients are. So I feel like that it was going to be a puzzle where for every single type of pancake... Johnny Cake Pancake, we have to guess uh, how much the eggs weigh, how much the, the blueberries and the blackberries weigh, that sort of thing. That's what I think. Let's see. But um, instead of that, the, the puzzle is going to be... Uh, let, let's go with which pancakes. Let's begin. The puzzle is Who deserves a Johnny Cake? Just, just this again, which is sad. I kind of, I kind of wanted to do the, the mixing one. This isn't a bad puzzle. It's just out of the, I guess, out of the three puzzles. 
in making the Johnny Cakes, this is the one that's the least interesting to do over and over and over again. <laughs> This one's the most mindless of the three. But this ends up being kind of a puzzle. Which one did I select? I selected which pancakes, right? And so we kind of have a puzzle. Only a few more. Absolutely more. adorable. Spooky. These are just what I imagine Olivia would like. These Yay. are just what I imagine Olivia would like. Okay, accidentally triggered a glitch there and got two witch pancakes instead of one. Um, okay. Yeah. And so the puzzle's sort of figuring out who wants what pancake. Well, I mean, we've already Let's figured it see. out. Who wants the witch pancakes? She told us outright, it's Olivia. Um, do we want to make pancakes for everybody or not? It's, I mean, there's no real reason to do this puzzle. It's just for fun. Let's begin. More Johnny Cakes coming up. Oh, this looks like it's going to be an easy one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Somebody just said no in all caps like they're angry. Werewolf cakes, I wonder. Is there somebody who likes werewolves? Almost done. Abs I'm sure Tegan will love these. Well, Tegan likes pumpkin pancakes. Okay. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's let's get to our actual thing. We need to get alibis. So we need to talk to everyone about everything and talk to everyone about everything. That's going to be half of our investigation here on the second day of the game. Hey, are you feeling any better about the case? Nope. We're going to find out who did this, May. I promise. If you say so. Look, thanks for breakfast. I just want to say, I know you're trying to help, but I think you're wasting your time. Thanks. So now are you ready to talk about your alibi? Do you feel ready to talk about your alibi? I don't even have a passport. I don't go anywhere, so I wasn't in Austria, if that's what you're thinking. And on the night of the arson? Giving us your alibi would help you so much. <sighs> that's just kind of a weird animation. It's like, can you tell us your alibi? I'm going to bounce my head while looking at my phone. Okay, so no alibi for May. I guess kind of an alibi for the theft in Austria because she can't leave the country. But still, it'd be nice if she gave us like a firm alibi. Like, check it out. Here are some text messages proving I was in the country at the time. You said you used to hang out at the Hathorn house, right? Uh huh. Did you ever see anything strange when you were there? Like ghosts? Yeah. No, never. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I saw a ghost that almost attacked me and stuff. People tell me there's a good reason to suspect you, but no one can say why. Isn't it obvious? I've got a burn mark covering the entire side of my face and like most of my arms. It must be me. I'm sorry that happened to you. And I'm sorry if people judge you for your burns. I prefer it to pity. Would you tell me what happened? There was a fire. I was in it. I'm not trying to pry. It's just that so far, the main cause for suspecting you of the Hathorn fire seems to be this previous one. I only want to understand. I was nine. It was an old shed, and I wasn't supposed to play in it. It was kind of a den full of stuff, like candles. I got stuck inside. You can work out the rest. So it was an accident. You were just a kid. Harsh to suspect you now because of something you didn't mean to happen. Don't make me talk about it more. Okay. Thank you for telling me, May. I still have so many questions about this. So how long ago did this happen? When did the fire happen? 
Also, I just find it interesting. She's like, I've got burn marks all over the side of my face and my arms. I can't see that. Talk to you later. How was Nancy supposed to see that? I don't know. Anyway, we can call May. Let's do this glitch again. Sorry to break it to you, but I'm ghosting you. Try again later. Or don't. <sighs> At least she's honest. Alrighty. So I think that's it for May. Now let's go outside. We're gonna go back. Ask everybody else what their alibis are. Yeah, so wait, she was nine years old when that fire happened? So, wait, they're accusing her of arson because she was caught in a fire nine years ago? Is that right? Because that seems kind of ridiculous hmm. and the way May describes it, it 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 doesn't match with what the other characters are saying like Dutch Danbor Danforth said it was a fire related crime whereas May is saying she was accidentally caught in a fire that's different than she set a building on fire and got arrested for it. And if it happened like two years ago, that's a major difference from it happened two years ago and it happened when she was nine years old. Like, ah. These guys are still screaming. Yeah, it takes a while for some things to load in this game. So I think Nancy's dad doesn't call unless you look at this. I need to get Judge Danforth's permission before I investigate the burglary. Yeah, there I we really go. I really should call dad so he can run this by the judge. I could jeopardize the whole investigation if I was caught snooping around the courthouse without permission. I really should call dad so he can run this by the judge. I could jeopardize... Yeah. Like, May was traumatized by fire when she was a little girl. You know, a third grader traumatized by fire. Well, she must be the arsonist, right? Come on, right? It's like terrible logic on the judge's part. Anyway, we do need to look at that gate in order to uh, get into contact with Nancy's father. Ned is being... Like, Ned is texting me? I'm okay, maybe not. No, Ned, you don't have to come over. Uh, the Hardy Boys came over. They gave up their vacation to be with me, but not you. Weird. Ned's not gonna be there if we call. As I said, Ned's not here. Hello. Ned, hey. You've reached the voicemail inbox of Ned Nickerson. I apologize that I did not come to the phone in a timely- <sighs> Pick up your phone, Ned. Come on, Ned. Come on, Ned. Uh, well, let's call Dad. How's my girl doing? Hey, Dad. I have a favor I need to ask you. Of course. Shoot. I need to investigate inside the Salem courthouse, specifically concerning the burglary in the evidence room. Do you think you could call Judge Danforth on my behalf and get his permission? Not a problem. You know, this reminds me. Next time you see him, you should bring up the Lake Winnipesaukee Regatta. Dad. Yeah? Maybe later. Sure thing. Talk soon. Someone says... Ned is actually in Iceland solving a mystery right now. That would be so cool. Oh, man. So let's see. Yeah, we can see people through the window. Somebody said I want to look out through every window. I mean, there's a car. Oh, what's this? Dad? You're all set. Great. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Is there anything else? I'm just really proud of you, Nancy. I don't know how often I tell you that. I think it's not nearly enough. Thanks, Dad. You know I learned it all from you, right? Oh, now I know that's not true. 
The judge told me about a certain lock picking incident. You certainly didn't learn that from me. <laughs> I may have picked up a few extra skills along the way. I'd expect nothing less. Love you, kiddo. Go get him. I like. I I, I like. Dad. Uh, I wish Carson actually appeared in person in one of the Nancy Drew games. But, uh, sadly, that is not Miss the case. Drew, how can I help you? Hi, Miss Cole. Alicia, please. Oh, same. Nancy. Great. So, what do you need, Nancy? Any more paper clips? Staplers? Or perhaps a hammer drill? I'm more of a pneumatic nail gun type myself. Ha ha. Nice. <laughs> nail guns. Nice. Okay. Kind of strange. Is there a hammer drill in here? I don't see one, but we can talk about it. You have a hammer drill in here. In my closet. I'm a bit of a home improvement junkie. You have to be when you live in a house built in the 1800s. Well, thanks, but I don't need any of those things. I do have some questions, though. You mind if I take five minutes of your time? Please. I don't mind. Why did you bring your hammer drill to the office? Well, after the burglary, we realized that this place was in dire need of higher security. I ordered the keypad online and used the drill to mount it. I just keep forgetting to bring the drill back home with me. That's impressive. Yeah, still ended up calling a professional when the thing wouldn't stop beeping. Okay, so she bought a new security system. Good. I'm sure you've heard about the burglary in the court's evidence room. Yes, unbelievable. You know, I've started asking myself, what is happening to this town? It used to be such a safe place. And now we have arson and break-ins. I'm worried there's a pattern of escalation here. I mean, I mean, is this the kind of place I want to raise children in? Oh, you're trying to start a family. I mean, yes. But with the amount that I work, when is there any time? I barely have enough time to do my hair in the morning, let alone go on a date after work. And to be honest, the type of people living in a place like Salem is, well, not really what I'm into. How about you? I have a boyfriend. Really? He doesn't accompany you on your investigative trips? Well, he's in college right now, and we see each other when we can. Uh-huh. You've been dating long? Yeah. A couple of years. Okay. No one said it was easy, but we figure out how to make it work. All I'll say is, most men don't understand what we go through. We have to fight to get a seat at their table, and then they want us to go home and be family makers. Some unsolicited advice from one working woman to another? Don't let his plans get in the way of yours. Of course, they don't. Yeah, I, I never pay attention to what my boyfriend wants or needs. I ignore him all the time. That's our kind of relationship. Yeah, that was kind of an odd conversation that she's just like, you know what? I don't like going out with any of the guys here in this town. This town is terrible. So, Nancy, you should not do, you should not listen to your boyfriend. Ignore his career plans. Focus only on yourself, Nancy. What did you mean when you said the people here are not your type? Oh, you probably know by now. You've been around town, right? I have. It's all people with minds as small as the town itself. I don't mean to sound harsh, but uh, you can only meet so many with the same mindset before you see a pattern. That's interesting. Did something happen? Oh, nothing much. Sometimes I just wish this place would be a bit bigger, you know? More progressive. Imagine a revitalized town. Do you think that could happen? <laughs> a woman can dream. Yeah, the people in this town would rather just stand outside the courthouse and yell the exact same thing 12 hours in a row. That's, that's what these people are like. Would you mind telling me what you were doing three days ago? Three days ago? All day or... Well, any info would be helpful. Actually, why are you interested in this? I was in Austria three days ago and witnessed a theft of a historical artifact there that, surprisingly, I believe is connected to this theft. I see. I was talking to your father about that case. Really? Yeah. We chat sometimes. 
About work? Mostly. Okay. Ask him. Sure. You're a regular sleuth, aren't you? Picking up other cases now? Not exactly. It's kind of related to the Hathorn house. Yeah, let's see. I was home, watching Jason cut the stump out of my front yard. You hired Jason Danforth for that? He's cheap. And he can't say no, because he needs the money. Plus, I kind of like watching him suffer a little. I wouldn't know why. You know, I could use someone like you. A lawyer is always in need of a good private investigator. If your father would be okay with you working for someone else... Alicia, I'm my own woman. I work for myself. But you've been very helpful, and I really appreciate it. Good. Well, when you solve this case, let's talk. It sort of sounds like Alicia wants to date Nancy's dad. Am I the only one who's getting those vibes? That's why she hates everybody in this town. She wants to move to Nancy's town and marry Nancy's dad. Is that what's going on here? I, I think that might be what's happening, or maybe I'm just, just totally jumping to conclusions. Do you happen to have the code for the evidence room door? Nope, sorry. He hasn't given that to me yet. And knowing him, he's probably already lost it. Aw, oh, poor judge. Do you know who has access to the evidence room? As far as I know, just myself and the judge. That's interesting. Look, I don't like saying this, but the judge occasionally leaves the evidence room unlocked. The man even locked himself in his own office, for pity's sake. Not that it matters. I was told the burglar came from the outside. So it's safe to say you weren't here during the theft? <laughs> Are you liking me for this crime, Nancy? No, I don't like anyone for this crime. Or any other crime, for that matter. Just doing my research. I was not here. I was running errands around town. <sighs> busy, busy, busy. I like ice cream. That's what I like. Ice cream is delicious. Doing some follow-ups with the arson. Where were you that night? <laughs> Are you asking for my alibi? Well, yes. If you don't mind. I was at a charity fundraiser, saving the piping plovers. Anyone in this town that works in an official capacity can vouch for me. Are you interviewing any of them? I don't think I'll need to. I'm a little bit surprised you'd even ask. Just being thorough. I can respect that. Yeah, so some of the alibis Nancy double checks, other alibis she doesn't. In this case, she's like, hey, Alicia's fine. I don't really need to double check her alibi. So Alicia gets a free pass. See you later. It's like, Nancy, do you like me? Because I like your father. Uh, no, no, no. I don't mean in a criminal way. Unless my love is criminal. Aww. Let's go here. No, not today. Judge. I can't. There's too much to do. Come on. Take a break. You need it. Jason, I have had these protesters outside my window nonstop for days. Yes. I must deal with this situation. The longer it goes on, the worse it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, but I'm buying lunch. You're buying? Really? With what? You gotta get over this, Dad. It's not good for you. It's not healthy. What are you talking about? You resent me. I don't resent you, Jason. Miss Drew, please, come in. We'll talk later, okay? Oh, you have time for her, but not for me. Please, Jason. Hi. Jason Danforth. Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. You're visiting Salem, yeah? What do you think? Kind of a boring town beneath all the legends. Jason, come on. We have a meeting. Actually, it seems like there's a lot going on here. Well, whenever you're up for some real excitement, look me up. I'm Jason. sorry. He's still trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. Didn't want to follow in his father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Oh, he tried. Didn't have the dedication to follow through with the schooling. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get started, he says, and then immediately ends the conversation. <laughs> so that's Jason. That's the judge's son, the one who's been hanging out with May. Uh, yeah. Judge? Ev? 
briefing okay? What in the Sam heck is a Bitcoin? A Bitcoin? It's a cryptocurrency. A what? Um, it's a decentralized digital currency. <sighs> All these new made-up digital things just go too far, if you ask me. Nothing's ever been wrong with good old American Benjamins. As you know, I want to investigate the crime scene. Could you give me the code for the keypad? Oh, yes, about that. Well, you see, I had it written on a post-it note, but I seem to have misplaced it. It should be around here somewhere. Feel free to look for it. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. I love a good scavenger hunt. Yeah, the judge... The judge is too busy being confused by Bitcoin to do anything right now. As you know, I want to investigate the crime scene. Could you give me the code for the keypad? Oh, yes, about that. Well, you see, I had it written on a post-it note, but I seem to have misplaced it. It should be around here somewhere. Feel free to look for it. Oh, okay. All right, so this is not really a puzzle. I mean, there's only one thing we can look at in his office. So, yeah, it's got to be this area. Here it is. There's a number written on here. 0815. I saw some people saying, oh, that totally counts as a puzzle. I'm like, does it though? Does it though? I'm not sure. What do you people think? Not sure how that guy ended up being a judge. It's like he doesn't... He's just so incompetent. Really. All right. No glass on the floor. So the window was broken from the inside. All right. Or the glass was cleaned up sometime within the past, what, week? However long that happened. Hmm. I think that's it. All right, so Nancy looks and she says, hey, there's no glass on the floor, or I guess that's not glass on the floor. Must be something else that's there on the floor. Let's see, wanna look at this? A CCTV camera. There might be footage from the day of the break-in. Should ask the judge about this. The break-in was staged. The thief must have come in through the door. Mm hmm A map of Salem. Take a look at this, I believe. Need to get the list of the evidence that was stored here. Need to get the list of the evidence. There's the evidence list, I think. Wow, can't read that. Can't even kind of read that. Now wow. to figure out which ones were stolen. So this is, I guess, kind of a puzzle. What we need to do is look at the right things on here. Which one of these things are related to the crime? So it looks like number six, maybe, because that's Tegan Perry, and then number 11, which is Tegan again. So let's look at those ones. Back away. Oh, I can barely read these letters. Two, six? No. Oh, okay. No. Ah. Uh... No. No. Yeah. No. 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 This is just... No. Kind of a wild puzzle. No. No. All right, I am just... Like, what even is this? Okay, I need to look at... Oh, okay. I see the problem. So you're supposed to use the list on the empty drawers. Interesting. That's what you're supposed to do. Interesting. That wasn't exactly obvious, but that's what you're supposed to do. Use the evidence list on those empty drawers. Interesting. All of the stolen evidence was linked to the accused witch's claim to Hathorn House. Hooray! So whoever broke into this place stole all the evidence related to the AW case. 
We kind of already knew that. The angry protester told us about that on the first day of the game, but sure, sure, let's... Now let's talk to uh, Judge Danforth. Now that we've investigated that crime scene. I went through the missing evidence and was able to get a list of everything that's missing. Judge? Judge. 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 I'm afraid I haven't been completely honest with you, Nancy. I know. What? You know? Let's just say I can tell when someone is trying to hide something from me. The reason Carson sent you to Mosen Castle was because I already knew what was stolen from the courthouse. Tegan Perry had assembled a packet of documents outlining her accused witch's claims on the Hathorn House. They were compelling, and I believe she had a real claim. But now, they're missing. No documents, no claim. Yes. Oh, what a mess. Yeah, so... You could have saved us a lot of trouble by telling the truth from the beginning. How is this guy a judge? He's like, okay, evidence was stolen. It's my fault because he probably left out his key. And, and he just tries to cover for it by sending Nancy to Austria. Crazy times. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just talk to him about everything. So what about the stolen evidence, dude? Do you remember any details about the AW evidence? I don't remember much unfortunately oh there was this key with its blade shape to spell a w very unique not sure what it was connected to like this one yes that's it where did you find this mosam castle i say both crimes are connected the theft of the book of apologies and the theft of evidence from the courthouse Someone is going to great lengths to prevent the AW organization from having a claim on the Hathorn estate. Any educated guess who that might be? Practically everybody in this town. Everyone has an interest. Some want it to be a museum, others a carnival attraction. And I'm sure Lauren Holt just wants to live there. I'll have to dig deeper. Well, you'll need to do it quickly. I unfortunately must file the papers in two days. Otherwise, I lose control of the property and it falls into the hands of the state. And I doubt they give a fig about anyone's opinions from this town. I love a good ticking clock, as long as it's not a time bomb. Do you mind me asking what you were doing three days ago? Hmm, that would be the day you visited Mosam Castle. Are you asking for an alibi, Miss Drew? I'm just trying to confirm what everyone was doing the day that the Book of Apologies was stolen. I know it was stolen, but you know I'm the one that called your dad to have you go look for it to begin with. Right, but other people might say they were with you. I was at Salem District Court all day, so unless you're interviewing the fine folks who stole eggs from a plover's nest at Winter Island Beach, or triple parked outside the Wax Museum during the middle of the Harvest Festival, I highly doubt my schedule will have crossover with any of the alibis you're following up on. Alright, so sort of like Alicia, he's like, hey, hey, guess what? You don't really need to check my alibi. I was busy doing judge stuff. Okay, and Nancy does not follow up on that. She's like, okay, that's cool. I'll just believe you. One quick question for you, Judge. Do you remember where you were on the night the Hathorn House was burned? Of course. I was having dinner with my son. It was a very expensive dinner because Jason got the 64-ounce tomahawk chop. And I paid for it like I always do. Ha! <laughs> you actually suspect me of committing this crime? No. I just like to get the full picture of who was where when. Oh, good. Where were you when this evidence was stolen? If you can believe it, I was here, working. I have no reason to steal the evidence, trust me. It's giving me more headaches than I care to admit. Without any evidence or will, what's the legal status of the house? Well, that is a somewhat complicated question. With so many moving parts and interested parties with crossover jurisdictions, it you're the one who decides who gets the house. How did you know? I can tell you're not happy about being the center of such a large decision. Well, it's muddy, legally, and complicated for other reasons. 
because it's not just who lives there. It's tied up in the town's history. Yes, not to be taken lightly. Do you have CCTV footage from the break-in? Yes, we do. Huh, I had completely forgotten about those. What? Do you mind if I take a look at the footage? Of course, of course. It will take about a day to get the right footage. Come back tomorrow and it will be here waiting for you. Right. Thank you, Judge. Also, I thought you should know there's a car parked outside in the handicapped spot. Huh, you don't say. I'll have it taken care of. Goodbye now. Seriously, he forgot that he has video footage of the crime. Why does he... I mean, how is this man a judge? This guy, he's just... I just... I don't get it. I don't get it. He's beyond incompetent. <sighs> what do we want? Alrighty, let's talk to Jason, who's over here. Is this his car? Was this the car Nancy's talking about? Parked in the handicap spot? Was this the handicap spot? I didn't know that. <laughs> I knew you couldn't resist. Yes, you are correct, Jason. I could not. I'm open tomorrow night. Or tonight. Or right now. Ladies' choice. How about three nights ago? Wait. We already went on a date? Definitely not. Oh. Where were you on the night Hathorn House was burned? Oh, right. I was, um, uh, I was... Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, it's coming to me. Primal Cut. I'm sorry? It's a steakhouse. I was there with my dad. Great steak, very expensive. He'll tell you. So... If we haven't been on a date yet, does that mean we're going to go on one in the future? No, thank you. How did he get his car here? That's a great question, because the entire road behind him is blocked. I have another question for you. Yes, it's true. I'm single. I actually wanted to know what you were doing three days ago. Are you sure that's what you want to know? Yes. I was actually digging out a stump in Alicia Cole's backyard. You, digging out a stump. What? Yeah, not my favorite pastime, but I can't really say no to the money. I mean, it gives a good hand. Ladies can't say no to a hot bob. You don't believe me? Oh, maybe you should ride with me to the beach. I can show you. No thanks. No, thank you. See you later. When do we want it? Justice! When do we want it? Yeah, somebody asked if Deirdre's there. Um, that does kind of look like Deirdre Shannon if you change the colors of her outfit. Same like this guy. I think he's wearing the Frank Hardy uh, outfit. He's definitely got that what we have read jumpsuit thingy with bobber. Yeah. Definitely, how could he have driven his car through here? Well, it is a handicapped spot, but you know. So his car jumped over this gap and landed there. Okay. Yeah, that must be how he drove here. I, I can't think of any other way that would have worked. Where is my favorite where my favorite sweater guy at? Where did sweater guy go? Is that him there? I, I can't see. I need to see. I need to see sweater guy with my own eyes. I think this might be him. He has changed his sweater. Ooh, should we take the witch tour? Ooh, should we take the witch tour? Aw, oh, man. Sweater guy's not talking. Sweater guy wanted to chat with you. Also, we've got... I always find this funny. We've got, like, a lost protester wandering around here. Why? Why? Poor protester. Doesn't know where he's going. What do we want? Sweater guy! When do we want him? Now! What do I want? Sweater guy! He was awesome. Where'd he go? Where did the Hardy Boys go? Aren't they supposed to be hanging out here? No, I guess not. 
I think we can go to the to the house, but we need a key, right? We need a key. We don't have a key. Just we need to skip through this area. Here's the house. We finally get to explore the scene of the arson. Locked. It's locked. And here's an item we need. No, oh, I guess we can't grab that item quite yet. This is Lauren's house. Be cool if we could go inside, but we can't. And let's see, there's something hidden here. You can kind of tell there's something hidden here. We'll be checking that out on the third day of the game, unless I'm mistaken. Sweater guy better be in the next game. Sweater guy should be like the star of the next game. That'd be great. The Salem Museum. Prime address for local history and information on the infamous witch trials. Let's go to Olivia's place. La, 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 la. You're back! Great. Let me guess. More questions? Spooky how you could tell. Though it harm none, do as thou wilt. Um, okay. <sighs> I'm saying I guess it can't do any harm. Hmm, nice cat. I like it. Three days ago, were you doing any witch tours? Three days ago? No, I was not. Okay... You remember what you were doing? Actually, I had won a spa holiday at the Wayfarer Inn over in Marblehead. It was amazing! They used those glass cup things on my back. It was wicked crazy. Oh. You have any receipts or... It was all expenses paid. And I'd show you my back, but I'm a quick healer. Witch powers. It looks like it never happened. You know... I had a flyer for the spa, but I threw it away this morning. Sorry, I know I'm not being helpful. It's okay. You are. Thanks. I don't think we're gonna follow up on that alibi either. I've been going around asking everyone in town where they were on the night of the arson. The night of the what? Arson. At Hathorn House? Why, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Kidding, Nancy. Don't look so serious. <clears throat> I was here that night, doing my thing. I think there had to have been at least 20 people who can confirm that. It really stinks that Lauren is going to lose her home. Well, we'll see. Yeah, of course. So, I've heard ghosts are haunting Salem. Of course. You believe it. How could I not, when I've seen them with my own eyes? Really? Can you describe what you saw? Uh, sure. It was dark, foggy, I was walking through the cemetery, or was it the town square? I don't remember, but I do remember a ghost. No, multiple ghosts. Spirits! And did you ever see any ghosts near Hathorn House? As a matter of fact, I did. I told you that a coven of witches unleashed them on the town a few years back? They will not rest until they get their vengeance. Let me guess. You can't find proof of a living soul present at the house the night it burned. Maybe the culprit wasn't among the living? That sounds even harder to prove. Have you seen the restless souls of Salem, Nancy? I've seen something, but I'm not willing to just believe it's real. I need more. Be careful. They'll still find you whether you believe in them or not. You might want to avoid the cemetery. All right, that's it. See you later. She's just going to sway back and forth. Hey, do you want a witch pancake? Did you make this for me? Yeah. Yep. And look, it's got a witch on it. Oh, how fitting. A witch cake for the resident witch. Aren't you just the sweetest? So thoughtful. You know, seeing this, I think you might have some magical energy flowing through you. 
With enough flair and a touch of charisma, you could really go a long way as a witch. <laughs> Thank you, but I've got my career goals set a little differently. Enjoy the food. Yeah, I don't want to be in the witch tour business. Sorry. Let's go over to Tegan, who's over here. Can I give her a witch pancake? No? Well, the pumpkin pancake, then. Let's try the pumpkin pancake. Oh, wow! So cute. I love pumpkins. Did you really make this for me? Yeah. I thought you'd like it. I really do. We always used to carve pumpkins at home for Halloween when we were kids. Hmm. <laughs> this brings back memories. Thank you. Memories of pumpkins. Yeah, there's, there's a witch on that pancake. See? There's a witch on the witch pancake. It's totally a witch pancake. Nancy, hey. How's the investigation going? Pretty well. You know, it would really help if I could get May to talk to me. She hasn't given her alibi yet. No. No. And everyone seems to have one, except her. Everyone? Is it possible that it could be someone from outside of town? A visitor or something? Absolutely. But statistically speaking, crime is rarely a random occurrence. It's a mystery to me. <laughs> you have anything you wanted to talk about? Can you tell me about the accident May was in when she was a kid? Why do you yeah. need to know that? How is it important? I didn't think it was, but everyone else sees reason to believe May is the one who burned Hathorn House. So that makes it important, I know. It started with the arson. And she has other convictions on her juvenile record as well. What happened? It was an old shed near our home. May was about nine or so. She was in it one night. She shouldn't have been. Playing with candles, a lighter, I don't know. It caught fire. She was charged. She was so young. I feel responsible. She shouldn't even have been there, and I'm the older sister. It's not your fault. I'm sorry to upset you. It helps me to understand. Just don't talk to May about it, please. I am wondering about her other crimes, though, that, that May has committed. It seems like those might be relevant, or maybe I'm just being overly curious. I don't know. Let's talk to Tegan about everything, because there's clearly not enough talking in this game. We need to talk some more. What's the history behind the Hathorn estate? Right. Well, uh, Judge John Hathorn was born and raised in Salem. His father was a decorated military man who had many real estate holdings throughout New England. And when Judge Hathorne became a justice, he tried to expand those holdings. Much of the land that the Hathorne estate was built on was actually seized property from accused witches. So awful. I think the land stealing part was even mentioned in Olivia's tour. Didn't expect her to actually care about the history. At the time, no one made the connection, not even in court documents. But it happened. Do you think the fire is somehow related to Salem's history with witches? What do you mean? Like, is it meant as mean? a symbolic gesture? Because that's how most witches died? That was a European thing. No, they were more civilized in the New World. We hung our witches. Short drop, so they slowly choked to death. A couple more died in custody awaiting trial and one, an elderly man who refused to testify, was pressed to death. Pressed? Yeah. They put a bunch of heavy stones on top of you. Over a period of days. That's horrible! She did not know the weight until she felt the freedom. Scarlet Letter. Also a descendant of Judge Hathorn. Except Nathaniel Hawthorne was so horrified with his family's history that he added a W to change it. Wow. The focus on descendants isn't really something they teach you in school. Yep. We think our world is so much more advanced now, but we have a hard time escaping our past. Where were you on the night of the fire? I was at my boyfriend's watching a movie. Here, this is his number. You can ask him. Have you been dating Damien for a long time? Yeah, a couple years, I think. I like him. I mean, I really do. He listens to me. Yeah, he's great. Was he with you the whole night? I mean, most of the night. I don't think he's capable of arson, if that's what you're suggesting. You trust him? Absolutely. 100%. Go ahead. Call him. You'll see. 
How did Francis Tuttle come to own the property? Ms. Tuttle bought it 30 years ago, cheap. It was falling apart. The former owners couldn't be located, so it was auctioned. She was a bit of a kooky lady living in a ruin like that. So wait, they, they auctioned the house last time it was up for sale. Why is that not an option this time? Especially because there's a big to-do about the house's ownership this time. But she was kind. I mean, she took in Lauren like a daughter. That says something about someone, doesn't it? I agree. Yeah, and people in the live stream chat are just freaking out. They're like, how does Tegan not know how long she's been dating her boyfriend? That is a good question. Maybe she's just forgetful? Deirdre only mentioned it in passing, but you and Olivia used to be friends? We were, and I guess it doesn't hurt to mention that Lauren was a part of our little group as well. But that was years ago. So you don't get along now? Things changed. Did something happen? I don't see why this is relevant. Aren't you supposed to be clearing my sister's name? She doesn't need more blame for things she didn't do. What did she get the blame for before? I... <sighs> this town wants someone to blame for everything. She's different and gets singled out. I want to know more about anyone who might have a motive for the fire. Maybe you can help if you know them, even as old friends. I guess. Go on. What can you tell me about Olivia? What can I tell you about Olivia? <sighs> I can tell you that I think her shtick is ridiculous. And that she's doing this town a disservice by selling this silly idea of broomsticks in this double-double toil and trouble version of witches. This is a place of real history, and she wants it to be a theme park. Do you think she would have burned down the Hathorn house? I suppose it would be good for business. People love a ruin. Especially a haunted ruin. She is pretty happy lighting fires. But I don't know. Wait, I only what? want my sister cleared. I know. We're getting there. I can't help but think about the rumor Olivia talks about. The coven. You shouldn't pay any attention to her stories. She just says whatever she thinks the crowd wants. Real history isn't interesting to Olivia. So you never heard this rumor elsewhere? I didn't say that. There are no witches in Salem. Just showy frauds and stupid kids doing stupid things. Don't trouble yourself with ancient history and rumors. There's a real kid in trouble who needs your help. It's just a weird line. It's like, oh, Olivia really likes setting fires. Okay, how do you know that information? All right, what were you doing three nights ago? Do you remember what you were doing three nights ago? Three days ago? Well, I was probably working here. Why? You were working at the museum. Can anyone confirm that? Well, I'm always here. But was anyone else here? May was home all day, laying low, and Olivia wasn't here either. I don't know where she was, to be honest. You'll have to ask her. So no one can confirm that? And you're sure May was at home? She's barely left the house since the incident. People here treat her like she has an infectious disease. It's awful. And I don't blame her if she wants to sit at home on her phone all day. Ugh. Her parents need to come home. Soon. So, I gotta ask. What do you get out of this? I get a lot. Really? You travel around, talk to all these people, deal with all their problems, put yourself in harm's way? Not always. Alright, some of the time. I don't know. It's like there's these small obstacles that I enjoy working on. And they're interesting. But what I really love is the puzzle of humanity. What makes people tick? Why do people do what they do? It's always the hardest one to crack. Because sometimes, we do things that don't make sense. We're inherently irrational. Know what I mean? You know, there's a theory about why these specific women were persecuted as witches. Some people believe that ergot, which is a fungus that grows in cereal grains, might have gotten into the food supply. It poisons anyone who eats it. Hallucinations, circulation issues, seizures. It would have made people look like they were possessed. Or made the judges think they were doing God's will. Or make the whole town go haywire. A rational explanation for irrational behavior. Just a theory. We'll never know. Anyway, I don't want to keep you. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> I'm just loving the comments here. They're like, how much talking? Too much. So much talking. 
Nancy's a philosopher now. Yeah, that storyline kind of came out of nowhere. And, and somebody else was like... Talk to you later. It's like, why do you need to know where I was three nights ago? For your alibi. I'm getting everyone's alibi. That should be obvious. Yes. Yes. All right. I don't, I don't care about text messages from Joe. I like you, Joe, but I don't care. So, we did one of the four things on this day of the game. It's only taken us an hour, but we got alibis for three days ago from everyone. We don't have alibis for the arson. Not a big fan of that. Like, the puzzle is basically talk to everyone about everything. I'm not sure that counts as a puzzle. Hello? Is it okay if we just Hi. skip through this conversation? This is yeah. about Tegan. I listen, honestly. And See how long it is even when I skip every line of dialogue? It's just a really, really long thing. And that was Tegan's alibi. Tegan's alibi, her boyfriend. She was with her boyfriend. Yeah. So, what else do we have to do? We still need to get the alibis for the arson, which means we have to talk to Lauren. Yep. I mean, I guess we sort of had the puzzle, um, figuring out which drawers inside the, uh, evidence room are empty. I think that, that was the, the one major puzzle we've had in the past oh, hour. Oh, you're here. Yes, I am. This shop is really cool. I love the decor. Thank you. It's taken a lot of years to get it the way I want. I kind of imagine this is what an actual witch's shop would look like. Yeah. Seriously. You have all these herbs. Look, St. John's wort, mandrake root. You know, witches were just synonymous with people who used the old medieval ways of working with plants and animals, curing ills. They were healers, shamans, and confessors. You can see why some people might have been threatened by them. I know, right? No leeches here, though. I draw the line at bloodsuckers. I'm glad you get it. A lot of people around here don't. How so? Some say I'm cashing in, not respecting history. People get so caught up in the death and judgment. But I was always interested in all of that lost knowledge, even as a kid. I bet a lot of kids around here are fascinated by it. Used to be. You get a lot of people in? Maybe May Perry? May. <laughs> That's funny. Why? Look, she's had a hard time. She's not the only one. I've been the kid everyone looks at. You need friends to talk to. She doesn't want any. She has her sister. Tegan cares about her. Tegan protects what's important to Tegan. Sometimes, that's May. Okay, end of the conversation. Now let's have another conversation. We need to get the key. I was hoping I could borrow a key to the main Hathorn house. Key? Oh, I don't have a key anymore. You don't? No, but Alicia does. If you ask her, she'll lend it to you, I'm sure. That's nice. Everyone says there are ghosts in this town. Is that true? What is it? You know, I believe the dead stay dead. But I've seen ghosts recently in my own house. Really? Who? Wait, you believe me? I thought I was going crazy. I believe there's an explanation. Who was it? I don't know. A woman. Wearing old clothes like the kind you find in Tegan's museum. I couldn't see her face. And I swear she was real. I could hear her. I could feel her. She smelled like... like rotten fruit or something. You know that gray moldy smell that hits you in the back of your throat? Yeah, that. Huh. That's pretty specific, actually more specific than anyone else I've talked to. I saw her in the Hathorn house. Watch out for her. She'll come to you. No doubt in my mind. All right. T nah, I mean, this is Lauren. Lauren is standing pretty far away. All the characters stand like eight feet away from Nancy. They're just social distancing, I suppose. I'm not sure why that's the case. Deirdre Shannon's the only person who actually gets very close to Nancy. Everybody else, they stand at this the exact same distance, it feels like. Because Tegan was standing at this distance, standing, actually kind of standing behind a shelf 
just like this one. And same with the judge, same with Alicia. Huh, same with Olivia. Olivia was standing behind a desk too. Hmm, okay. What kind of herbs do you have here? The kind that helps people ease their burdens. Since cold season started, I don't. Oh, this is sure. I pro oh. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with that. Hey, maybe we could talk to her from here. I'm sure you've been asked this before, but where were you on the night Hathorn House was burned down? Yeah, look, see, we can. This is a perfectly fine angle for conversation. We can actually see the character from this angle. Now that she's not eight feet away. I was coming home from work, crossing through the cemetery. I could see the orange glow. By the time I got home, it was almost all gone. I called it in. Were you the first one to call? Anyone see you earlier? Like an hour before? I was in my shop. Any customers? No. Are you trying to say that I burned down the house? No, I never said that. Good. I've said it a million times, but I'll say it again for your benefit. I'm just glad she wasn't alive to see it. She loved that house, and I loved her. You understand? Of course. You were the first person to see the fire? Well, yeah. I was going home, and that's where the fire was. You know the fire might help you keep your home. I know that now. But I didn't before. It's a slim chance at best. I'd rather it was whole and shown to be mine by right. But if that's not an option? Nothing could make me want to destroy it. You remember where you were three nights back? I was here. I told you already. I have the receipts to prove it. And I'm the only one who works here. Why? Oh, no. Just a related incident. I don't suppose there are any ghost sightings in your shop? <laughs> the spirits come and go as they please. I've seen them everywhere around Salem, but I've never seen one operate a point of sale. Yeah, me neither. See you later. All right, so that's Lauren. Fantastic, nice to meet you, Lauren. Hope you're having a good time. What's this? Gosh. These pastries look delicious. Yum. Can I buy them? Can I buy them, I guess? These are all the herbs. Let's see these herbs. Vanilla, ginger, cardamom, basil, uh, clover. Those are all like cooking ones, right? Use them for cooking. Alrighty. So we want to talk to Alicia. Gosh, I miss Sweater Guy. He was so much fun. A specter may be hanging over Salem, but that doesn't keep the town from getting into the Halloween spirit. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? It would be cool if we could buy those pastries. I'm just hungry. I'm just so hungry. Yeah, especially because Nancy's just going to be carrying this pancake around in her pocket for the rest of the game. Whoa, what? We don't knock anymore? You left your door open. Yeah. Actually, that was Damien Faulkner. He's my intern. You have an intern? I haven't seen him. He's around. Someone has to make the coffee here. I'm swamped most days, and I could barely trust Judge Danforth with a flashlight. Oh, I mean, he's not that inept. <sighs> You're right. That was mean. Anyway, what can I help you with? Tegan's boyfriend is an intern here? Really? Wow, that's interesting. Never going to hear anything else about that for the rest of the game, but wow, that's kind of interesting. I just met Jason Danforth. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? Kind of cute, huh? Mm, not the adjective I would use. Different tastes. Yeah, I think he's kind of like a fast food cheeseburger with extra, extra cheese. And I'm more of a home-cooked meal kind of gal. What can I say? I love cheese. So you know him well? I know him. He does odd jobs for me sometimes. Doesn't hurt that he's easy on the eyes. He is kind of dumb, though. I wouldn't really know, to be honest. Listen, 
Spare yourself the headache and just avoid him. Trust me, not much substance. He loves his car. That's all you really need to know. Like, Alicia, he's... Isn't he, like, at least 20 years younger than her? So, gross. Also, he works for you. You really shouldn't talk about your employees that way. And it's just kind of a weird conversation that both Nancy and Alicia are comparing their respective boyfriends to uh, types of food. Nancy's like, oh, Ned's a home-cooked meal, but Jason, he is a fast-food cheeseburger. Is this what people normally talk about? I, I don't know. It, it just seems odd to me, that's all. Do you know Lauren Holt? Owner of Luminous Infusions. Resident of the Hathorne Estate Carriage House. So do you know her? Absolutely. I represent her. How's the case going? Well, that's a bit of a confidentiality issue. But you are the daughter of a lawyer. So? Without a will, there is no case. No one has been able to find it. And without the will, the house goes to the state. Many, many people are saying, no, people don't talk like this in real life. No, no, this, this is not good. Okay, great. Just glad to confirm that this is just not normal. Okay? Maybe Professor Hotchkiss would refer to somebody as like a pile of chicken wings, but she's a special case. The law is the law. I can try to get a delay. But we've already delayed twice, and the state doesn't care that someone lives there. It's a tough world out there. I spoke with Lauren. She mentioned you have a key. A key? To the Hathorn house. It's the only copy. Don't lose it. Oh, and this really isn't supposed to be in your hands. If someone finds you with it, I might have to say you stole it. I'll make sure to be discreet. Thanks. You're to help, Nancy. Hey, next time. Please knock before entering, okay? Joe Hardy would probably refer to himself as a cheeseburger, though. I, I feel like I'm a cheeseburger. Normally I'm a cheeseburger, but today I'm a bacon cheeseburger. Not with barbecue sauce, though. Also, the lawyering is really weird in this game. She's like, okay, well, I can't break client, client, uh, you know, client attorney privilege. But I like your dad, Nancy, so I will break client attorney privilege, and I'll totally give you this important evidence, that key. I, like, if, if she was a real-life lawyer, she'd probably be fired for breaking the law right now. But on the other hand, this is a video game, and the mystery had probably come to, like, a grinding halt if Nancy couldn't get into the Hathorn house. I think that's why they did the game this way. I feel like Jason, Jason, he's probably like 18. The, the judge kind of made it seem like he went to college and then dropped out. Do you have access to any of the CCTV footage? Ah, no, sorry. I think that's the judge's purview. Yeah, okay, we know that. Yeah, May is the same age as Jason, so yeah, they, they both have to be like... 17, 18 years old. Did you know that the break-in was faked? Sorry, I... I'm not following. Whoever broke in entered the evidence room without actually having to break anything. They tried to make it look like they broke in from outside, but they came in through the door. I told the judge to lock that door. And considering how lax security is around here, I mean, you just walked right in. It could have been anyone. I'm just glad we upgraded the security since then. I think that's it. See you later. That's sort of an extra long conversation with Alicia, because this is really the only time in the game we get to have a conversation with her. We don't talk to her in the first uh, day, and we also don't get to talk to her on the third day. Alright, only one more thing to do which is to explore the Hathorne house. Now that we have spoken with everyone, it's Hathorne house time. Hooray, man, the navigation, okay. The navigation's not like too terrible when you uh, get used to it, but you could definitely, um, you know, you could tell that this this game can be played on a controller. 
and I think like it might be a little bit better if it's played on a controller, but maybe that's just me. Man, I should plug in my... I thought I had my controller here near my desk, but I do not, so I'm not going to plug in my controller right here. Locked. Ah, oh, darn it. The key should fit, but the door and lock are awry. It's the awry. The door needs more leverage. Ah. Okay, the door needs more leverage. I guess this kind of counts as a puzzle. We we need to grab the item which is right here. I'm, I'm trying to grab it. This ought to help me out. Yes, grab the crowbar, which is Locked. two screens away. Now this is more like it. And then use the key. Yeah. There we go. Now it fits. Alrighty, a couple of things to check here in the house. Uh, one, this really big, obvious jacket. A brand new jacket? Who would leave this behind? I don't know. Whose jacket is it? We are going to look in the pocket to find out. Right, there's gotta be something in here. This pocket, maybe? Don't know. Let's solve this puzzle then. There's something peculiar about this mirror. So who knows the mirror is reflecting that particular area? Someone painted laurels on the mirror glass, but why? That means we want to check out that part of this thing, this roll top desk. An old secretary desk. Roaring twenties, maybe. Woo! That was sort of a puzzle too. We solved the puzzle with the mirror and the thing right by the mirror, and we get this letter. My dear Lauren, you came to me midwinter and made each day feel brightest. Like a lion, I cared for my new cub, even though sometimes she could be stubborn like an ox. In the months where spring stirs, I revealed my your heritage to you, and on the day of Samhain, we remembered our ancestors. Now I wish for you to choose. Make this house your home, or be free of its burden. Forever yours, Francis Tuttle. And the backside says, the will is in the house. Wow, this is very important information. So Francis Tuttle left behind this letter indicating the will is inside the house. Whoa, is Nancy going to show this letter to anyone? No. No, she is not. A letter written in Francis Tuttle's own hand. No. Not- nothing... nothing at all. Yeah, That just kind of annoys me. I wish Nancy could tell people about this. Like, give this to the judge. This should help the case. Get other people in here to search this house. The entire second floor has burned down. It looks unstable. Not going any further than this. Dusty. I'm supposed to be able to open the jacket. Okay. Oh, here it is. This pocket. Wow. Oh, hello. A business card. A business card for Olivia, and that's the end Tegan, of day number two. I was two. able to rule out some. You need to come here quickly. Something's happened. I'll be right there. La 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 What happened? How did it come no, what to happened? this? what Sorry, Ned. No, no, Nancy, come pick on. up the phone! Let's get inside. Tegan's crying. What happened, Tegan? What's wrong? Tegan? Teagues? You okay? She's just sort of sitting there looking... Like she's about to fall asleep. Poor Tegan. So I didn't tell you everything. You know, it's just been really hard. 
It's okay. I understand. When I started working at the museum, I was curious about our town's history. Because I think history is the most important thing. Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Right? Of course. Well, I found out something about my family. We changed our name. We used to be Paris. Okay. Samuel Paris and his daughter Betty were the first accusers of witches. They were directly responsible for the execution of numerous people. And they are part of my family. Oh. But you're the... The head of the AW organization. My family helped murder their ancestors. Which is why I've never told anybody and now everyone knows. Why do you think anyone would do this? I don't know. Maybe it's someone else who wants the Hathorn house. No one in AW is going to trust me after this. And the evidence is gone. But all of this for nothing. It's going to be okay, Tegan. We'll figure it out. I feel a little bad for Tegan. Yeah, at the same time, why was this an emergency that Nancy needed to be called away for? Oh, well, hey, it's okay, Tegan. At least you didn't start the fire, right? You're a good person. You didn't commit any crimes and lie about it. And where's May? Don't know. Where's Deirdre? Don't know. Where is anybody? Well, the Hardy Boys. We'll find out where the Hardy Boys are, because now we're going to switch over to them. Hey, guys. Can you give me an update? Hey guys, can you give me an update? Nancy, I have missed talking to you. I need some rationality in my life. Complaining about rationality is inherently irrational. Right. What's going on? Everything okay? Not really. I'm at the Perry house. Someone vandalized it with graffiti. Really? Oh. Really? Turns out the Perrys are descendants of the Paris family. A family who was responsible for sending some of the accused witches to their deaths. Wow, doesn't she run that justice group, Accused Witches? Exactly. Explains why she's so dedicated to the cause. She knew and was trying to make things right, I guess. So, someone is trying to embarrass the Perrys. Means our suspect is still in town. You know, what would be cool is if we investigated the angle of who graffitied the Perry house and why. I mean, we're guessing the reason why. Maybe, so, like, it's still, like, is that graffiti for May, or is that graffiti for Tegan? That feels like it's important which person is the culprit trying to shame. But we don't follow up on this, so the game never follows up on this. We don't know who graffitied the house or why. I, it might not even be the culprit. It might just be a random stranger. Who knows who did it? Nope. Nothing here. It's been dead quiet. It's a joke. We're, uh, in a cemetery. If you have to explain it, it's not a joke. I get it. Listen, things are a little tense here, so I'm gonna stay with Tegan. Why? Can you update me if you find no, anything, No, Nancy, please? you should investigate. No problem, partner. <laughs> Western joke. I mean, we haven't really discussed the whole detective partnership thing yet, so... Frank, not a good time. Right. Talk soon. If you're done being awkward, I could use your help. What? It's Joe's I'm feet. not awkward. Whatever you say, around. partner. Let's finish our search and get out of here, okay? Sure, 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 but don't rush. We're here to prove the existence of ghosts. That requires steady patience. And steady equipment. Speaking of which, how are we doing on that front? All set. I'll use the antenna to search for suspicious cold spots while you move around with the Ghost Wavelength Spectral Analyzer 2.5 and look for disturbances from the other side. The Spectral Analy... Anyway, are you sure it actually works? Of course. I built it myself. The device has a top-of-the-line scanner that can detect any disturbances. It might not have found anything yet, but I have to stay optimistic about these things. And I guess this ghost hunting notebook is homemade too? Thoroughly researched. But yes, it is. Now we get to play as Frank Hardy. 
I guess that's kind of cool. So we have a one-page notebook. That is a large book for just one page. It's about this silly little device that Joe has made for what is probably the worst puzzle of the game. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool that we get to play as the Hardy Boys. It's just, what were they doing all day? I, I want to know what they were doing all day. Really do. See, this puzzle, you want to change the wavelengths. Terrible sound effects, by the way. I want to get it to match up with the other wavelengths. So, I want it to be as tall as wavelength number one. So that's what this thing on the right is for. I wanted to get it as wide as wavelength number one, which is this thing on the left is for. Is that it, or is, it, is that... Almost, maybe? Yeah, this puzzle's so particular. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is just... Hey, I think I might have gotten it. This is correct. Like, I'm trying to stop on, like, this. But it's just hard to get it to stop in the exact right spot. Oh, man. spot you should move over there on it did it somehow managed to solve that puzzle settings man um could we get advanced audio maybe maybe sound effects let's see if that was that maybe that will help just, yeah. Not a fun puzzle. There we go. Turned off sound effects. Okay. That's better. That's better. Okay. It's just 500 times better. I'll turn the sound effects back on after this puzzle is done. Looks 
kind of good. Oh, come on. How is that not right? There. Like, that's not good enough. Come on. I've adjusted the scanner, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it shows no real signs here. Are you getting any other signals? Let me uh, check. Oh man. We only have to do that puzzle three times, fortunately. So that's... That's fortunate. Can I look at this statue? No. Can I talk to Joe? No. Here we go. So it feels like the solution every time has just been move the this one on the left all the way to the right. Doing this puzzle on senior mode is extra impossible because we have two more things to set. So you swap from one to two, and then you do two extra. You know, I'll just show it. Settings. Master sleuth mode now. Here's master sleuth mode. So master sleuth mode has four different radio button settings. that you get to play around with. And do you know what those settings are or what they do? Because I don't really. But I still think Master Sleuth mode is easier in that moving the knobs is a little bit easier. You notice the knobs snap into place there as opposed to Amateur Sleuth mode where the knobs don't. Go back to amateur sleuth mode for this puzzle. Let's see. This looks relatively easy, maybe. So it's gonna be small waves and then all the way to the left, right? All the way to the left this time. Maybe too far to the left there. Almost. Come on, come on. This puzzle is just like a no. Yeah, hard to believe that this puzzle got some major approval. There we go, did it. There's nothing here. What? Hey, what's this? What is it? What is it? Is it a ghost? Oh, no. Well, it seems like some sort of machine. But what's a device like this doing in a graveyard? Something's up. Oh, that's a motion detector. How weird is that? All right, put your equipment down. Your plan didn't work. Now we're tracking this so-called ghost my way. Let's see what else we can find. But I just finished setting everything up. Fine, fine, my eyes are peeled. Yeah, like, Joe... I just finished setting everything up. You have set nothing up, Joe, and your shoe is in the... Gr his foot is in the ground. Look at his foot. It's just buried underground. Joe! Joe, my man, are you okay? Okay, great, he got his feet out of the ground. Okay, well, that's good. Good for him. But yeah, really feels like there, nobody um, tested that particular puzzle. So audio, let's get sound effects back. And all that puzzle, it was basically for nothing. <laughs> Hate to 
say that, but yeah, that was that. The whole point of that was should we, we really didn't be find doing anything, this? Really. I'm already having second thoughts. Of course we should, Worrywart. What is Nancy gonna think if we return empty-handed because you chickened out? That's not. I am not scared, Joe. We are doing this. <laughs> Onwards. Now Joe's legs, both of his legs, are just stuck in the ground. Joe, you've got problems, buddy. You've got some major problems. All right, so we get to go to this little area in the woods. And we need to find the various things here. I guess you could argue that uh, it was important that we did the wavelength puzzle because it's going to be kind of connected to this. I don't know about this. We shouldn't trespass onto someone else's property. Let's see, what am I looking for? I'm looking for various things. This. Rope. This was used to make something move to or from the branches. actually standing on the ground that time. Good for Joe. There's a strange powder on the ground. Ashes. Judging by the remnants, herbs were burnt here. Like incense? Could be something spiritual, could be something bigger. Let's see what else we find. Yes, yes, here we go. This thing. Looky here. An affordable but effective fog machine. Should be able to cover this whole part of the forest in a layer of mist. Whatever happened to good old natural hauntings? There's nothing natural about our findings here. This reeks of foul play. Yeah, so we're learning something, everyone. We're learning that uh, this area is not actually haunted haunted. It is fake haunted. Check out the spooky jack-o'-lantern. Innocent Halloween prank or sinister scare? Hmm. In the dark, it can easily be mistaken for something supernatural. Motion detector, fog machine, pumpkin head, rope, burnt incense. Well, you finally going to admit you were wrong? Of course not. All we've proven is that there are no ghosts here. So you still think ghosts exist? I think we can't prove they don't not exist. Say that again? Look, the absence of proof does not mean that we can disprove their existence, but what it does tell me is that what Nancy saw was not a real ghost. So who has something to gain by setting up a fake haunting? Olivia. Olivia. There's got to be some evidence linking her to this. There's no way she brings gear here every night. She must have a stash. But where? Why don't we just ask her? To the museum. That was the whole point of this segment. Uh, we learned that Olivia is just faking, uh, faking things here in the woods. My goodness, Olivia. How dare you? Now we need to find our way out of the woods. Which is not exactly the easiest thing ever. Here we go. I think... Oh, man. I thought I had it. Here we go. Out of the woods. Hooray! So in short, no ghost. Olivia's just We've got what we it. came here for. Next stop, the museum. Probably to make her ghosts like ghost tour seem more realistic. That's why she's got the the creepy hey, smoke before we and do the this, incense we and call everything. Nancy? What? Why? Because we're a team. We should check in with her. Let Nancy do her thing and we'll do ours. Oh, so what is our thing exactly ghost busting hey look a list of mysterious symbols Olivia leaves behind this strange note for it's actually got a puzzle there's a gravestone map on the back if this isn't suspicious I don't see Abigail Hathorne Woodley's grave on here though would have been too easy no matter, we'll find her. 
Yeah, they don't want to trespass on private property, but they're okay with breaking into the museum. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, I think this is kind of cool. This, this puzzle, it's at least interesting we've got a puzzle which is not just talking to everyone, right? Just too bad that that wavelength puzzle is just killed by enthusiasm. Oh, man. All right, so one of the graves is here. I think it's this one. Is that a box underneath the gravestone? Wait, I've got this. This is good evidence. Aren't you glad we broke into the museum? No, not really. But look at this. I'm going to go ahead and guess that this will decipher the paper we found in the gift shop. Check it out. Excellent. So, we have... I don't know what this thing is. It's never going to get explained. I don't know what this thing is. It's never going to get explained. But this thing will get explained. It's a cipher wheel. A decryption device of some sort. Time to put you to good use. So we want to get these things lined up. It's going to be H-O and then that symbol. So H. Let's get H. Let's get the O. Oh. I, I guess we need to get H and O. Um, I'm going to back away and restart this puzzle if you don't mind. A decryption device of some sort. Time to put you to good use. Spin the innermost ring clockwise six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. That way H and O are lined up. And then we're going to spin the middle ring clockwise six. That way O and H are both lined up with whatever that symbol is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now I've got all three of them lined up perfectly. Uh, now we can start, uh, do I just type in things? No, I do not. I need to spin around until I, what do I do here? I select letters. Hmm. I, uh, now I'm, now I'm a little confused, let's see. Select letters. Okay, there we go. You need to click on select letters and then select the actual letters you want. So rotate cipher is for that thing. Uh, select letters is for these things. Does that make sense? So let's see. So the symbol is R. We're just finding those symbols and clicking on them. You know this puzzle could really use some instructions. That would have been great. That would have been actually super useful. Great. So that's that's round one of the cipher. Round number two, uh, we need to get T. We need to get the T moved, so we are going to move it counterclockwise six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe it's we move the outer ring counterclockwise. Inner, the middle one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you got the T lined up with that. I feel like this is completely wrong. And we'll know if the first letter is wrong. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, did it correct. Good thing for my notes, huh? I mean, this is better than the wavelength puzzle. It feels like this puzzle, yeah, it just needs a bit more explanation because I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. So counterclockwise, six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back to selecting letters. This is going to be I. Every 
ever been in the live stream chat that's just talking about food and totally ignoring the puzzle. It is a bit of a long puzzle. Excellent. So now we move counterclockwise four. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna switch to select letters. much trouble to hide this. It's basically a to-do list. Like, why does she have it under a complicated cipher buried in the graveyard, and to know which grave you have to reach, you have to solve a puzzle? It seems like this is way too much work just to hide this list. I'm not sure why this list is so important. Anyway, counterclockwise one for the final thing, which is the important one. It is get stock from L, meaning Lauren. She's actually buying some of that awesome tea from Lauren. That's how. That's that's the important thing here. I've cracked it. Look here. Cool. Let me see. Oh, this is just a list of chores. And as I said, we don't check out the other things that are inside that box, which is a shame. It seems like that would be interesting and useful and super cool. Hmm. It's dated tonight. Get stock from L? Lauren Holt! Oh, hey! Take it easy there, fellas. What's the rush? Abigail Hathorne Woodley. What? We found Abigail Hathorne Woodley's grave. What are you talking about? It's not here. And then we just sort of skip ahead. Oh, this is so weird. Like, so they confront her. They say, we found Abigail's grave. We found that top secret thing, the, the cipher that you were hiding. And then they just stop to drink the amazing coffee from Lauren. Coffee or tea? It, it seems weird that we're just gonna jump ahead to when they're standing around casually chatting, drinking tea together. I wanted to see the confrontation. Yeah. Weird. Whatever. This tastes really good. A little late for high tea, but it's good <clears throat> quality. <laughs> Frank's not much of a connoisseur. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. It's just a bit strong. Don't worry about it. Lauren's got some of the best stuff. She gets it from all over the world. Although I usually use the mail order service. She is not my biggest fan. Today was an exception. You're dodging our question. I am. Abigail Hathorne Woodley's ghost. Oh, yeah. That. Okay, look. I may have helped stimulate everyone's imaginations a little. You know, it's good for business. What I did isn't illegal. Maybe, but it seems like you're doing it to keep people away from the Hathorne house. Yeah, what are you trying to hide? Me? Nothing. What, are you saying that I burned down the Hathorne house? Maybe. Well, no. We wouldn't make an accusation like that unless we had actual evidence. What evidence do you need? She's guilty. Okay, wait a minute. I'll admit, I rigged up a little theatrical show for tourists and the like, but there's actually a real ghost here. Lauren saw it. No. No, you can't have it both ways. Joe. Oh, yeah. I am calm. Don't say that. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Shh, do you hear it? Hear? Shh. Hear what? I don't hear anything. I hear it. Who is it? Who's there? Where? There! Right there! Right there! I don't... <laughs> Did they all go crazy all of a sudden? What? What? Anyway, the ghost There's... showed up. 
A ghost. In the cemetery. Are you serious? You're serious. Yeah, they stopped to have a tea party and then they all got attacked by a ghost and then they all ran here. Cool. That's great. Okay. Can you describe to me what you saw? Just like you said, I can't believe it. You see? They exist. I've never seen anything like it. And her eyes. Wait, her? Yeah? That wasn't a woman. Looked like a woman to me. To be fair, I couldn't see her eyes. It was a man with black eyes. He... That's not who I saw. I saw a woman. And I couldn't see her eyes. Wow. So I'm the only one still grounded in reality here? Wait. You saw a woman and you saw a man. But it was the same apparition? Hmm. This is puzzling. Well? What is that supposed to mean? You never believed. Now there's proof. Oh, please, Olivia. You never believed in ghosts. It's all theater to you. Only thing you believe in is making a buck from real lived pain. Isn't that what you do? History is different than legend. It's no legend, Tegan. All three of us saw something. It's real. <laughs> Liked Olivia just waving her arms around through Joe's arm. That was kind of funny. So they all saw something different. Hmm, that indicates that, uh, well, draw your own conclusions about that. Nancy will figure out the story behind it soon enough. Did you find anything else at the cemetery? Yeah. All right, yeah, so I was rigging up fake hauntings to scare tourists, big whoop. What? Are you serious? Scaring people? Someone could have gotten hurt. You, oh, you always take things too far. Get over yourself, Tegan. The only reason people come to this town is for the thrills, not old crockery and moldering period costumes. No one gets scared or hurt in a museum. That's the problem. Hey, everyone enough. Calm down. Remember, we're here for May. Yeah, well, where is she? She's in her room. Did you happen to see the red spray paint on our house on the way in? Well, she did. She knows what's going on here. Oh, my parents are going to flip. Olivia, what you saw was in no way related to your scare setup. No, it was real. I couldn't get anything close to that. It was terrifying. It looked real. Did you track down any new leads for the arsonist? Okay, I'll go first. So far, the evidence seems to be indicating... <laughs> Did you track down any leads? No, I'm gonna talk first, actually. I'm gonna answer my own question before letting you guys answer. So I think the culprit lied about their alibi. That? Someone is lying about their alibi. Whoa. Didn't you interview everyone? Whoa! Everyone except for May. But I don't think she did it. Nancy, if you're missing an alibi, wouldn't you think that that person has something to hide? May is protecting something, and I need to figure out what or whom. But I just have this feeling... Well, don't stop there. Go on. I don't know yet, but I think it's someone else. Look, we're not going to get the answer tonight. Let's try again tomorrow. It's been a long day. Olivia, you can stay here tonight, if you want. Thanks. The couch, unfortunately. All the other beds are taken. Speaking of which, where's Deirdre? Yeah. She said she might be late. I'm sure she'll be back soon. Huh. What is she doing at this time of night? Well, we haven't seen her all day. I don't know what the big deal is. Anyway, that's night number two of the game completely done we're playing as nancy again this is the third and final day of the game midnight is the deadline for the the hathorn house right midnight's the deadline midnight is that deadline the house needs to be decided by the judge some point soon oh yeah nancy really should have mentioned this letter that says the will is hidden inside the house yeah Really should have done that at some point. Where's May? Where did she go? Hmm. Nancy! Hey, oh, hey gang! Hi. 
Hey, Deeds, how's it going? So what time did you get home last night? I'd like to just eat my breakfast without being interrogated. Did you come home after midnight, young lady? You are so grounded. I've already answered a litany of questions from these two. You want to ask them. I'm sure they'd love to tell you. Okay. Ow. Guys. What's wrong with you? My hands feel like pins and needles. I think I slept on them or something. Yeah, me too. Same. Uh-huh. So, is anyone going to tell me what happened yesterday? No, but seriously, could you guys tell me where Deirdre was last night? I really do want to know. That seems like important information. And them complaining about their hands feeling weird. Yes, everybody who saw the ghost hallucination has uh, weird feeling hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Frank disappears again when you look at the bottom of the screen. I still don't know why that's the case. Poor, poor Frank. Poor Frank. Poor Frank. Well, they saw it. It? An anomalistic paranormal projection. You mean a ghost? That's exactly what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Anyone else see it? Olivia Ravencroft. The witch? Except she claims to have seen Judge John Hathorne, not Abigail Hathorne Woodley. Well, there you have it. She sees something different than all of you. Clearly she's lying. She probably rigged the whole thing up. I don't think so, Deirdre. It's not an act. She was genuinely scared. Ergo. No, sorry. Not ergo. Ergut. Your hands. Ergot poisoning. You really think it's possible? Mass psychogenic illness by more than one person. Hallucinations, vasoconstriction in the hands and feet. Pins and needles. Exactly. Wait, what? What is that? Yeah... But how? Food or drink? Intentional? In this town? I'd believe it. What are you guys talking about? We could have been poisoned with ergot. Poisoned? What? The symptoms match. And it's not without precedent. Especially here. Oh! There's a theory that the accusers of the Salem witch trials were exhibiting strange behavior, but it wasn't witchcraft. It was because they had eaten rye infected by ergot spores. It causes hallucinations. It was also pretty common 300 years ago. I had an Asahi Super Muscle Builder smoothie for lunch yesterday. I did not eat some sort of Pilgrim Era rye porridge. So how could I get poisoned? I don't know, but I'd like to see if there are any sources of ergot in town. Good idea. So Deirdre's a genius. She just solved the mystery within like a minute of hearing about it. She gets told about the hallucination. She's like, okay, everybody saw something different. Well, therefore it must be a hallucination. If it was like a ghost haunting with somebody dressed in a costume, they all would have seen the same thing. That's how Deirdre realizes they must have been poisoned by Urgot. She also, uh, as you saw, Dis determined comes to that uh, conclusion based on the symptoms they are displaying. So that's, I mean, way to go, Deirdre. I really feel like they could have continued here, continued the conversation, taken another like three minutes to figure out how they all were poisoned. Joe, what did you have last night? I, I mean, not just a smoothie. Was there anything else they had right before the hallucination? Well, yeah, it was the tea. Obviously, it was the tea that they, they drank. So the tea was poisoned. Dun, 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 dun. It's weird that they don't remember drinking the tea. You might remember Nancy also drank some tea right before the hallucination. So, it, I mean, we're going to figure that out after a fair bit of investigation. But I feel like Nancy and the Hardy Boys could have made that conclusion right now. I visited the Hathorn house. And... I found Olivia's jacket in plain view. Hmm. Seems too obvious. It is. Olivia has been involved with some scare pranks in town, mostly drumming up business for her tour. But we don't think she's a suspect. Her alibi? She was working. Working? As was everyone else in town at the time. Minus May, of course. Yeah, May needs a job. Seriously, May. There's definitely a will. Okay. 
Do we have it? No. No. But I found a letter written by Francis Tuttle specifically stating that a will exists and was written for Lauren. Could have been burned in the fire. Could be the reason for the fire. None of this helps May. We need a perp, not a possible piece of paper that no one can find. A perp? We should still try to find it. It might be motive. And it would mean the difference between keeping or losing a home. I'll start with the judge. I should finally be able to get the CCTV access tapes. Frank, Joe, can you guys check the cemetery for any traces of Urgot? I'm not sure our ghost hunting equipment is... We'll figure it out. But I don't even know what an Urgot spore looks. We'll figure it out. Deirdre, you can... No. Oh. Okay. Time is running out. If we don't clear May's name soon, I hate to think what this town will do to her. I'm coming with you. You better not let me down. Okay. So so once again, it takes them like 10 minutes to discuss, just to recap the case and figure out what they're doing today. Yeah. Hi, Deirdre. Deirdre's just going to be hanging out with me for this, this entire time. Nice. Nice. It's just... Like, I wish Nancy could explore the Hathorn house now and, and look for the will. That seems like something that would be good for her to do. Or at least show that piece of paper to the judge or, or something like that. But nope. Nope. We are, uh... Excuse me, Deirdre? Okay, so now we get to see... Now we can actually see this uh, spray painting stuff on the walls. Harris the Accusers... Perry, we know the truth. Deirdre is just gigantic. Hmm? What? Hmm? Stare at me from your throne, <sighs> Deirdre. Oh, and here she looks normal. Okay, great. Little pig picture there. I wonder how the people actually got up here to, to do that. Yeah! How could some... Like, that's very high up. Did the, the culprit bring a ladder or something? Alright, two things to do. Um, Urgot and uh, the CCTV tapes. Let's do the CCTV tapes. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Where are the protesters? No, seriously, where are the protesters? Today is the day that uh, the house... I mean, midnight. Midnight tonight is when the house goes up for sale. You'd think the protesters would still be here. It's kind of a cool car, I guess. Whose car is that? Hmm. Don't know. I thought I could click on the car and, and see it. But, no. What? They're skipping through the halls this time? I've just realized that this case has taken a turn. About time. How do you figure? Intentional poisoning usually has one goal. To eliminate the target. Someone was trying to kill us. Urgot poisoning at high enough doses. Ends in gangrene. Which, yeah, is pretty bad, but it's not death. Wait a minute. You really think this was intentional? And not some, you know, accidental ingestion? If you look at all the evidence, yes. Olivia's jacket at the crime scene, the spray painting of the Perry house, everyone's obsession to get May convicted. You know what all these people have in common. What? They're women. Are you saying they're all witches or that this is a witch hunt? I'm saying it's Salem. That conversation is a little odd because we could hear the protesters even though there are no protesters outside, so... What was that? That's my question. Also, it, everyone's obsession to get May convicted. I feel like that's something the game doesn't really have. Like, nobody seems insistent on having May get arrested except the judge. He seems to be the only one who cares about May's arrest. I don't know. Okay, hey, hey, look, everybody's here. Cool, nice, nice. All right, let's have a conversation. Can I help you, Miss Drew? I'm here for the CCTV footage. Yes, yes, yes. You can use this on the evidence room computer. You know where that is, right? Yeah. 
I found the pin code here. Remember? Of course you did. Now run along. Run along? Run along? How could he say run along when he's telling somebody to leave? Is that not the weirdest thing you've ever heard? You know, I just realized I never followed up with you two about what you were doing on the day the AW evidence was stolen. Yeah. Ugh, you know, Nancy, this detective thing is really sweet and all, but we are in the middle of something important here, okay? What are oh. you doing? Initiating the process of handing over Hathorn House to the state oh. so it can be turned into a museum. Oh. What? It's our only option. But you work for Lauren. It's her home. And I'm getting her an extra 90 days before she's evicted, which is 90 more than she would have had without me. So we're a little busy right now, because we need to file this by the end of the day. And May Perry? What about May Perry? Is she being charged? I won't discuss this. It's an active criminal investigation. But from what I've heard, an arrest will happen later today. What? So please, can you both leave us? Come on, Deirdre. I have the drive. I won't discuss this, but actually, yeah, I am going to tell you. May is going to get arrested today. How does the judge know that? Did the police call the judge and tell him, hey, by the way, uh, we're going to arrest May in about 12 hours? Just, just, just keep that information a secret, okay? And I really do kind of like this solution, which is they're giving the house to the state under the specific conditions that the house will become a museum. I feel like that's probably like a nice in-between solution. Like the AW group might actually like it. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's, it's better than them just giving the, the house to the state and having the state put it up for auction or something like that. It feels like that's probably something the AW group would approve of. Yeah, and on what grounds can the police make arrests? Did they find new evidence? Did they find any evidence? No. So then why can they just suddenly make an arrest today? It's whatever. Can we just lock the judge's door so he can't so he can't do anything? Yeah. We'll just we'll just lock him inside. Okay, distract me, Drew. So I don't go back in there and smash things. With what? Tell me Tell me some inane detail from your life so I feel better. One where you come off badly. I know. Tell me what Ned said when you told him you saw a ghost. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot. I said I'd call him back and I didn't. You forgot? Do you even want a boyfriend, Drew? Because that is a fine young man some other girl might appreciate more than you. Some other girl? Yes. Like a nice girl who knows him well and thinks he's cute and would remember to call. You know I'm a detective, right? This mystery girl, not so mysterious. Shucks. I was trying to throw you off with nice. Oh, come on. You're in no danger from me, Drew. You could never call Ned again, and he'd still be sitting by his phone waiting for you. Maybe. After this, I'm going with him on vacation. No cases. I think you'd hate that. You need a case. You're a mystery addict. Get him to help. Romance, adventure, a tropical location with stunning sunsets. That actually sounds like an amazing idea. I know. Also, I hate you. <laughs> Thanks, Deirdre. Deirdre is suggesting that she would be a much better boyfriend, I mean, much better girlfriend for Ned than Nancy. You know, maybe, I bet Deirdre would probably call him occasionally, as opposed to Nancy, who ignores him for pretty much this entire game. Yeah. Nancy, how's my favorite daughter doing? Only daughter. Ugh. <sighs> that too. You okay? How's the case coming along? Not well. I have a bunch of alibis, but I'm missing something. Then there's the Book of Apologies that's been stolen, and the arson, and a break-in at the courthouse. Hey, hey, slow down. Let's focus on one person at a time. Who's on your list? Oh, and Dad calls randomly so we can accuse every single person. You guys mind if we skip this? We've had way too much talking in this game. I don't think we need to recap who every single character is. I will give you one example. Let's say Alicia. 
Alicia Cole is helping Lauren Holt, the supposed heir, with paperwork. Alicia claims she was running errands around town. Oh, she was. She was. Yeah, I was talking to her on the phone about Lauren Holt's case. Ha, huh, look at that. I'm confirming her alibi. Well, that doesn't happen very often. Cool. And now I'm just gonna skip ahead. Talk to you later. Thanks. Just skip that. Uh, somebody asked if we could call Ned. Oh, no we can't. <laughs> Hello, you've reached the voicemail inbox of Ned Nickerson. I apologize that I did not come to the phone in a timely fashion. Please feel free to leave a message after the beep. Yeah, Ned, Ned doesn't pick up. Ned, Ned is not there to pick up. So, we can examine Alicia's desk. This was something which took me a while to figure out the first time I played this game. Like, it's not incredibly obvious that we need to steal something from her desk. A demolition offer for the Hathorn House. Why in the world would Alicia have this? Yeah, see, a demolition offer. That was something else which could have happened to the Hathorn House. Having it be turned into a museum seems like it's a, a better, better way to handle that situation. All right, there's that. And underneath it... This looks like some kind of map. The requested section of the Salem Waterworks. Marked an access point. Why would Alicia have this? We have a waterworks map. Ugh. What? Huh? Excuse me? Hmm? Thanks, Deirdre. So we're gonna use that a here. A map of Salem. We use the map on the other map. Let's see here. If I align the waterworks map properly... I should be able to figure out which area it represents. Woohoo! So it is unsurprisingly the Hathorn House. Let me look for the Hathorn House. I guess this is sort of a map of the area. There's the museum. So this must be the graveyard. There's the weird path in the woods. And there's the Hathorn House. Oh, we do need to rotate it. Is that not it, or am I wrong? Hmm. You need to get this in the right spot. Upside down. There we go, got it. Man, you have to be really perfect with this. The Hathorn House. I need to know what's at that mark. So that's where some water is at the Hathorn House. A Hooray. map of Salem. And now let's do this puzzle. Well, I think Jason is lying to us. I'm hoping the CCTV footage will prove it. Bad news. Kind of cool that we get two puzzles in a row, right? Really, the, the final, this final day of the game has more puzzles than the entire rest of the game. That's, that's kind of sad. I wish they had more puzzles towards the start. But it's kind of cool that they have a bunch of puzzles at the end, though, right? Alrighty, so let's see. What we need to do is find frames. We need to copy video footage of the culprit. I'm totally not remembering it. But okay, the culprit was there at 11 o'clock. Our culprit came in at uh, 1. One second. I guess is this is this minutes or seconds? So, this is the culprit. Don't know who that could be. Can you guess who that might be? Well, the culprit comes in. And then we saw the culprit goes to the entrance. What does the culprit do next? The culprit... Is probably oh, here in the hallway. Wait, creepy? It's creepy. Yeah, they have a camera in the ladies' room. That is creepy, actually. So, at two seconds, the culprit went down the hallway and then went into the men's room huh um why yep there's the culprit in the men's room culprit went to the bathroom i guess 
still hanging out in the men's room, and then changed into this hoodie. Yeah, that's what the culprit did. And then seven, uh, at seven o'clock, probably the hallway. Yeah, the culprit came down the hallway at seven. And then at eight, probably uh, the courtroom. We never actually see that courtroom, do we? Ah, at eight, the culprit is here in the evidence room, it looks like, right? So the culprit ran in, just stole the evidence, knocked that thing down on the ground. And where was the culprit at 10? Was the culprit down the hallway? Yeah, I don't quite see where the culprit is. Maybe that blur right there is the culprit. So that's at, oh, and then 11, we already got 11, the culprit's at the entrance. So at 12, did the culprit go outside? Culprit went outside. Went into that red car. And left. And I think that is the puzzle. So I must have made a mistake somewhere because the game is saying, um, the game is not throwing the puzzle solution at me. Nancy says something when you've got this this puzzle solution figured out. All right, oh, man. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks good. Seven, eight. Somebody's saying try backing away from the computer, maybe. Could be. I think maybe I got something wrong at 10, though. Like, is the culprit... Maybe that's the culprit at 10? Yes. Yeah, Let's that's it. See. see? It was the 10 seconds. It's a shame we can't make out the perp's face. <laughs> Perp? What? Isn't that what you call them? Suspect, Deirdre. This isn't a crime show. Well, I kind of like using it. Maybe that's my calling card. And yours is, well, whatever it is that you do. Thanks. For what? I think that's the first compliment you've ever given me. It's not a very good one, but I'll take it. Don't get used to it, Drew. Come on. This car looks like our best lead. Hmm. I swear I saw one just like this parked outside the courthouse. We should check it out. All right. Um, I do like some of the stuff people are saying in, in the chat. It's like, gee, who do you think that could be? It's kind of obvious who the culprit is because we've seen the culprit wear that outfit for uh, the past two days or so. Somebody else pointed out I just passed... Uh, 54,000 subscribers just now in the middle of this live stream. Thanks so much, everybody. 54,000 subscribers. Woo! That's cool. Yeah, I got a lot of subscribers because of this mega marathon. Um, I guess I can see exactly how many. So, yeah, like this month, I got 654 subscribers. I, I, I hope they all stick around after the Mega Marathon, because this is sort of the last game in the series. So so I, I hope some of them at least uh, stick around and we don't immediately drop down <laughs> um, tomorrow. All right, so now we need to... I don't think we could talk to anybody else. I mean, we can't talk to them. They won't talk. Can I help you, Miss Drew? Yeah. No. Okay, he doesn't want to talk. Oh, man. That's sad. I wish we could talk to the judge about something. Or we could talk to someone about the car, because we need to know whose car it is. Ha! Found it! Ha! Found it! The car! We need to find the car! 
Actually, that reminds me of the Easter egg. Ha! Found it. Somebody asked about the Easter egg. I already showed it off, but... Ha! Found it. I will show it off again. The Easter egg in this game is back inside the Perry house. People are asking, what would I marathon next? Uh, I've answered this question a couple of times. There's there's a few things that we could marathon. Uh, let me grab this. A leopard. That lighter, maze lighter. But um, yeah, Phoenix Wright marathon would be cool. Uh, Miss Clue marathon. Thinking Sherlock Holmes marathon. I know I tried like playing Zelda games, but people weren't interested. So here is the Easter egg. <laughs> Found it. Found it. <laughs> Found it. Ooh, Professor Layton. Yeah, that'd be cool to marathon, too. Um, Marcella Moon games. Those are cool, too. They're like the Nancy Drew games. Yeah. So that is the, uh, that's the Easter egg in this game. Anyway, let's talk to, uh, this guy, Jason. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Bye, bye, bye. So, what's up? You guys looking for directions, or...? Whose car is that, parked in front of the courthouse? That's Alicia Cole's car. You're sure? Yeah. I washed it last week. And the week before that, and the week before that, and the week... Yeah, okay, we get it. You wash your car every single week. Okay, so the culprit escaped in Alicia's car. Good to know. You seem to hang out a lot in the square. Well, yeah. It's a good vantage point of the whole town. Yeah. Oh, look! I can see the courthouse from right here. Can you see it, Nancy? I can. Yeah. You can see a lot of buildings from the square. It's a square. So did you see anyone on the day the AW evidence was stolen from the judge's office? No, because I wasn't here. I was working for Alicia. What kind of work? Helping her run errands. What errands? Dry cleaning and stuff. Uh-huh. Look, just ask her. She'll confirm it. We will ask her, Jason. Thanks. Alrighty. Do you know May? Do you know May Perry? What? May? Yeah. Why? What does she have to do with this? Because she's going to be arrested for these crimes by the end of the day. Unless we start coming up with answers. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. There's no way she has anything to do with this. Wait, you know May? Like, know her? Yeah. Do you talk to her? We know she doesn't have anything to do with these crimes, but everyone thinks she does, and that's good enough to get her into serious trouble. Well, that's too bad. All right, some people mentioned doing Barbie marathon. Who knows? I don't know when I'd do another marathon. To be honest, doing this marathon just has been killer on my schedule, and it's been really tough because, well, there's a lot of Nancy Drew games, so playing all these games, it, it, it's just taken a long time. So I'll probably, you know, just throwing out ideas for next year's marathon. I'll, maybe I can do that for a, a marathon next year. All right, so let's go uh, over here. Talk to Olivia and the Hardy Boys. How are you feeling, Olivia? Uh, I didn't sleep at all last night. I still have that ghost in my head and my hands... Burn, right? Like pins and needles. Yeah, how'd you know? Oh yeah, well, we're not actually gonna answer that question. Oh, well, I guess we can answer it. Yeah, let's be nice and answer that question. We think we were poisoned by ergot. Ergot? Really? What's that? It's a fungus. A fungus? What? But how? Nancy does have a pancake just in her pocket. She's been carrying around that pancake for a long, long time. What did you eat yesterday? Eat? Why? We just, just said us. we were poisoned. Well, I had a breakfast cantaloupe, and then I had lunch at Kale Me Crazy. It's this vegan place. Uh-huh. 
What did you have? Kale salad, chickpeas, raisins, with thousand witches dressing. Not very fungal. No. Anything to drink yesterday? Coffee at breakfast, fair trade, obviously. Smoothie at Kale Me Crazy, and tea. What kind of tea? It was a matcha. Gross. Well, I like it. Where's the water from? Excuse me? The water that you made your tea with. It was just normal faucet water. Some people filter, I don't have the time. Besides, Lauren has the best matcha. You can't tell it's unfiltered. Whose faucet? Lauren's? I went to try to talk to her about the ghosts. She made me tea, it was better than the conversation. I took my tea to go and then ended up sharing it with the Hardy brothers. I ran into them. Boys. Yeah, them, in the cemetery. Joe wanted to try my tea. So you all drank the tea? Yep. Alrighty. Talk to you later. Nancy's sort of coming to the conclusion that the tea they drank was poisoned. Now we need to get to the Hardy Boys and ask them about the tea. I do like how Deirdre interrupts. She's like, no, 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 no. They're the Hardy Boys, not the Ned. Hardy Brothers. Ned. Oh, it's Ned! So Guys, it's Ned! Hey, Ned's calling. Yes? Why wouldn't I be? Well, you know, we haven't really been talking much lately. I know, I know, I know. It's just... It's just that you're busy with your life, and I've been busy with mine, and... Ned, I've missed you so much. Yeah, me too. Can we go on vacation? Just you and me? Together for once? Vacation? Why, well, we just got off fall break. Yeah, I know. But next break, will you go with me? Of course. I'd love to. I'm there, but... No excuses. We'll think of something fun to do. Deirdre had an interesting idea I wanted to run by you. You spoke to Deirdre? And about me? I know. This is the craziest case. I can't wait to tell you all about it. You know, I'm actually really glad that you picked up. Because I really wanted to have a longer conversation with you about... Nancy! Come here! Hang on a second, guys. You know, we will have that conversation about everything. But I take it now is not a good time. <laughs> Listen, I understand. It means a lot that you're trying. I just want you to be safe. I don't want to worry you with the details. This case has been crazy, but I'm working with some good people and it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Okay? I've never heard you talk like this. Should I be worried? No, no, no. The Hardy Boys are here and... Oh, really? Both of them? Yeah. You know, they're kind of a team. Frank? Yeah. Both of them. Like I said. Oh. Good. They'll look out for you. Nance? Yeah? I love you. I love you too. Talk soon. Bye. Alright, so that conversation... Wow, kind of amazing. I can't believe the Hardy Boys interrupted. That wasn't very nice. It was totally cool to, to, to hear from Ned. Ned sounds a little jealous. He's like, wait, you're hanging out with Frank Hardy? But he's a much better mystery solver than I am. And I wish there was an explanation for that mystery girl who stole Ned's phone earlier. Ah, I wish Nancy talked about that. Oh, well. Let's talk to the Hardys. This is taking too long. It's actual science, Joe. Real science takes time. Ghost hunting is real science. In some circles. Well... You find anything? I've been testing the soil from various sites around the cemetery. So far, nothing. We'll keep looking, but I don't think the source of the poison is here. That's what I've been saying. Ah! Don't worry about him. He's just agitated with all the looks he's been getting. Digging in a cemetery looks very suspicious. Did they honestly think that they got the urgent poisoning from the dirt? Did you guys eat the dirt? Is that why you think that's a, a thing? I don't know. All right. So let's let's ask about the tea. Let's backtrack. What did you guys eat and drink around the time of the ghost appearance? We had tea. Tea? Yeah. We were looking for Olivia Ravencroft and found her. She had tea, so we drank it. It was matcha. Surprisingly good. 
You drank tea in the middle of a cemetery? Resident drink expert here. Man loves a good beverage. You were barely able to get your drink down. Boys, focus. Where exactly did Olivia get the tea? She had just bought it from Lauren Holt. What about the water for the tea? No idea. I'd ask either of them. Keep digging. Literally and figuratively. You know, we're not boys. It's just part of our name. Hmm. Whatever you say. See you later. Yeah, Frank and Joe. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird that they figured out they were poison with Ergus long before figuring out they all drank the tea from Lauren's place with Lauren's water. It is, it's sort of like they solved the, the puzzle backwards. Yes, those hardy men. That's what they're going to call themselves in a few years. They are no longer the hardy boys. They are the hardy men. And what is this? Is it the triumphant return of Sweater Guy? Yes! Yes! Guys, it's Sweater Guy! He's back! Did you hear about the graffiti? On the Perry House? <laughs> you mean the Paris House, don't you? Well, sure. But that was so long ago. Who even cares about that stuff anymore? Are you kidding me? Tegan had the audacity to found the Q's witches? Trying to profit off the witch trials her own family started? Give me a break. The apple never falls far from the tree. When you put it that way... I'm glad the Neighborhood Watch delivers justice to those who deserve it. Feels good to have crooks exposed for who they really are. What? Are you sure it was them? That's where I'd place my bets. Sweater Guy thinks that the Neighborhood Association is the one that did the graffiti. And since Nancy's not going to look into who graffitied the Perry house, that's as good of an explanation as we'll ever get. Okay, the local like neighborhood association just decided to sabotage her house because they hate her. Wow, what a mean neighborhood association. Let's talk to Lauren. How's business? Slow, thankfully. Oh, I feel awful. Just a couple of questions, Lauren, and we'll get out of here. Okay. Yeah, the Neighborhood Watch really should not be committing crimes. I thought the Neighborhood Watch is supposed to stop crimes. We know what you're doing. I'm sorry? Wait, what? You're not fooling us. This whole New Age Act, modern apothecary and tea house. Please. I spent an entire day in the town archives, okay? I know everything about this town, and the people that live here, inside and out. Deirdre, this isn't the best way. Your family has been here a long time, haven't they? Yes. You're related to Tichiba, correct? Yes. Aha! I knew it! Tichiba is kind of famous around here. She was the first accused witch. A slave from the Caribbean owned by Samuel Paris, Elizabeth Paris's father. Who else knows this, Lauren? I don't know, but it's not like it comes up in normal everyday conversation, so I've never brought it up. I'm not part of that accused witches organization if that's what you're angling at. So, you don't get along with Tegan? We used to be friends, okay? And I don't know why you think this is some sort of amazing revelation. Tegan works at the museum. She knows that my great, 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 great grandmother was Tichuba. And she knows that Tichuba was owned by her great, 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 great grandfather. What happened in our ancestors' lives mattered then, and it still matters now. But the fact that Tegan and I aren't friends has nothing to do with the past. It gives you motive. Are you seriously accusing me of setting my own house on fire? Because you don't want Tegan and her AW people to get your place. I don't care at all about Tegan or her organization. You think that's the reason I don't like her? Because her people did something bad to my people 300 years ago? She's trying to kick me out of my home. This shop is how I remember my ancestors. Ask your little questions so I can answer them, and then I'd like you to leave. Deirdre just sort of goes off on Lauren, accusing her. Like, oh my gosh, Deirdre, be nicer. 
talk to you later. Is that all? I have a couple more. Yes. Thank you, Lauren. Have a good day. Deirdre. Yeah, so the donuts are 375. How many donuts do we get for 375? That is a question. How's business? Slow, thankfully. We need to talk about the ghosts you've seen. What do you want to know? We want... I'm talking to her. So you've seen them. Abigail Hathorne Woodley. Yep. John Hathorne? Yes. And Tichaba? And Francis Tuttle? And Judge Sewell? And everyone else who's ever lived in this town? Why didn't you say this before? Because it sounds crazy. How long have you been seeing them? Ever since Francis died. We found a demolition notice in Alicia Cole's office. Demolition? Yeah, as in destroying the Hathorne house. Alicia is your lawyer, correct? Yeah. So why would she have this document on her desk? I have no idea. We never talked about any kind of demolition. You sure you're not looking to build your dream home? It's a great location. No, I am not looking to build my dream home. What do you know about Urgot? Why do you ask? Why are you being so suspicious? Why are you being such a... Enough. Please, we're asking because we believe the ghost sightings might be related to Urgot poisoning. Claviceps purpurea. What? I had a break-in a few weeks ago. They took all my money, which wasn't much. But the funny thing is, they also took my ergot. You have it here? Of course. It treats migraines and cluster headaches. It's part of any good herbalist repertoire. You can also maim people with it. Every medicine is toxic in high enough dosage. Why do you ask? We think that the ghost sightings are related to ergot poisoning. I don't know. They seem so real. Yeah, we are talking to Lauren through Deirdre. I just find that funny. I, I, I find that amusing, and so that's that's why I'm doing this. Do you mind if I ask what you ate yesterday? I do mind. That's kind of personal. Give me a break. It's okay. Just tell us. Did you eat any cereal-type stuff? Like rye bread? I'm gluten-free. Oh, good. So no grains. Not to my knowledge. Anything to drink? Salem's finest. Tap water. Just like everyone else in town. So wait, is... I mean, in that conversation, whenever Lauren started talking, Deirdre just moved her head down to the ground like she's looking at the floor. That's a little weird. What kind of herbs do you have here? Oh, that starts the herb puzzle. Okay, never mind. I don't care about this puzzle. <laughs> because we do not have to solve that puzzle in order to beat the game. How's business? Slow, thankfully. Talk to you later. Alrighty, so uh, now let's leave. I don't like her. Yeah, you made that clear. She knows the Paris family history. She's motivated to stop Tegan from achieving her goals with the AW organization. There's a way to go about doing things, Deirdre. What you did in there, isn't it? You're welcome. Well, that's Deirdre Shannon. Let's now check out that house thing. La 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 la. Yeah, Deirdre's neck just, just keeps bobbing like crazy. Poor Deirdre. Maybe her neck hurts. Alright, so the waterworks area wa on the map was here. Oh, we have to look at it from specifically this angle. And this bush looks strange. Someone has been here recently. This bush? Ha. That's not a bush. It's, uh, it's just some ground and looks whatever. We use some rust to be gone here. It's rusted shut. Oh no, the rust be gone from the the Perry house is what's used here. So this is this is a puzzle. 
Rusty metal, stay calm. Get yourself some rust be gone. Woo! And here we go. These spots. It's covered in ergot fung fungus. No! So we found the ergot. Somebody put the ergot inside Lauren's water supply. What are you doing? We found this in your water supply. It's you. You're trying to poison me. Are you? No, we're not. We found this ergot in your water supply. Using blueprints we found in Alicia Cole's office. Alicia? Alicia has been poisoning you, Lauren. But why? We don't know. But we're going to find out. Run all your faucets, shower, anything with a spigot for 20 minutes. It should flush out any of the ergot in your supply. Yeah, you know, I think I'm just gonna stick to the bottled water. That works too. Yeah, let's talk to Alicia about the poisoning. Or not, let's get distracted. Totally forget about the poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tegan? Hey, I'm with Deirdre. She's gone. What? May. She's gone. Okay, just hold on. We'll be there soon. We weren't fast enough. Let's go. I don't know what Deirdre means when she says we weren't fast enough. What were we trying to do which related to May? We were figuring out the poisoning puzzle. A and we did. That's what we were specifically doing. A and Tegan's like, oh no, Deirdre's gone. Deirdre... No, she's saying May's gone. May was gone the entire day. She, she wasn't here. We went to the house. She wasn't there. Why are we acting like this is something new? I just don't get it. Why can't we confront Alicia about the poisoning? I just... Ah! Okay. Anyway, time for a big, big revelation. We're going to have a big revelation coming up soon. So, prepare yourself. Yeah, Lauren doesn't act like it's a big deal that her lawyer tried to kill her. Hmm, Lauren, you really should, you, you really should do that. So let's see, can we do that silly, uh, like, the phone call thing here with Tegan? Nancy, how's it going? Need help? Hey, I just have a few questions on my mind. I've got a minute, so ask away. Oh, man. Um, if this isn't too personal, why is May so standoffish? May had a tough childhood. So I've heard. If this hits too close to home, you don't have to answer. Our father remarried when we were younger. May took it hard. Whoa. He acted out, got into trouble, got a bad reputation. She's definitely changed, but her reputation hasn't. Wow, I, I did not know that. Does May have any friends in town I could talk to? Not really. She's always struggled to make friends since, uh, since the accident. She used to be friends with Jason Danforth, but his father put an end to that right away. The judge? Right. He's considered her a bad influence on his son ever since. What about Olivia or Lauren? She must know them too. I hope she's not hanging out with them. They're definitely bad influences. I know from experience. Please don't ask. Yeah, she can't hang out with them. They used to be my friends, but they're not my friends anymore, so therefore May cannot possibly hang out with them. Have you ever seen a ghost in Salem? No, never. Although they certainly exist here, no doubt in my mind. That's why I avoid the cemetery. You should too, especially after midnight. As a private investigator, I can't afford to steer clear just because of a few ghosts. But thanks for the concern. Mmm, I've got nothing more to ask. Thanks. See you later this evening. Yep, see you soon. Yeah, see you later this evening. AKA right now. She didn't leave a note, no text. I came home for lunch from the museum and she was gone. So. What, why did May, why did May leave suddenly? Do you have any idea why she would leave? Juvenile record. They published Wait, it? Wait, what? Juvenile Could've record? Could've sworn we had it expunged. Huh? But someone found it. 
The newspaper highlighted an arson incident. What a rag! Yeah, and now she's gone missing. So when they find her, they'll really try to put her away. I think she's talking about the newspaper which is on the table. We didn't get a chance to read the newspaper. Uh, the newspaper, I wish I could look at the newspaper, but no, we can't. We have to finish this conversation first. May never gave an alibi because she was protecting someone. Do you have any idea who that might be? Jason Danforth. Wait, really? Yeah, May doesn't really seem to be Jason's type. Before she disappeared, I admit I read through her phone. What? She left it in the living room, and why would she do that? They used to be friends when they were younger, but grew apart. I, I guess they still kept in touch. Jason said he was in trouble for something, but he never said what. She knew. Okay, so listen, Tegan. We found out that Alicia is poisoning Lauren Holt, and that's really a big deal. We suspect Alicia Cole was poisoning Lauren Holt's water supply. It's possible she's involved with the house fire as well. It's not true. Because I was the one who set Hathorn House on fire. Dun dun what? dun! It was an accident. I was looking for the will, Francis's will. I looked everywhere, and I couldn't find it, so I just started tearing the place apart. And I was in the storage room, and there were some paint cans, and I knocked over the candle I was using, and it just ignited. Like, whoosh, burst into flames. Why didn't May say something? I have no idea. I'm so sorry, Deirdre. I'm sorry to both of you. I don't know what I was thinking bringing you into this. What did I think was going to happen? We need to find May. Please. Please find her. If we find her, if you find her, I will turn myself in. You should do that anyway. I can't believe this. Why didn't you say something sooner? Were you planning on having May take the fall for this? Really? After everything, she's... I know, I'm sorry. I... I was hoping it would all just fix itself, blow over. They have nothing on her, so they can't blame her for it, right? I thought we could both just get away from it, but she wouldn't give an alibi. I don't understand why. And I didn't want to risk my work for AW. How did it come to this? You should be ashamed. Deirdre, we need to go. Is there any info you can give us on where she might be? I know she has secret hiding places around town, but I don't know where they are. Please, find her. We will. My gosh, Tegan. She's like, I didn't want to ruin my job, so I decided I'm going to let my sister go to jail for crimes I committed. Gosh, Tegan is just the worst. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really glad that Deirdre really chewed her out, because come on, Tegan. She could have told the truth from the very beginning, and just... Ugh. I just burned down this, the biggest, most historical house in town, and I thought nothing would happen. Come on. The storm got worse. Really? As if we need more rain right now. We're going wherever May is, rain or not. This isn't going to stop us, right? Right. Hey, what's going on? Long story, but Tegan set fire to the Hathorn house and May is missing. What? I need you and Joe to just stay with her and make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Our first arrest. Private detectives can't arrest people. Citizens arrest. Wait, you're going out looking for her? The storm is getting bad, Nance. Time's up. I need to set these wrongs right. Be careful. When am I not? Hey, wait for me. Nah, I've had enough of this. What? Us? We don't work well together. Everything about this is wrong. What are you talking about? We just solved the crime. I called you because I needed you to connect with May to prevent this from happening. Wait, did you I know? Couldn't. She was avoiding me. The one thing I wanted from you, you couldn't deliver. Deirdre, that's not fair. You know what? It's fine. 
If we split up, we have a better chance of finding her. Agreed? Well, I guess. So... So, kind of out of nowhere, Deirdre's like, I don't like you anymore, Nancy. We're not friends anymore. I'm, not, I, I'm really mad at you. I just wanted you to clear May's name. I didn't want you to figure out that Tegan was guilty. I don't think Deirdre knew Tegan was guilty, though. But yeah, it, it seems kind of unfair that Deirdre's blaming me for determining Tegan's guilt. It, it, it's not Nancy's fault that Tegan's the culprit. Is that May's juvenile record? How horrible to print this of a teenager. I hope May is okay. All right, so here is her uh, juvenile record. So, uh, graffitiing the school, graffitiing a local shop, shoplifting, felony, and defacement of a historical monument. Really wish we could learn more about these crimes, but uh, we don't. And some guy named Duncan, whoever that is, Duncan is the one who had this published. Thanks, Duncan, you jerk. Yeah, obviously Deirdre, Deirdre couldn't have known that Tegan stuff in advance, otherwise she wouldn't have been so angry with Tegan during that conversation, right? Hmm, what's this? May forgot her phone. So May left these messages here. Apparently May and Jason have a secret hiding spot. And that's where she's going. La 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 la. I can't call people on her phone. May's phone. Hooray. Oh, fancy phone, I suppose. So here's something. Um, we've got this. This is like her phone background, I guess. That will be important for a puzzle. Well, since Jason is the one who knows where their secret hiding spot is, it only makes sense for us to confront Jason, who just happens to be outside here at this exact moment. Wow. Okay. Hey, detective lady. You shouldn't be out in the rain. It'll ruin your makeup. What are you doing out here, Jason? I should ask you the same thing. I'm looking for May Perry. She's gone missing. You never told me you were friends with May. Uh, uh, let's talk in the car. We, we need to keep our conversation May and I secret. have been friends for years. You never mentioned her. Since when do I have to tell you everything? Do you know she's missing? She's not missing. She told me she was hiding. Where? <laughs> I think it's about time you head back to wherever you're from, Nancy Drew. This isn't your problem anymore. So he drives Nancy into town. All right, get up. I have to go. You're going to kick me out in the rain? Wait, there is something in here. So he just gets out of the car and looks at his phone while Nancy messes around in his car and finds this plane ticket. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. So that proves he was the one who robbed Nancy at the very start of the game in Austria. Where did that ticket come from? I don't know. Maybe it was on the dashboard. Bingo. Yo, what do you think you're doing? Where was you that You can get ticket? out of my car now. I did not now. see it. I just, whatever. Man, this storm is bad. Huh. This is interesting. Turns out we were in Austria at the same time. What a strange coincidence. I... You didn't happen to visit Mosam Castle on your trip, did you, Jason? Oh, okay, 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 yes. I was in Austria, and yes, I was at Mosam Castle. Oh, this wasn't supposed to happen. Who bought the tickets? What? You flew first class. You didn't pay for that. Alicia Cole. Alicia Cole? She paid you to go to Austria and rob me? So you flew to Austria to steal the Book of Apologies? Uh-huh. So, you saw me there? Yep. Does Alicia have the book now? Actually, no. 
Where is it? It's somewhere safe. I need it to... You need to hand it over. I don't have it. You need to do it now. I don't have it, all right? He actually put the book in the hidden spot, the place where May's hiding. So that's convenient. We're gonna go to the, the hidden spot and we're gonna find that AW book. Yep. It is kind of weird that, you know, he forces Nancy to get into his car and then she just finds the ticket there and then he forces her out of the car. I don't know, is that weird? It just seems like it's a little contrived that, you know, at this point in the game, Nancy needs to know he's a culprit because we're not gonna see him again for the rest of the game. So it, it feels maybe like this was a little forced. I'm not sure if I'm explaining correctly, but I don't know. It's just sort of like we have this big confession with Tegan, and then now we have this big confession with Jason, and then we're gonna go find May. Did you steal the AW evidence too? Explain. Like I we already knew that. Didn't didn't we already know that? Wasn't it obvious that he was the guy stealing the stuff? You could totally tell it was him from the security camera footage, right? Jason. She's not going to help me, is she? You can get another one. <sighs> What's the point? Yeah, I stole it from my dad's office. It was easy enough. The guy doesn't lock his door, like, ever. <laughs> and then I gave it to Alicia. I don't know where it is now. Ugh, my dad's gonna kill me. Am I supposed to believe Alicia is behind this? You want proof? Yes. I don't have any. Why, though? Alicia knows about my financial situation. Once she found out, she squeezed and never let go. Threatened to tell my father. Jason, you committed a crime in another country. How bad could it be? I know, I know, it's bad. Another question. What is his financial situation? Why is he so badly in debt that he needs to turn to a life of crime? I really would like to know, how much money does he owe? Does he, like, owe money to terrible loan sharks or something? I don't think it's explained why he's so badly in debt, or who he, he's in debt to. Why would Alicia do this? No idea. She never told me. Yeah, I, I know. I screwed up. You haven't mentioned May once. I thought she was your friend. She has the book. You need to tell me where she is, Jason. Every minute that goes by with her on the run is bad for her and you. In the tunnels, underneath Salem. Go to the Little Liberty statue and light it up. You'll see the way in. She's down there. Thank you, Jason, for telling me everything. Promise me you'll find May. It's not safe down there with the rain. Every time it rains, a tunnel caves in. Why don't you show me? I have to look for my dad, tell him what happened. You can do that. Somebody points out, it would have been interesting if that plane ticket had been found inside May's bedroom. Yeah, that actually would have been pretty interesting, I think. After I'm not, we find I'm not a May. good person, okay? I'm scared. I don't want to go down there, not in this weather. I'll find her. Come on, Deirdre. Hi. You've reached the phone of private investigator Deirdre Shannon. I'm working on an important case and can't come to the phone right now. But if you have any information you'd like to share, please leave a message after the beep. Shoot. Deirdre. Yeah? You heard from Deirdre? No. Well, I know where May is. She's underneath Salem. Underneath? Meet me in the cemetery. I need your help to find her. The cemetery? Okay, we'll be right there. What do we do about Tegan? This is more important. She's not going anywhere. And Frank, don't tell her about May. I don't want her trying to come with us. This is going to be very dangerous. Copy that. Mm, he's doing the exact same like hey. dance that Joe Hardy does the entire time throughout the game. Now, not sure why Nancy decided to call Deirdre there, but Deirdre is still gone. We could get umbrellas or... Joe! Or just stand here and wait for instructions. Thanks, guys. Jason said there was some way to open the tunnels with the statue. But he didn't really say how. Bring light into darkness. Hmm. Think it's a metaphor? 
Of course. The light is the truth, and the darkness is... The night. I would think we need truth during business hours as well. No. It's a clue. I need a source of light. Did you bring any? You didn't bring any flashlights? You don't have any. All this ghost hunting gear, and not a single flashlight? You know, I think I remember seeing some decorative lamps over by the museum. Maybe we can borrow one? Yeah, I'll check it out. Yep, let's do that. Let's just steal the uh, decorative lamps from the museum. I bet we could call the Hardy Boys. I can't come to the phone right now, but leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Take care. Yep, yeah. It does feel like Nancy should have asked the Hardy Boys for a lantern before, right? Who's sending me text messages? Olivia? Hey, Nancy! Sorry, I got your number from Tegan. Hey, it's, it's Olivia. Talk to me at Stop Museum. I'm sorry, I just drank too much cola and I am on a major sugar high. Can we actually call Tegan? No, I bet she can. Thank you for calling, but I'm not. No, we, we just can't call anybody. Can't call anybody right now. Still, yeah, kind of convenient that uh, Olivia wants to talk to us at the exact same moment Nancy needs to go to Olivia's. Hey, Nancy! Olivia, hi. How are you feeling? I'm done with tea. Gave it up. Now I'm just straight cola. All the sugar, all the caffeine. I am wired up like a 10,000 volt power line, but I have not seen one single ghost today. That's great, Olivia. Hey, yes. Can you do me a favor? I found something and I, uh... Can you give this to Tegan for me, please? We used to be really good friends and maybe this will... I don't know. Remind her of that. Can you give it to her? I can't do it. I'm... I need your help. Um, sure. What am I giving to her? Sure. I'll give it to her. Oh, thank you. I just want her to know she isn't alone. All right. So she gave a photo of the three of them when they were kids. Oh, she used to have, she used to have purple hair. That's so cute. That is kind of a hideous picture of Tegan. Yeah, and I guess that's me in the background. I really wish we could zoom in on this photo, get a better look at it, but alas, we cannot. So she had a lantern that we're trying to steal? Where is that lantern? Is it next to her? This one. Hey, Olivia, can I borrow one of these lamps? Sure, yeah, of course. Yeah, we really should have told Olivia about the poisoning. Yeah. Yeah, if Nancy had bothered to say, hey, by the way, we were poisoned. Yeah. Hopefully somebody tells Olivia the truth about the poisoning at some point so she won't have to drink soda every single day for the rest of her life. Woo. Yeah, I'm trying to get this uh, hidden passage. Why is there a tree branch in my way? I'm trying to get get it so we can actually see this hidden passage here. Whoa! Check that out, that hidden passage. Oh, look at that. All right, let's see here. Whoa! That's a deep, Why is dark the hole. In on their feet? Yeah. Look at this place. It's like Salem's version of the Parisian catacombs. And guess who calls? It's Deirdre Shannon. Hey guys, hold on one second. Hey, I'm at the entrance to the tunnels. Jason says May is hiding down here and... You're really going down there? Yeah. Look, I haven't been fair to you. It's okay. Deirdre, I have to go. No, it isn't. I brought you into this. And I'm just so mad that Tegan lied to me. Deirdre, I understand, but I really have to go. Wait. Wait. I don't want to be that kind of person. I know we don't see eye to eye on everything. But I don't want to lie to you. The arson that caused May's burn. 
I was supposed to watch her at the house that night. I did. She left, and I didn't even notice. Keegan was with her friends, so I was supposed to watch her. I didn't check on her once. I was stupid. I don't think either of them will ever forgive me. She was just a kid. So were you. Well, I can't talk to her anymore. And now she won't talk to anybody. I didn't come home last night because I couldn't stand being in the same room as her and... Deirdre, I'll find her and bring her home, I promise. Thank you. So that was a big reveal. So that fire when uh, May was nine years old, Deirdre apparently was the babysitter that night. Deirdre did not pay attention when she was supposed to be babysitting. Deirdre! That's a deep, dark hole. Let's go down this deep, dark hole if I can find it. Here. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? We'll use our cell phones as flashlights. Let's go. So it does make me wonder how much older Deirdre is than May. Yeah. How much older is Deirdre? People are asking Need that. Need to make in sure the... we don't get lost down here. One the misstep chat. and Nobody we might never get answer. out. Deep breaths. We have directions to follow. Everything will be fine. Yeah. Maybe it's Maybe it's like the babysitters club where we've got an 11-year-old watching a 9-year-old or an 11-year-old watching a 10-year-old. Something weird like that. I don't know. So, now we got a puzzle. We need to follow these directions on May's phone, because that, that was her lock screen. So, uh, it's gonna be forward, left, left. This seems right. Forward, forward, left. We're on track. And right. Then, forward, forward. Oh no. Oh no! So look at May's directions more closely. Did I mess up? Yeah, that brings us back to the exact start. So, sorry about that. So it's forward, left, left. This seems right. Right. Please don't interrupt, Nancy. Then two forward. Then left. We're on track. And right. Forward. Right. Left. Right. Getting closer. And forward. Ah! Ow! My ears! I'm deaf. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That one got away from me. Hey, did you hear that? What? Ah! What is it? Keys! Sounds wooden. Like a door? It's coming from that way, but the directions go this way. We're on it. Wait! Our cell phones don't work down here. And that sounds really angry. It could be May. But if we go that way, we might not be able to find our way back. Look! We'll follow the signs. Okay. Good luck. Hey, Joe! If you guys get in trouble, just scream. I'll be able to hear you. Very funny. B? Yep. I always am. Yeah, it's fairly common for people to be uh, babysitters when they're uh, teenagers. But it sounds like Deirdre was 10 years old watching 9-year-olds. So, like, 4th graders watching 3rd graders. Maybe not the best situation ever. So let's see, we're gonna go... Uh, now we've got a, a separate thing. Hey, check this out! This puzzle is different. This puzzle is to follow the W's. And it's actually quite easier. It's pretty cool that we have all these puzzles here at the end of the game. I kind of wish they were earlier, though. So we, we had the one puzzle for the maze, and now we get another puzzle for the maze. Forward, forward. Is there a W here? There's a W here. Joe. Yes, Frank? So, we're wading through this water... Yeah? And it's in tunnels? Underground? I know what you're asking. I'd rather not think about it. Man, you're 
poor shoes are gonna be so messed up, Joe. So messed up. All right, so we need to turn around. Um, the next W is here to the left. And then we just go forward to the exit. I don't think there's been a death sequence in this game yet. I'm not sure. There is a death sequence here. There are two death sequences here at this point in the game. Um... Here at the end. All right, so we hear this loud banging noise and the Hardy Boys are wondering, what could it be? Well, we'll find out right now. I'll handle it. Hi, my name is Frank Hardy. I'm with my brother, Joe. Um. Do you need any help? Yes. Doesn't anyone answer their phone anymore? Deirdre? Deirdre, the door's locked. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ugh. Okay, guys. I need you to get in here. I'm being crushed. I need your help. Fast. Oh, no. So it's Deirdre. She's trapped on the other side of the door. We're going to save her by solving this puzzle. I forget what it's called. The icosahedron puzzle. The icosahedron puzzle, where we want to get all these pieces together. Hold on, Deirdre. We're coming. Yeah, but how? I don't know. We gotta find a way. So we click on the block. No, we need... What do we... Oh, yeah. So we need to swap blocks like this, when you swap the blocks, and then when you get the blocks in the right place. Basically, does that make sense? We're gonna swap all the blocks until every single block hey, is in the correct so spot. So the solution to the puzzle is gonna be this. One, two, let's see, then I swap with this one. Is that the case? Ow, it hurt. Sorry it hurts, Deirdre. But yeah, yeah, okay, so that's the puzzle. So, um, there we go. Let me just back away and start again. Yeah, but how? I don't. Alright. So, those swap, those swap, those swap, those swap. Ow, it hurt. Those swap, those swap. And those swap. I hope that's it. This has to be all yep, of them, that's right? that's it. Sure, sure. Now let's get on with this strange door. Woo! So we found the icosahedron. It's and some now sort of lock. I've never seen drum. a keyhole shaped like this before. Oh. I guess we can't really use the phone, though. Ah, that's sad. Wait, why do the Hardy Boys have this letter? Come anyway, on, get them all in there. Is that even possible? I mean, look at them. Hey guys, I can't take this much longer. What's the hold up? Got it. We're coming in. Hooray! Now we're going to save Deirdre. Grab her! Grab her! What the heck are you doing down here? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Are you okay? Ah, uh, my leg. It's just bruised, I think. I'll be fine. I thought you were dying. Well, I could have died if you hadn't saved me. I would have been trapped down here for days and starved to death. Where are we? We're in Hathorn House. I came here to try and find the will. That was a secret entrance. The rain is really doing a number on what's left of the place. I managed to get past the stairs, but that bookcase? Well, I'm just glad you two were here. Who knew that old furniture is really heavy? Not for me. Man strength. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all worth it. You know, secret room. I bet you this is where Abigail was kept. Imagine all the bad memories of this place. That's not all. Look down. 
That is really cool, though. I, I think it's so cool. Deirdre found this hidden passageway leading to the secret room inside the house. Really wish Nancy could have explored the house and found that secret passageway. But she didn't really explore the house very much. So this is a puzzle. Don't move. Yeah, I'm not moving. It's a puzzle. Captain Obvious, reporting for duty. These symbols, I've seen them before. Look around, Frank. Maybe there's a key or something. It's funny, Joe, trying to impress Deirdre. That's funny. So we do have a game over sequence. This is our first game over sequence, I think. If you fail this puzzle, Gah! like three times in a row, you're supposed to make matches. What are you doing? Matches. Don't do that. Make matches. Based on the information in this letter. So midwinter and brightest day. So that's Yule, which is midwinter, and then Litha is brightest day. Watch your step. There's the death sequence. Yeah, Nancy really should have explored this house. I do wonder where in the house this is, how this passageway connects to the rest of the house. I don't think that's explained really. And here's a book. Hey, I think I found something. Let me see. Ah, it's a riddle. We need this to figure out which buttons to press. Probably. This tells us, this, this helps with the puzzle, letting us know what these various symbols mean. It tells us that Yule is that time of year, and then, um, where was the other one? Well, the other one was Linda. So, now, armed with that information, we solve the puzzle. Yeah, it's cap the look. So it's gonna be Yule and Litha, as I said. They moved down. Yes, we all saw it. It's this machine be, is awesome. It's gonna be Leo and Taurus. Which one's Leo? Let's go back. So Taurus is this. Leo is that. So Leo, Taurus. Another circle bites the dust. Let's figure out the next one. Two, two, ten, three, one. This is going pretty good, actually. Did you ever doubt us? Uh, well. Don't then, answer that one. Then here it's left and right. We did it! Good job, everyone. Yes, perfect. Now, take more time to celebrate, and we'll have the ceiling joining us. Oh! Whoa! Cool! Where did that come from? Well, who cares? It's a house, and the and the secret message said, the will is in the house. It's this house. A house? Within the house. Oh! See, I can push in that. Something moved. This is so exciting. <laughs> Joe, I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. Well, okay, we could just zoom in there. Um, zoom in through the house to find the secret button. This house is doing fantastic for being hidden for like 300 years. And here's the secret will. Well, what is it? What is it? It's Francis Tuttle's will. Woohoo! We found it! We did it! We're great. It's right through here. I know it. May? May! Come on, hurry! May! May? May, say something. May? Can you hear me? My head. You were unconscious. I'm okay. You sure? I think you have a concussion. I'm gonna move you over to the wall, okay? Okay. Okay. Ah! So 
that's me. How did you find me? Jason. Your sister is really worried about you. I'm sure she is. We need to get out of here. Wait, not yet. Jason told me he brought a book down here. It's a very important book that I need to find. I can't leave without it. Do you know anything about that? If it's here, you can look for it. Oh! I hope you don't mind if I sit it out. Just don't take too long, okay? <laughs> oh, right. So Nancy Drew, it, now we're back at Nancy. While the Hardy Boys were saving Deirdre, Nancy came here to the secret room that May and Jason like to hang out with. I think this is where May does her artwork and stuff. And guess what? She was just accepted into Waverly Academy. Woo! That's cool. So we know Waverly Academy is like a high school. So this confirms that May is, you know, not college age because she's going to high school next year. Yeah, it is a scholarship. It's for next fall, right? Are later, they'll see her later this fall because this game takes place in Halloween. Right. Where were all the trick-or-treaters? Huh. Jason and May must have stayed here often. It's like an actual hideout. Would be really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, really cool reference to Waverly Academy. I like it. That was such a cool game. There's that weird thing from the judge's office. What's it doing here? I don't know. And there's the Mona Lisa. Lots of bottled waters, I suppose. And we got the What's puzzle. What's this old chest doing here? Oh, man. This isn't a chest. It's a puzzle box. Some of these destroy their content if they are forced open. Oh, no. Need to be careful. I think, I don't think May's a middle schooler. I think we're left to assume that she would be a junior or a senior, right? I think she has to be that old. And we have this puzzle. Yeah, I think she's going to be a transfer student, not that she's just starting high school. So this puzzle, um, yeah, this puzzle can take forever, and it's sort of random. So let's see if I can find something to help. I mean, the solution's the same every time, but uh, where the boxes are is random. So we need something to go in the bottom left-hand corner. It's going to have... Um, no, that's not it. Let's see. We need a piece that goes in the upper top. It's going to have a piece sticking out on the top, and then it's going to have a curved piece on the left. So, like, it can't be this or this. Can't be this, that won't fit. Um this can't be that. I think it has to be this. This is the only piece with a uh a curved piece on the side and then a, a rectangular piece on top. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let's see, we need a piece that goes here. It looks like it's gonna have a triangular piece on the left-hand side. The only thing with the triangular piece sticking out on the left-hand side is this one. So it goes there. Now this is a triangle piece, but it's it's missing a triangle piece on the left. So it could be this one, or is there a second one that's missing a triangle piece? No. So it's gotta be this one. Oh. Nope, that's, that's wrong. I meant this one. Yeah, it is hard to solve this puzzle unless you're... I mean, if you're playing on, like, a small window, it's going to be hard to see. So we need a piece with a curved thing on the left and then an empty space on the bottom. So curve left. Here we go. Empty space on bottom. Ah, this isn't... This hasn't been so bad. So let's see. This needs a... Oh, man, this is where it's going to get terrible, isn't it? Let's do the far right-hand side. Okay, we need a curved piece on the right-hand side. And then a thing in the bottom. Is that it? Or is there anything else with a curved piece on the right? Yeah, this is a curved piece on the right. 
Yeah, we've got two things which will fit perfectly into the bottom right, so that doesn't help. I believe we've got two things here with uh, a triangle sticking on them right, so we can't figure that out. Oh, here's where the two triangle pieces go. They both go on top of each other. So which one goes on top? Well, this one can't go on top because they, they don't match that way, so this must go on bottom, and this has to go on top. Great, figured that out. So the circular piece can't be this one because that would leave a hole here, so it must be this one. That's the bottom right hand. Which means the other circular piece is here, like that. Is that perfect? Yeah, that's perfect. Cool! We, we did something correct. So I think with the speed run strategy for this is to recognize the easier pieces like this piece, the piece with four holes, that's pretty easy to find. And I think it goes somewhere in the middle four. I just forget which one. So let's see. Do we have a piece with a hole on top and a hole on left? I think that's... Yeah, we've got two pieces with a hole on top and a hole on left. It's this one. And that one. So darn. Hole on top? No. Thing on top, hole on right. Uh, I've got multiple ones with that as well. Oh no. No! Hole on right, thing on... Hole on bottom, on hole on right. Let's look for that. Here's a hole on bottom, here's a hole on right. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's correct. So we need a hole on bottom and things on left and right here. We've got multiple ones that look like that, I believe. Oh no, could have been this one too. Gosh, yeah, this puzzle. Sorry everyone, it's, it's a difficult puzzle. Let's just start. Throwing things down and hope we get solutions. Like this. So here's a hole on bottom. Here's the hole on every side. Uh, didn't mean to swap those two. That's the hole on every side. That there and that there. Got it! Woo! This is it. The Book of Apologies. To think I had to follow you all the way from Austria to finally get you back. Sounds great. Really. Are you done yet? All right, May. Let's get out of here. Can you walk? Uh, yeah, I think so. Nancy. Thank you. No problem. Why, though? Why did you come down here for me? I've... I don't deserve it. You know what? You don't deserve any of this. Neither did those people back in 1692. They were victims, and so are you. So I'm breaking the cycle, I hope. Thanks. I just like how with that puzzle, as soon as I reach the point, I'm like, oh, I can't figure it out. I'm just going to start guessing. And then I totally got the correct answer. So I, I, I feel really lucky there. Hooray. <coughs> We're just going to leave her down there? She can take care of herself. Is that what you told yourself when you climbed down into a burned out house on your own? What would have happened if we hadn't come along? We have to get this will to the judge by the end of the day. Otherwise, this whole thing was for naught. And if Nancy and May are stuck in those tunnels much longer, we'll have some actual deaths on our hands. And if we go down there, it's going to be all of us. Isn't May why we're here? Isn't she why Nancy's here? The only reason I got into this case was because I care about my cousin, okay? But this is what we have to do. Believe me, I don't want anything to happen to May. Or Nancy. Or Nancy either. Fine. I'm trying to do one right thing in this whole mess. Every turn we've been lied to, and I am sick of being lied to. Now I am taking this to the judge's office because that is what Nancy would want me to do. Listen. I may not always be her biggest fan, but if there's anything I know about her, it's that she's going to get herself and May out of the tunnel safely. So you can either come with me and wait for Nancy, or get lost down in the tunnels. Your choice. I hope you're right. Alright, Nancy, see if you're 
Are you okay? Oh, please. No. What's the matter? Talk to me. Why did you bring me here? What do you mean? You saw them. They're coming, and now we're trapped. Who's coming? What do you mean? They know what I did. You're going to die here, you know? So this is kind of creepy and very, very ominous. And May... May has just been badly poisoned by the Urgot. And now she's sort of having wild hallucinations. I don't understand. What do you think you did that's so bad? They cursed me. That's what they're saying. For what I did. For the fire. Don't you hear them? They really had powers and... And now I'll get what I deserve. Are you saying you caused the Hathorn house fire? Tegan told me. Tegan shouldn't be speaking to you. You don't listen. You don't care about us. You just made everything worse. Now we're going to die here, and you don't even understand. By the fire, I deserve it. Me, not her. What I did, I, I deserve it. So someone said that, um... She's probably getting infected through the open wound on her leg. I don't see any open wound on her leg, but that would maybe explain why she's being poisoned. All right, so what are you talking about, May? I'm listening. What about the fire? Don't I understand? I nearly killed them. That's why the witches are here for me. They almost died. Maybe the coven really called them, and they've been here ever since that night. I meant the Hathorn house fire. That was Tegan, not you. And there's no need to cover up for her. Tegan confessed? You're the most important thing to her. We need to get out of here, so you can get home. But the witches aren't real. We've both been poisoned with Urgot. And it's making us see some weird things, but we're going to be okay if we can just get out of here. I need your help. Will you help me? Um, okay. All right, so that's the thing with May. What we want to do here is examine the candles. Need a light for these candles. What? May, have you ever been in this room before? Yeah. I was here years ago, with Jason. This is where we met after his dad said we couldn't hang out anymore. Until it got blocked off. It's a dead end. There's a wooden panel over there. It wasn't finished. Six candles, a lantern, those AW symbols. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You remember all that detail from a room you could barely see? Is that strange? Good strange. Very few people are able to remember details like that, especially from so long ago. 
I... I guess I never thought much about it. A mystery for another time. What was that about a panel? It made my scars... There's something about it. I couldn't figure it out. Can you just get us out of here? May apparently has a photographic memory. Okay, so let's use the lighter. That should light there. these candles. Yes! Now we can see things. Could try lighting it to brighten the room. Hooray! Still works. Wonder how long it's been down here. I am just the shadow. Shadow of what? Got it. That thing. Abigail Woodley's sign. Should look more closely. Should look more closely. Aha! What is this? Not as elegant as my lockpicks, but just as handy. Fancy. We want to use the old note here. Huh. Huh. Oh. Do we not want to use it here? Do we want to use the lighter on it? No, I think maybe we use it on the candle instead. Something's different about the note. Note says A-W. Looks like a map of some kind. X marks the spot. Hooray! Hmm. So if X marks the spot, then the spot is going to be somewhere there, maybe? Let's see if I can find the correct spot. It's somewhere on the top. Here. <sighs> This doesn't feel right. I know, but what choice do we have? No, you don't understand. I know this sounds strange, but the accident, ever since it happened, I could feel bad things before they happen. Like premonitions? Yeah, my scar, it hurts. It hurt right before the tunnel collapsed and it hurts now. Look, this isn't some ergot hallucination. I'm telling the truth. And I'm telling you that if you tamper with these bricks, we could be in danger, okay? Do you believe me? Yeah, I'm just gonna ignore you, okay? Let's just keep going. You know, the effects of ergot poisoning can last up to... Forget it. Just be careful, okay? I always am. How long can they last? Two days, maybe? Nancy was feeling the effects two days later, so yeah. Here goes nothing. Whew. It's the right one. Hooray! Got it. Bet this fits into the panel. Wow, it's beautiful. This must have been made by Abigail. Um, now we're getting somewhere. We are almost done with the game. But, would you believe we've still got like 20 minutes of people talking at the end? Can you believe that? It fits. Lots of talking in this game? <laughs> it might be more It's covered than you in think. a thick layer of dust. Should wipe it clean first. Okay, clean it off. We want to get the dust off. Yes. All right, so the fourth feather goes up all the way. The third feather goes up twice. One, two. The first the, the first feather goes up all the way. The end. Last puzzle. Last puzzle of the game, everyone. We take this AW key, put it in here. We eat our witch pancake. Ooh, can I, like, offer the pancake to May? Would you like a pancake? No? No? Okay. Guess not. Can we read the Book of Apologies? That would be cool. No. No. Never mind. Then let's just Please go to the end. Please be a door. Please be a door. did it. Let's get out of here. This is kind of weird. I think they break into the courthouse through that bathroom door. Deirdre! See, boys? You look... dirty. I'm fine. We need to see the judge, now. Yeah, us too. We found the... The will. No need to recap. Let's go.
Nancy, are you all right? Deirdre, can you, Frank, and Joe wait in the hallway? Don't let anyone leave this office. My pleasure. Judge, we need to talk. What is this? It's urgent. Yes, it looks like it. Is it a confession? Maybe. Judge, we've been here all night. I think it's time we retire. You're not going anywhere, perp. Excuse me? Your Honor, it's become clear to us that Miss Cole has been the perpetrator of numerous crimes here in Salem, including attempted murder. Murder? Judge, please. That's a very serious claim, Nancy. And this is a serious case. People's lives hang in the balance. This is very cute and all, but we have to do adult things now. So run along, everyone, before your PB&Js get cold. I have proof. And it's all related to the Hathorn house. The okay, I'm sorry, but that line is kind of silly. It's like, who eats warm peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? That sounds kind of gross and disgusting. Perp. Future of which rests in your hands. So I think you should hear me out before you sign that paper. All right. What? You can't be serious. Judge, this is clearly a half-brained attempt to delay what we have determined to be a sound judgment that the Hathorn House should revert to the state. We have spent most of this evening going over all possibilities for how to decide the rightful owner of this house. And you've been very adamant that the state should handle it. But if Nancy has any evidence to add, I'm willing to hear her out. Unbelievable. Hooray! Yay, the judge is actually going to listen to me. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Dan, for it. And really, they've been spending all day here? Which makes me wonder, because Alicia poisoned us. You know, Alicia turned on the water and tried to kill us. So did she, like, take a bathroom break or something? Run the Hathorn house, turn on the water, and then run right back here? Alicia has been poisoning Lauren Holt's water supply. Poisoning? That's just too much. After interviewing Lauren Holt and experiencing some negative side effects from drinking her water, I discovered that someone had been tainting her water supply with ergot. Well, that would explain my client's erratic behavior over the past few weeks. She lost her mother months ago. And that woman wasn't her mother. Give me a break. How do you know that ergot causes erratic behavior? You said she was poisoned. Wouldn't that affect anyone's behavior? What exactly are you insinuating? That you know how ergot affects its victims. I'm not answering these questions. I happen to be well-versed in biology, all right? But any tidbit of knowledge I have, you'll just try to trap me with it. Use it against me. I don't need to do that, because I found in your office a map of the Hathorn House's water system. Yes. And did you also find the notice of demolition on my desk when you illegally broke into my office? Are you going to arrest her for breaking and entering? Is what Nancy's saying true? Of course I have a map of the Hathorn House's water plans. So you admit it. You are going to try to demolish Hathorn House. I was providing my client, Lauren Holt, with that option, yes. The land is worth a lot of money and I was doing my due diligence. Have you done yours? I brought up the demolition with Lauren. She says you never discussed it. I am certain she will be happy to testify. What? She must have forgotten. Because of the poisoning you claim she's been affected by. That has to be it. What about flooding the tunnels under Salem in the past hour? Yeah! Would you know how to do that, Miss Cole? I was here, Miss Drew. Your coat looks pretty soaked. And muddy shoes. Water is wet and it's raining outside. Are you satisfied with the ridiculousness of this yet? How much longer are you going to let this go on? It all does seem circumstantial. Is that all you have, Miss Drew? Where is her coat? I mean, her shoes do look muddy. I, I will give her that. I don't see her coat anywhere, unless it's this thing. Did she, like, drape a wet coat on the judge's desk? Because that's not very nice. And there is the entry code. You can kind of see it on the left-hand side, the post-it note with the entry code. Alicia was responsible for stealing AW evidence from your office. 
This should be interesting. I spoke with your son, Jason. He claims Alicia forced him. Jason is a grown man. His actions are his own. Alicia lent Jason her car. Then Jason broke into the evidence room and stole the files. I have proof on CCTV. So what it actually sounds like is that Jason took my car, stole the evidence, and somehow I'm to blame? How did he have access to your car? I gave him the keys. He runs errands for me all the time. And how did he have access to the evidence room? Only you and the judge had the code. Look here, on the wall. An access code. I wonder if it's for the evidence room. Probably. Apologies, judge. But your carelessness is the reason this happened. In all probability, Jason heard that you left the door unlocked, and he just went and opened it. I doubt that. He barely spends any time with me. I found this in 10 seconds. You left it out for anyone to see. If he didn't know the door was unlocked, how hard would it have been to find your key? Hmm? Miss Cole, that's enough. Anything else, Miss Drew? Alicia was behind the theft of the Book of Apologies. I've never been to Europe, okay? How did you know it was in Europe? I heard the judge talking to you about it. I found plane tickets in Jason's car. He admitted to stealing the Book of Apologies on Alicia Cole's orders. Orders? <laughs> How did I order little Jason to do this, Nancy Drew? Jason has financial problems, right, Judge? I don't really know. To be honest with you, I know he's always looking for money. He's in debt, badly. A fact Alicia uses to her advantage. <laughs> this is absurd. How did he buy a first-class round-trip ticket to Salzburg when the crime occurred? Because I pay him for doing errands for me. He could use his money however he feels fit. He's a big boy now. I admit, I don't know how we could prove that Alicia... Call the airline. You can use the plane ticket reference number. Call the airline. They should be able to check the payment. I bet you it was paid by Alicia Cole, credit card. There's no way Jason would have that much cash to buy a first-class ticket. He obviously stole my credit card. So... You admit that your card was used to make the purchase. I... I didn't say that. If the card is still active, I doubt that he stole it. The credit card company would have notified you for making a large purchase, and you would have canceled it. How large is this purchase? Thousands of dollars, Judge. Hmm. That does lead to the question of, like... Nancy, how is Nancy able to afford such a very expensive vacation? And Nancy really should just pull out the will at some point. She really, really should. Miss Cole, if this was a court of law and the police were asking for probable cause, I'd be hard-pressed not to allow it. Do you have anything to say? I told him to get rid of those tickets. You know, Your Honor, your son is a real idiot. Truly, a world-class moron. He couldn't even follow simple instructions. I would have had better luck writing them in crayon. And this? Seriously? This is the kind of stuff I have to deal with? I went to law school. I have three degrees. And now I have... an arsonist. Two ghost hunters. A wannabe detective. And her assistant. Hey! What? No! Trying to screw up my plans. All the people you pointed out are the reason you're going down. No. The reason I am going down is that this stupid little town is stuck in the past. Oh, my great-great-great-great-grandmother was accused as a witch. I want repayment because I'm lazy. She loved me so much that I want this disgusting ruin of a house for free so I can run my luminous vegan tea grocery store. That is what pathetic looks like. <laughs> a bunch of whining, moaning little people whose worldview is infinitesimally small. Why, Alicia? Why? Because I wanted to do something for this town. I care about Salem more than all the Olivia's and Tegan's and Lauren's combined. I care the most. We should have leveled that old house a long time ago and built new houses. With all that land, we could have a real community here. We could bring in new business that isn't completely reliant on stupid, scary stuff. I am talking about economic development on a level which Salem has never even seen. 
And who would be the owner of these new houses? Ah. Well, after knowing this case inside out, it wouldn't be hard for me to get the land out of the grasp of the state. After all I've done for this community, some recompense is in order. So, you're saying you poisoned Lauren so you could build and own a housing complex? <laughs> Do you realize how much money is in real estate? And give me a break. I was just scaring her. I told you I know about biology. She was never in any real danger. Alicia, I saw the ergot in the water valve. There is absolutely no way you could control the dosage that Lauren ingested. You could have done irreparable damage. So what? I live here. I work here. I am a member of this community. This town needs me. No, it doesn't. I already have the papers, and I am taking them to the state office. And none of you are going to stop me. Because you can't prove anything. There's no legal heir to the Hathorn estate. And none of the evidence Detective Girl brought up will stick. So you admit to all of it? Yes. Now get out of my way. Wow. The police are on their way. You can wait here for them to arrive. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I only wanted to make Salem... This is highly disturbing. I am shocked. Very shocked at what has occurred here. Miss Cole will be held accountable for her crimes. I will make sure of it. But as much as it pains me to admit, she is right. We do not have a legal heir. Yes, we do. Alrighty. So, um, we've got three options here. Let's see. So, um, which option should we pick? I'll do a poll. Um, we'll do option number one, option number two, and option number three. And you can see the options here. So do we want to mention the Book of Apologies and the Will? Do we want to only mention the Book of Apologies? Or do we want to only mention the Will? This sort of ties in with what I complained about earlier. This sentence is cut off. We don't know what the second half of the sentence is. So it's kind of hard to figure out which option you actually want to pick, right? Alrighty. <laughs> Somebody asked which option has the longest, has the shortest dialogue. Ow. Ouch. Really? <laughs> Alright, give me a moment here, everyone. Okay, I tried doing a poll, but it looks like nobody's voted in the poll, so I must have done this poll incorrectly. Sorry, everybody. Guess the poll was broken. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Option number one wins with 55% of the vote. Option one. According to the Book of Apologies and Francis Tuttle's will, Lauren Holt is the legal owner of the Hathorn House estate. The will makes it clear that Lauren is the sole inheritor of the estate no one else. However, in the best interest of all parties, perhaps there could be a way to erect a memorial for the accused witches. That is something that you, Your Honor, would have to facilitate. Of course. Okay. Well, what about the Hathorn House fire? No one forgave me when I made a mistake. Break the cycle, right? May had nothing to do with the fire. You're sure? How do you know? because I have a confession from the person who did. Really? All right, so I did a poll earlier asking should we forgive Tegan or not. Everybody wants to uh, blame Tegan, but it's hard to pick out which option is the correct one because this one is Tegan's responsible for the fire. This is Tegan intentionally set the fire. I think the second one is the one which really blames Tegan because it has the word intentionally. Tegan Perry intentionally set the fire to force out Lauren and let the AW organization take over the property. That's surprising. You say it was intentional? Yes, I believe it was, and I believe that. Because anything less than intentional would mean people conspired to withhold information about who was responsible. And who might that be? May? I couldn't say definitively who knew what and when. Well, if it is May... 
then she will also be held responsible for obstruction. Judge, did you ever interview May? Get a statement from her? Anything on record? Well, not exactly. So you just assumed she was guilty of the crime without even speaking with her? So seriously, did the police never talk to May? Really? Is that, is that actually what happened here? The case there was needed no to case, be built. Because you never needed to make one. You thought she was guilty, and so you treated her accordingly. Miss True, I ask that in this office you treat me with respect. You deserve as much respect as I'm currently giving you, Judge. Nancy, maybe we should... You made this poor girl's life a living nightmare because of something she did when she was young. She was a kid, Your Honor. Her entire life molded and built and destroyed by an event she barely remembers. Can you imagine what that does to someone? Can you imagine what that does to her family? To her friends? Well, that is a bit unfair. You know, this town has a history of judges behaving without sound jurisprudence. And I would expect that after 300 years, you would be able to right that wrong. <sighs> Perhaps you have a point. But my concerns are not unfounded. You think Jason is a screw-up now? What would have happened if he had been friends with her? He is friends with her, Judge. What? How's that possible? I... I thought at least I would know. A judge is supposed to judge people on their actions alone, not the people they call their friends. I just hope you remember that when you sentence Jason, because his crimes aren't imagined. They're real, and they deserve real punishment. So yeah, I'm glad that Nancy called the judge out for being a terrible judge, but I feel like there are many more complaints she could have made about how terrible the judge is. I, uh, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. For what? We always promised that a secret was the most important thing in the world, and we would never break it. And I did. You saved my life. If Nancy hadn't found me, well... <clears throat> I, um, I'm going to be gone for a while. I really screwed up. Still, I know who you are. There's a good person hidden below this pretty boy exterior. Come on. You may go away, but that good part never will. Yeah? Yeah. Everything okay? What do you think? Guess that's kind of to be expected. Yeah. Okay, so I that that really felt like a romantic love conversation between May and Jason. But maybe that's just me. And this is the end of the game. They have a celebration party. Nancy can talk to everyone and then the house will end. How long was that scene, by the way, in the judge's office? Was it like 20 minutes? It was kind of a long conversation. So, ready to leave yet? But I just got here. Not the house. Salem. You always wrap up your cases in a nice bow to run off for the next one the day after, don't you? This time, I might actually take that vacation. Doesn't sound like your style, but if you say so. Look, we had our moments during the past few days. In the end, you cleared May's name. So thanks. You're welcome. It was my pleasure to help. Ugh, that attitude just kills me. You did get my other cousin convicted, though. That wasn't really what we agreed on. I'm sorry, but any crime committed has to be brought into the light. It was for the best. Uh-huh. Yeah, you keep saying things like that. But one day, this whole justice attitude of yours will come back to bite you. If it does, I'll be ready for it. Yeah, I don't know. Tegan definitely did deserve to be punished for her crimes. Sorry, Deirdre. I'll see you around, Drew. Not too soon, though. Oh, did I get a text message? Ah, from Tegan. Hey, hey. 
So let me just show that conversation. What is it? Hey, how are you? I'm okay, thanks. I wanted to say sorry for everything I did. I know it was wrong and will haunt me forever. Thanks for laying the blame on me. It's the right way to make sure May wasn't punished. Well, not more than what's already happened. Did you be coming to the house? Sorry, I'm at the police station. Some questioning going on. Have to get my lawyer. I will be giving my testimony soon. I'm sure they'll be nice. They often are when somebody admits guilt. It doesn't matter. I'm ready to stand and take the consequences for my action. It's the least I can do. Are you leaving? Yeah, but hopefully we'll meet again. I enjoyed Salem. I might come back someday. You're always welcome in our house. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thanks. See you around. Yeah, uh, um, Tegan is just sort of texting from jail. Hey, look, I'm sorry about how things went down with Tegan, but you said you were going to break the cycle. I hope you're happy with yourself. Another case closed, right? Her intentions might have been good, but she still broke the law. I do and think she, she realized her mistake, it, May. I'm sure she regrets doing it, and will come back a better person. Well, it's over now, so I don't have to put up with you anymore. And I almost thought you could be trusted. Just leave me alone. Yeah, May really hates me now. Well, sorry, May. Do you have to stand there? Just go away. Do you want a pancake, maybe? Yeah, what happened with this Olivia photo? Olivia gave this photo to me. We didn't use the photo for anything, did we? Huh. Nancy, so glad you're here. Of course. I wouldn't miss the party, after all we went through. Hey, shouldn't you ask her? You know, the thing we talked about. Oh, yeah, right. So, um, Nancy, the thing we talked about before? Yes. Have you thought about it? Starting a detective agency, I mean. The Hardys and Drew Detective Agency. Has a nice ring to it, no? Guys, I don't know. Oh, sorry, your name can be placed first, of course. If that helps persuade you. I'm gonna have to think about it. It was great working with you again. Let us know what you think about the detective agency. I really wish we got to find out if Nancy accepted the offer to join that detective agency. That would be really good. That, I mean, that would be really good. Joe's still dancing around. He still really needs to go to the bathroom. Poor Joe. And who do we have here? If it isn't the insightful red-headed witch herself. I thought you were the only real witch around here. There's always room for another witch in the coven, Nancy Drew. And I have to say, someone with your magical insights, clairvoyance even, would make a great fit. I have always wanted to ride on a broom. Would make it easier to get an overview of crime scenes. But really, thank you for bringing us all together again. It feels like ages since I was able to talk openly with Lauren. It's great to finally have the curse from that night lifted. Thank you. Hey there, how are you holding up? I can't believe Alicia would do this. I trusted her, you know? Things would have been really bad if you hadn't exposed her for who she is. I'm sorry, you couldn't have known. Did the judge have a chance to talk to you about the house? It is yours, of course, but maybe it would be fitting to have a memorial for the accused witches there? The estate has a lot of ground. And it would be nice to have a memorial to remind us of the injustices that took place here, so that they never happen again, ever. I'll think about it and talk to the AW organization about what they prefer. It's a good idea. I'm glad you see it that way. There are just a lot of people in the background talking. I don't know who they are or what. Where they're from. The coven would be happy to welcome someone like you. Come visit Salem again sometime. I always have new herbs and remedies coming into the shop. So that's Sounds officially fun. the end of Midnight in Salem. A very long game with an awful lot of conversations. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's... I, I specifically wanted to show off, like, all the conversations. But uh, if, if you skip through all the conversations, the game itself is much, much shorter. I got it. Ready? 
Austria. Yeah, I know I was just there, but I didn't really get to enjoy it much. I feel like there's a lot more exploring left to do there. Did you know Shunbrun Palace has 1,440 rooms? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can stay there. I'm sure we could find something close by. Yes, I promise. No cases this time. Just the two of us. So is that supposed to be a preview of the next game in the series? Don't know. Kind of weird we didn't actually get to hear a Ned. All right, so these are the credits. It looks like three major companies worked on it for Interactive, Mi Pumi, and Toy Box Entertainment. So final story, that was all Mi Pumi and then one person from her Interactive. Hmm, dialogue writing. Looks like it was just me, Pumi, that did most of the uh, dialogue writing. Okay. Alright. These, these credits are like five minutes long, by the way. So if there's anything you want to talk about, we can talk about it. So, the Midnight in Salem crew. It looks like this is her interactive. We've got four... We've got those people who worked on it. Do, 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 do. And then now for Toy Box Entertainment. I wonder what they did. So were they in charge of just the audio? Looks like they might have been the ones in charge of the audio. And some of the graphics. Alright. I don't know what this Lynx agency is. What did they do? Saigon Dragon. What did these people do? So they did some of the artwork for the characters, it looks like? Secret Six Madrid SL. What did this group do? The 3D art. I'm sure somebody somewhere has like made a list of all the various companies that worked on the game and what each company did, right? Yeah, it definitely looks like they got um, from various companies all over the planet. Looks like Virgin Lands did more 3D modeling and Particle Beam did more art. Arcs Anima. They did motion capture. They did the motion capture for the various characters. Okay. Speech graphics. Looks like they did more character art and linguists. And now the voice recording. All right. Dynamedian. So I guess they did the music and the sounds. Mark Growl Recording Studios did more, um, I don't know, voice recording? Clatter and Din? I think they've worked on other Nancy Drew games for the, like, music and stuff. Soundtrack New York sounds like music. And here are all the voice actors. They brought back a lot of them from the previous games, the Hardy Boys and Deirdre Shannon. I really like that. Uh, and Nancy's dad, he was brought back from the previous games. And Ned, of course. So all those characters were uh, brought back from previous games. I really kind of like that. I think it worked well to have the uh, the old characters. It, it really made it feel like these characters were returning because they had the same voices. Even though Nancy's voice was not the same. Uh, Quantic Lab? I guess they did Q&A. So I guess they, they tested the game. They did a lot of testing. Okay. Tag Wiz? They did more testing. Here are the people who initially worked on the game. Yeah, because the crew at Her Interactive did some work on the game. Um, but then there was like a big, uh, a big turnaround at the company. And then we have some external testers. Her Interactive had some people test the games. There's me on there. I'm on the list. So I didn't actually get to play the game, but I, I did get to watch somebody else play that one section of the game towards the end, the really dark room where you had to light the candles and such. So that was the section of the game that I got to play test. Basically that and a couple of other things, but I don't want to talk too much about it because I had to sign 
an NDA in order to, uh, I had to sign an NDA, so I don't know if I'm still bound by that or not. Don't want to break any laws. It is kind of cool. It's sort of like I got a shout out. Lots of fonts in this game. These are all the fonts. Lots of images taken directly from the Library of Congress. And now, uh, some special thanks. There was no Bess and George in this game. And more special thanks. And additional special thanks. Wow. Extra special thanks to the, the loyal fans and the people who started the company, Her Interactive. So 2019, so the game came out three years ago. Hmm. Woo! Oh. Whoa. What is this? Dare to play. Why did we just randomly get, like, the old Nancy Drew logo flashed at us? That seems... I mean, that was the old Nancy Drew and her interactive logo. Seems kind of odd. And here's the endgame trivia question. Feels kind of low effort. Like, Nancy, ergot is a type of uh, fungus. Correct. And that's the end of game trivia question. That was it. All right. Extras, you can get achievements, you can read the, see the credits again, see the movie trailer for the Nancy Drew movie that came out that year. So, Easter egg, find the key, do the tour, these are all the achievements. Case solved, woohoo, solve all the puzzles and stuff. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching this very long live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye!